Chapter 151, Watching the Lively Orochimaru I repeat, Sasori, the Red Sand Scorpion, join the Akatsuki organization and lend us a hand. As the pieces of paper danced in the air, Konan, who spoke again, floated in the air. The pieces of white paper on his body swayed in the wind. Sasori tried to contact the third Kazakage puppet, but it still failed. Then, he looked at the few puppets left after the many battles around him and shook his head slightly. He was straightforward and formed a seal with one hand. Remove. In an instant, with a bang sound of white smoke, all the puppets present returned to their scrolls. After completing all this, Sasori looked at Conan and said calmly, I have no other choice for the loser. You can take me anywhere you want. Surprisingly, it is reasonable. Conan, who did not expect Sasori to admit defeat so easily, was slightly surprised. I have just walked half of the path of eternity. I don't want to die at this time. Sasori touched his chest and explained. Then, he looked at the pieces of paper that filled the sky and sighed. In addition, I also want to meet the other members of the Akatsuki organization. Perhaps it can be like your art, allowing me to feel the artistic inspiration I have never had before. Sasori, who was dedicated to the path of eternal art after seeing Conan's unique art of enduring paper, also had a lot of inspiration. In a situation where he couldn't resist, he did not mind joining the so-called Akatsuki organization. After all, since the Akatsuki organization had this woman in front of them, it was likely that the others would not be weak. It could at least bring him new inspiration. Sasori was filled with anticipation. In this regard, Conan's face was still calm as he said, Since you have such expectations, I will be confused. But since you want to join us, so be it. The two of you, now it is time to follow me to the Akatsuki organization base to meet the leader of Akatsuki. Okay. Okay. Hiroko, who had been watching the battle from the sidelines, hurriedly responded after hearing the words. He did not expect that a woman who came out of nowhere could so easily defeat Sasori, who had almost forced him to the end of the road. Moreover, this woman was only one of the organization members called Akatsuki. If he was just pretending to be weak before, now that he had truly seen her strength, he had a bit of sincerity. After all the trouble he had in Kanaha's camp, it wouldn't be long before Kanaha would discover his identity and start a new hunt. He naturally wouldn't care about the latter if he was at his peak with his strength. However, in the battle with Sasori just now, all of his synthesized beasts had been used up, and his strength had fallen to the lowest point. This made him worry. Since this Akatsuki organization seemed to be very powerful, he might as well join them so that his safety could be guaranteed. Sasori, who heard Hiroko speak, coldly looked over at this time. He was still looking forward to the other members of the Akatsuki organization. However, he was not interested in this loser who had joined him. After this, I should find a chance to turn this bastard human beast into a puppet. Sasori thought with killing intent. Hiroko naturally noticed Sasori's undisguised killing intent. He also said coldly, this time, I'll let you be arrogant first. When my ghost sprout art is mastered, I will definitely tear you apart. There was no need to hide the conflict between the two. Looking at Konan, who was only giving a warning to the members of the Akatsuki organization, he brought the two back to the rainland. In all seriousness, the rule of no killing between members of the Akatsuki organization was not too serious. After all, gathering a group of utterly loyal rebels together was impossible, and it was impossible to make them abide by the rules. Just like how many accomplices who formed a team with Kakuzu in the future were murdered by him, and the corpses were brought into the underground black market and turned into bundles of banknotes. In the end, Kakuzu was different. For the leader of the Akatsuki organization, Nagato, Useful tools were good tools. If he died, then he would be worthless. Of course, the premise of all this was that it would not affect the plan of the Baijiu weapon. If he delayed his business because of personal grudges, then he would have to bear the anger of Nagato. Therefore, Konan, who clearly understood the character of betrayal, did not say much and only gave a warning. As a rebellious old fox, Sasori and humbly Hiroko naturally did not take it to heart. After the two sides coldly looked at each other, they each had their own ulterior motives and set off with Conan. Very quickly, the previously fierce battle arena quieted down. Only the broken flesh and blood that covered the ground were left to attract more and more beasts to eat. At this time, a very ordinary-looking long snake suddenly opened its mouth. Then, a pale arm covered in a large amount of mucus stretched out from it, 
followed by another arm, head, entire body, and finally, two feet. Such a strange and disgusting appearance was naturally the only Orochimaru in the world. This was the land of rice fields. As someone who had been rooted in this place for many years, Orochimaru naturally understood the situation inside the country very well. When he discovered that Kanaha's ninjas were secretly investigating the land of rice fields, he, who had always been cautious, chose to temporarily avoid them. He did not expect to see such a good show along the way. Hey, hey, hey. I didn't expect that the student who was unwilling to be mediocre was still alive and his strength was different. Is that the forbidden technique he developed? It looks interesting. Orochimaru came to the side of a broken hybrid beast corpse, reached out his hand, dipped it in its blood, and then licked his fingers with his long tongue, tasting it carefully. It's good, but it's just good. If it's just these things, then the new wind you brought to me, old classmate, is not enough. Orochimaru shook his head and then looked at where it was. It could be seen that there were still many pieces of iron left on the scene. Seeing this, Orochimaru smiled playfully, I didn't expect it. Not only was the third Kazakage that was so difficult to deal with on the battlefield, killed by the rebellion of his own village, but it was also made into a puppet that could use the blood limit. This is also the most miserable shadow in history. Sasori the Red Sand Scorpion. Hee <laughs> hee. In addition, the woman who defeated Sasori is also very good. But I feel like I have seen her somewhere before. Blue hair, paper flowers, and that face. Orochimaru touched his chin and pondered. As a master who studied the soul, if Orochimaru thought about this piece of memory, he could easily recall the memories of the past. Soon after the Second World War, he, Jiraiya, Tsunade, and Hanzo were given the title of Kanaha's three ninjas, and memories of their return appeared. I remember the little girl that Jiraiya especially left behind to teach the three orphans of Rainland. Isn't that the woman from before? Orochimaru excitedly licked his lips and said in his usual hoarse voice, Interesting. It's really interesting. I remember that I was going to kill these three orphans. In addition, in a team with Jiraiya, he saw that the latter had received information from Toad that the three disciples of Rainland had died. He still remembered that Jiraiya had been sad for a long time. So what was going on now? The information clearly showed that the dead girl was still alive, but her strength had grown, so he had no choice but to face her. If that was the case, were the other two still alive? Did they establish that Akatsuki organization? What was the purpose of recruiting these traitors? At this moment, many questions arose in Orochimaru's heart. Along with time, the eagerness on his face became more and more grand. It just so happened that Kanaha's ninjas were searching for some unknown reason in the land of rice fields. Originally, he planned to use the wild ambition of land of rice fields to buy more funds and people for his experiments and, at the same time, prepare to build a village on the surface. Now, it seemed that he could only delay this plan for now. It was better to take advantage of the free time to find out the root of the Akatsuki organization and see if he could find anything interesting. Orochimaru thought for a while and quickly made a decision. His eyes were curious, and his figure flashed, and then he quickly followed in the direction of the three. Kanaha Village, the Hokage Building The news of the attack from Kanaha's army quickly arrived at Tsunade's office, which was the highest in Kanaha. As the host, Tsunade was sleeping happily on the table. When she heard the knock on the door, she suddenly woke up and wiped her mouth. Then she said angrily, Come in. Master Tsunade. Shizuan, holding a new document, immediately opened the door and entered the channel. The person who came was no longer Shikaku. The reason was that if the other party found out that as he came more frequently, Tsunade's face became darker and darker, he was afraid that he would be treated as a punching bag, and he chose to change the person in a month in the hospital. As a silent person beside Tsunade, it was undoubtedly the most suitable. Reality proved that this was indeed a good idea. No matter how angry Tsunade was, she would not vent her anger on the little girl whom she watched as she grew up. After that, she gradually got used to this kind of sleeping and getting up when she had something to do. I haven't slept for long. Why is there another batch? She looked at the document from Kanaha's army impatiently. Soon, her face changed. It was because she saw a familiar person in the documents. Please. Tsunade said with a serious expression. Who is this person? After arranging the documents and knowing that this person was one of the attacks on Kanaha's camp, seeing Tsunade, who didn't know his identity, asked curiously. A former classmate, a traitor of Kanaha, an extreme person. 
Tsunade sighed slightly and shook her head, I thought that after so many years, there was no news of the other side. It should have been an accident. I didn't expect that he would appear at this time. He really doesn't know how to live. Chapter 152, Yuki who was tricked back. Hey? Is this reason why you urgently called me back? In the Hokage's office, during this time, when Yuki, who had been accustomed to being a shopkeeper, received an emergency message from Kanaha in the capital of the Fire Land, he thought that something big had happened. Still, when he came back, he saw this. The Getshuga Tenshou absorbed five types of blood limit to achieve eternal life. But no one knew whether the so-called eternal life was bragging or not. One had to know that in the history of the ninja world, even the six paths immortals would welcome the death of their physical bodies. True eternal life could only be achieved by the great wooden pyroxene who ate the fruit of the divine tree. Yuki did not believe that a mere courtesy call could do it. As for the so-called ability to absorb five types of blood limit, Yuki laughed after knowing that Naruto's wind style broke the other person's so-called ability to absorb everything Rasen Shuriken, not to mention that Naruto killed him. With such strength, even if he merged with the fifth blood limit, he would not really take it to heart. At worst, he would let the other party enjoy the treatment of the Kyuubi. Moreover, there was still a long before he left Ghost Sprout art. Just because of a mere rebellion, he called me back? At this moment, Yuki's face was a little dark. Especially when he saw Tsunade in high spirits, using her shadow clone to quickly bring over a large pile of documents into her office, the black lines on his face became thicker. Was this a real purpose? Well, now that you're back, I'll leave the rest to you. Tsunade, who had finally caught Yuki, didn't have the time to criticize the other party's words of assurance in the position of Hokage. After quickly handing over the documents in her hand, she rushed to the gambling house in Kanaha with Shizuan. Many affairs had suppressed her in Kanaha during this time, and she had not gone to the gambling house for a long time. Tsunade, who finally managed to trick Yuki back, naturally would not let go of this heaven-sent opportunity. As for seniority, although they were old classmates, under the circumstances that the other side had betrayed the village for so many years, she could no longer have any friendships with them. In addition, no matter what conspiracy the other side had, under the current leadership of Yuki, they would not be able to overturn any waves. Tsunade was very relieved about this point and let go. At this moment, looking at Tsunade's back, Yuki was speechless. In general, under his instructions, without any important circumstances, Kanaha would not contact him. When the Kanaha army that escorted the Cloud Ninjas returned this time, it was not a big deal. After all, the losses they caused were only a small amount of the Cloud's corpse scroll. However, it was not a small matter. It was related to two powerful attackers one of which was Kanaha's former s rank trader ninja. It all depended on the person who decided the nature of this matter. Unfortunately, Tsunade, who had finally found an opportunity, naturally chose a method that was beneficial to her and pulled Yuki back. Forget it, it was better to be safe than sorry. Now that the Fireland was on the right track under his several actions, the political situation had been stable for a long time, so there was nothing to worry about. After Yuki shook his head, he looked at the document in his hand again. There was also Sasori, who was also an s rank trader ninja. He wondered how the two of them met. Was the smell the same? With this thought in mind, Yuki continued to turn the pages. After ignoring Minato's apology, he directly turned to the last page. When he saw the former proposed another concept of air power, he whispered with interest, Air Force. It seems that Minato's military thinking is very good. It was very rare for ninjas in the whole ninja world to have the ability to fly or have flying beasts. Minato, who had never been in contact with this area before, immediately realized the importance of the air after seeing it this time. His reaction was undoubtedly very fast. This also gave Yuki a reminder. To be honest, not only was the air power in Kanaha severely lacking, but even he himself did not have the ability to fly. Although he was not afraid of those flying targets with his strength, he could not always use cannons to kill mosquitoes. Yuki thought in his heart, let's throw out psychic beasts and six-level combat power, if the blood succession limit or ninjutsu with the ability to fly for a long time in the ninja world, it is only the three generations of Kazakage's magnetic escape, reincarnation eyes, and shinigami. Dance of paper, super beast false painting, peacock magic, earth escape light and heavy rock art, right. There are no conditions for the Rin Egan, so I won't consider it for now. There were many forms of magnetic escape, seriously speaking, 
only the third Kazakage shadow could fly. The other party had already been made into a human puppet, so his blood must have been long gone, and there was no way for Yuki to exchange for it. The peacock technique required star stones to practice, but the latter had great side effects on the human body, so he directly passed it away. The dance of paper was ninjutsu, and without the ninjutsu scroll, he could not own it. The earth heavy rock technique was also the same, this was the signature ninjutsu of the third generation of Psu's Haikage Onaki, and in the entire world, only Rock Village had this earth escape technique. After counting and counting, the only thing that Yuki could immediately grasp was the super beast pseudo painting he had collected from the root of the ninjutsu library. But seriously speaking, this ninjutsu was similar to the nature of a flying type psychic beast. He had to rely on the former if he wanted to use more flexible air ability. He really wanted to say that the easiest to get was still earth heavy rock technique. Onaki didn't cheat on this technique. If there were any ability users in the Rock Ninjas, they could exchange for this technique to practice. However, it wasn't easy to practice this technique, and very few Rock Ninjas could successfully learn it. However, this also gave Yuki a chance. One must know that Kanaha had a very capable spy in the Rock Village. Thinking of a young man with glasses, Yuki smiled. In addition, the Air Force of Kanaha Village should also be on the right path. Although the technology of the entire ninja realm was very bad, it was not at the point of production of planes. Fortunately, there were other black technologies. For example, in the Second World War, the Kingdom of Air was famous for its ability to fight in the air. The Flying Ninja, the Kunao, the air fortress named Anchor Bendin, and the aircraft carrier. Yuki was a little embarrassed as soon as he thought of the last word. But no matter what, these things were all very valuable. Otherwise, the village would not have been so powerless when they launched a surprise attack against the Sky Ninja. Under your principles, Yuki is also prepared to attack the remnants of the Sky Land. However, for the latter to be able to survive under the eyes of the five great countries for so many years without being discovered and gradually growing stronger, it must have its own unique hidden methods. It would probably be not easy to find traces of the other party in a short time. Fortunately, it was not like there was no other way. If he remembered correctly, the doctor on the surface was a doctor with excellent medical skills. His real identity was Shenam, who was the leader of the Hollow Ninja. Now, he was running around for the development of his forbidden technique. Then, he should quickly capture him while the other party was not finished. And the Mount Sumura border where the land of earth and the land of grass meet is the opponent's lair, and they should also send people to explore. If the other party went back, then they would kill him. All kinds of orders were swiftly implemented after Yuki returned to the Kanaha village. By the time everything was settled, it was already dusk. Looking out of the window at the golden color, Yuki stretched. Calculating the time, Kanaha's army would be able to return to the village the day after tomorrow. In addition to the large number of cloud ninja prisoners, it was a lot of trouble to think about. Ah! It was not the right time to return. And the person who caused all this, at this time, returned dejectedly. When he saw him below, he immediately shouted with a smile, Yuki, let's go drink together. Yuki chuckled at this. What go drink together? Wasn't it just losing everything in the gambling house, and having no money to eat dinner, so he wanted to come back and take him as a sucker. In the Kanaha village, whoever was the happiest about Tsunade's return, the first was a gambling den, and the second was a wine shop. Naturally, Yuki was not interested in being a sucker. But after a quarter of an hour, he slapped himself in the face. There was no other way, there were too many Tsunade people in the state of hitting people with balls. Two days later, in the morning, the atmosphere at the gate of Kanaha was very hot. Not only were Yuki, the fourth Hokage, Tsunade, Shikaku, and the other officials of Kanaha, but many villagers came here to welcome the triumphant return of Kanaha's army. In the latter group were the village's heroes and their relatives. Naruto also came to the gate at this time but with his short body, it was difficult to squeeze into the front. Once again, with a big belly, Mikato found him and brought him to the front of the line with her family. Midway, Naruto curiously asked about the baby in onto Mikato's stomach and then looked at Suzuki without saying anything. Because at this time, one of them was thinking about his parents, and the other was his beloved brother. In this excitement, expectation, impatience, and other emotions, it didn't take long for the figures of Kanaha's troops to arrive in front of everyone. In an instant, the cheers of the thousands of Kanaha villagers rose to the sky. Along with the response from the Kanaha army, the momentum became even greater. 
Among them, Naruto erupted with the greatest amount of strength to cheer. On the other hand, Suzuki, who was watching from the side, also let out a few soft roars in this atmosphere. When he saw Naruto looking at him in surprise, his face instantly became extremely red. In the following time, the fourth Hokage, Yuki, stood out under everyone's gaze. After confirming everyone's merits, he also began a passionate speech that he had already prepared. From then on, amidst the increasingly intense cheers of Kanaha's ninjas and the villagers, and in the mood of the 3,000 cloud ninjas that had arrived for the first time, Yuki drew the last sentence for this short but huge battle of Kanaha's cloud ninjas. Chapter 153, Orochimaru, The Reincarnation I The Land of Rain The years of rain had always covered the country with dark clouds. The climate was wet and cold, and the sun was rarely seen. Because of this terrible weather, foreign people and even caravans were unwilling to come to rain land. In addition, the latter was in seclusion and locked the land. The outside world's understanding of Rainland could be said to be very few. At most, he knows that his country is severely divided, he has been fighting for years, his ninja village is Hidden Cloud Village, and his leader is Hanzo, who is known as a half-god in the ninja world. However, there were also exceptions. For example, Orochimaru was very familiar with the Rainland. After all, whether it was the origin of the name of the three ninjas or the fact that he served as the commander of the battle line and fought against the sand ninjas here, he had a good understanding of this place. It was just understanding, but it did not mean that he liked this country that rained all year round and could not see any light. Along the way, Orochimaru secretly followed Konan, Sasori, and the others. Although he had roughly guessed the former's destination from the beginning, when they really arrived here, Orochimaru still licked his lips with his slender tongue. Hands so. Orochimaru's golden vertical pupil was filled with cold killing intent when he thought of this man who had given him the name of Kanaha's three ninjas. He wondered how this man was doing now. He had heard that after the war in Rainland had ended, he had been hiding in a tightly guarded fortress and rarely went out. Orochimaru had thought this old man was old enough and ready to wait for his death in peace. Now, it seemed that the other party had some secret conspiracy. Right now, the organization known as Akatsuki is constantly recruiting S-rank trader ninjas, and their goal is definitely not small. As for their members, Conan was a member of Rainland, and the organization's base was also in Rainland. If it was said that the leader of Rain Hidden Village, Hanzo, had nothing to do with it, but Orochimaru did not believe it. Things are becoming more and more interesting. Noticing that Conan and his group were heading towards the direction of the Rain Village at a steady pace, Orochimaru's curiosity grew even stronger. He, who had the best self-preservation ability, naturally would not let go of such an interesting thing when he was idle. Perhaps, I can still say hello to my old friend this time. Orochimaru smiled excitedly, and then his whole body turned into a water snake, following along the river and lake that the rainland had no lack of following them all the way. Half an hour later, the rain-hidden village, which had many steel towers, became clearer and clearer in the rain. Having easily passed through the garrison forces outside the rain-hidden village, Orochimaru, who had come to the village, reached out from water snake's mouth. Just as he was about to cast camouflage to explore the rain-hidden village, his face suddenly changed as the rain hit him. There seems to be something wrong with the rain. Although the rain that fell from the sky looked very ordinary, as a research maniac, Orochimaru, one of the best in the chakra research field, immediately noticed something was wrong. Soon, he stretched out his snake-like long blood tongue, dipped it in some rain, and then retracted it. After feeling the taste of the rain in his mouth, Orochimaru finally said, the smell of chakra. So this rain is not naturally triggered, but man-made. Then, he looked up at the heavy rain that covered the entire rain-concealing village and said with great interest, very good detective skills. Also, it really is a huge amount of chakra. It was hard to imagine that someone could continuously cast such a wide range of spells. Was there such a person in rain-concealing village? Or was it the work of that mysterious organization? Orochimaru did not think too much about it. The master of the technique had undoubtedly discovered him. He quickly left and soon disappeared from the village to prevent this interesting action from being interrupted. At the same time, he used the Rain Tiger Freedom Technique in the village's highest tower. Everything in the village was seen. At this time, Peon opened his Rin Egan and walked to the top terrace, calmly looking down at everything below. What's wrong? On the side, seeing the sudden action of Nagato, Obito asked curiously. Someone broke into the Rain Village. It seems to be Orochimaru, 
one of the three Kanaha ninjas. Nagato said directly. Nagato still remembered the cold, snake-like man who wanted him when they met. Orochimaru? Didn't he die in the hands of the fourth Hokage a few years ago? Obito was surprised. He knew how powerful the fourth Hokage was, and it was hard for him to believe that Orochimaru could escape from the former. It really is him, Nagato said. Only such a person could see through his rain tiger freedom technique and quickly disappear from the village. Even he could not find him in a short time. Hearing Nagato's affirmation, Obito no longer bothered about the authenticity of Orochimaru's corpse. He immediately suggested, in that case, we can take this opportunity to invite Orochimaru to join the Akatsuki organization. With the threat of the fourth Hokage, Obito naturally hoped that the more power he gathered, the better. Nagato nodded in agreement without hesitation. The past was the past. Now that he was a god, he naturally wouldn't care about the small conflicts before. Right now, the Akatsuki required talent, and Orochimaru, who had taken the initiative to come, was undoubtedly a very good candidate. But before that, we have to fight first. After all, it's very difficult to persuade such a person verbally. Nagato, do you need my help? Obito Uchiha asked. Nagato refused, no need, I'll do it myself. In addition, Orochimaru is nowhere to be seen. We have to wait for a while. Orochimaru dodged the spell. Obito asked in surprise. He knew a lot about the spell. Even if he didn't know about it beforehand, he couldn't find anything special about the rain. He didn't expect Orochimaru to notice that something was wrong so quickly. As expected of one of Kanaha's three ninjas. Obito shook his head in his heart. Although he had a lot of ninjutsu knowledge left behind by Madara, in terms of foundation, there was still a lot of gap between him and those old experts. It was already very difficult to maintain the character of Madara. Even so, he knew in his heart that Nagato had always been suspicious of his identity. If I hadn't thrown out some knowledge about reincarnation eyes, heretic golems, etc., from time to time, and even unheard of ninja secrets to stabilize the opponent, it would be difficult to guarantee that the opponent would not do anything when the doubts deepened. At this moment, he did not know what was on Obito's mind and did not care about Orochimaru's disappearance. His eyes turned to the three people who had returned from completing the task. The latter had just entered the rain village, and Orochimaru had followed him. If there was no connection between them, then it could not be. You don't have to look for him. Orochimaru will naturally come to you. After saying that, he turned around and left. Next, he had to meet with the new members of the Akatsuki organization. Now, he was only a member of the organization and had no intention of immediately joining in. Looking at the back of Nagato, his eyes were full of contemplation. In the hall of the tower, Nagato, who had already received the letter from Konan in advance, was not surprised by the arrival of the courtesy outside of the plan. After the two sides met, let alone the fact that Sasori and Hiroko were surprised when they saw the real leader of the Akatsuki organization, especially the pair of purple spiral eyes of the latter. Nagato said concisely, Welcome to Akatsuki Organization, I am the leader of Akatsuki Organization, Nagato. From now on, Sasori, you are the Jade Maiden of Akatsuki, and we humbly call you the Vermilion Bird of Akatsuki. After saying this, Nagato took out the ring engraved with Jade and Scarlet and handed it to the two of them. After giving some necessary instructions, he said, At present, the Akatsuki Organization is still in a dormant period and occasionally does some bounty missions. Most of the time, you can make your own arrangements, and the organization will not interfere. It sounds quite good. If possible, I really hope to put my time into my research. I wonder if there are enough materials and venues here. Hiroko took the ring and asked. Now that his strength had been greatly reduced, he was cautious and would not return to Mount Meru. To be able to protect this seemingly powerful organization was the best choice. Nagato, who knew Hiroko's ability well, satisfied his request and said, Yes, if you have any requirements, submit a report at that time, and the organization will satisfy you. Regardless of the individual's strength, it was undoubtedly a great help to him who had the animal path. On the other side, Sasori also wanted a laboratory. He needed time to replenish his puppets. Had lost a lot of puppets. Although the two of them were focused in different directions, they were undoubtedly researchers. After arriving at the Akatsuki organization and quickly giving some instructions, Konan led them to their respective laboratories and began to close the door to study and make them. Soon, 
the spacious hall became silent again. However, it didn't take long before Nagato's plain words broke it. Orochimaru, you've been watching for so long. It's time to show you yourself. After saying that, Nagato turned to look at a dark corner of the hall. Not long after Conan and the other two arrived, a man named Orochimaru also snuck in. Although his concealment methods were excellent, he managed to deceive the former. However, in the eyes of Nagato, who was already prepared and had a strong perception, it was still very clear. Noticing the pair of purple spiral eyes that made his heart surge for a long time, Orochimaru, who knew that he had been discovered, no longer held any hope in his heart. He slowly appeared and, at the same time, used his unique hoarse voice to say. As expected of the leader of the Akatsuki organization. That rainwater spell should have been used by you, right? And. At this point, Orochimaru licked his lips in excitement. His pair of golden snake children were full of greed, shock, desire, obsession, etc. He stared at Nagato's eyes and said. If I am not wrong, your eyes should be the eyes of the legendary Six Paths Immortals. Chapter 154, Orochimaru vs Nagato Reincarnation Eyes, the eyes of the legendary Six Path Immortal Although there had always been rumors of the three great child techniques in the ninja realm, most people in the ninja realm did not believe in the existence of the so-called reincarnation eyes. After all, the Sharingan and the whites of the eyes were clearly visible, but the latter had always existed only in legends. Even the Six Path Immortal was just a pure myth in the mainstream knowledge of today. As for the Rinnegan, it was naturally just a fantasy. This was also why when he saw the Rinnegan, although he was very shocked, he didn't think about the Rinnegan at first. Only a very small number of ancient books that had been passed down to this day had records of their existence. In this aspect, Kanaha, which the thousand-year-old ninja clan had joined, was undoubtedly the richest. However, very few people paid attention to these old things. The only exception was Jiraiya, who sought inspiration from books, and Orochimaru, who hoped to get experience in ninjutsu from his predecessors, who had the qualifications and the leisure to read them. This was also the reason why the two of them quickly recognized it after seeing Rin Egan. However, unlike Jiraiya, who firmly believed that the Lord of Rin Egan was the son of fate, he stayed behind to tutor. Orochimaru, without a doubt, had his own idea. While listening to Orochimaru, Pen was a little surprised, I didn't expect you to recognize it, Orochimaru. That's right. This is the Rin Egan. Sure enough. After Pien confirmed it, Orochimaru looked at him with even more fiery and greedy eyes. Nagato naturally noticed Orochimaru's gaze and did not put it in his heart at all. Mortals always overestimated themselves and wanted to obtain the power of God. However, in the eyes of God, what these people did was always a joke. Since you know about the Rin Egan, you should naturally understand its power. Now, I'll give you two choices. Join the Akatsuki organization. Or, as the god, I will personally send you on your way. Nagato gave his final ultimatum. Orochimaru's eyes flashed, and he shook his head and sneered, God. He <laughs> he. No matter how strong a power is, if it can't live forever, then it can't be called a god. In addition, I have no interest in joining any organization. I've seen enough of today's play. Let's end it here. In the end, he looked at the legendary Rin Egan, and Orochimaru was about to flee. He was not stupid. Although he really wanted to get this pair of Rin Egan, at this moment, in the opponent's territory, not only did he have the powerful and unpredictable master of Rin Egan, but he also had Conan, Sasori, and other experts. Not to mention that the success rate of seizing it was very low, if he really dragged it out here, he would most likely fall into it. The future is long. Now that he knew where the Rin Egan was, it would be okay for him to go back and make some preparations. With this thought in mind, Orochimaru quickly turned around and disappeared into the darkness. However, the master of this place would not agree. You only have two choices to join or die. As he spoke calmly, he stretched out his right hand towards Orochimaru. Nature's beckon. In an instant, an incomparably terrifying gravitational force emerged from the center of his right palm. As the target, Orochimaru only felt his body stop for a moment, and then he was sent flying backwards. What kind of spell is this? Orochimaru's face was full of surprise. But before he could think too much, Nagato's right hand tightly gripped his neck, and he continued to ask, Now, Orochimaru, what is your answer? Was that skill just now the ability of Rin Egan? 
Orochimaru kept asking as if he had not noticed his own situation. After a slight silence, he said nothing and directly exerted force with his right hand. With a crack sound, Orochimaru's neck bone was immediately crushed. However, this was not the end. In the next second, Orochimaru's body melted, and countless ferocious vipers drilled out from the inside, quickly biting Nagato. One of the vipers glided in the opposite direction. Soon, the real Orochimaru came out of his mouth. I really can't be careless at all. Looking at Nagato, who had a black stick in his palm and easily killed all the snakes, Orochimaru became serious. It seems that a simple escape won't work. In that case, Orochimaru quickly made a series of hand seals, then took a deep breath, lowered his body, and exaggeratedly opened his big mouth. Myriad snake array. In an instant, tens of thousands of poisonous snakes rushed out from Orochimaru's mouth, and everything in front of him was drowned out in the blink of an eye. This should be able to stall for quite some time. Orochimaru smiled coldly, and just as he was about to turn around and leave, suddenly, a divine voice rang out in the air. Shinra Tensei. In the next second, under Orochimaru's horrified gaze, all of the snakes he had just summoned were quickly repelled by an invisible force that could only be described as terrifying. Most of the snakes had already exploded and died in the process. By the time this terrifying repulsive force arrived, even if Orochimaru was already prepared, he still had no time to resist. In an instant, he felt like he was being crushed by a huge mountain of 10,000 tons, and he had no strength to resist. After an incomparably ear-piercing sound explosion, he flew backwards extremely fast. Boom! 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 A series of explosions rang out continuously. Like a high-speed cannonball, Orochimaru crashed through dozens of walls and water pipes. After rushing out of the tower, he continued to slide on the surface of the water for a full three to four hundred meters without slowing down. Only then did he finally stop. Then, a large amount of blood quickly spread on the water's surface. If it was anyone else, after experiencing such a terrifying attack, there would be no chance of survival. But who asked Orochimaru to be the one who suffered this blow? Soon, the broken body of the latter transformed like a snake, and after tearing apart the outer shell, a brand new Orochimaru walked out from within. It was Orochimaru, the body substitution. The drenched Orochimaru looked up at the ferocious marks left by his previous collision, and the pupil could not help but shrink. The terrifying name of the skill just now was Shinra Tensei. It was truly impossible to resist. Looking at Nagato, who was descending from the sky, his aura completely unchanged, Orochimaru was no longer relaxed, and his eyes were filled with incomparable fear. At this moment, the former gave him the same impression as Hashirama Senja he had fought with back then. No. It should be said that it was even more oppressive than Yuki Senju. Was this power of the Rin Egan? The more it was like this, the greater Orochimaru's desire for it. However, the reality was that if he was alone, it would be very difficult to obtain this pair of Rin Egan. Orochimaru quickly thought in his heart. At the same time, Nagato, who was standing on the water's surface, also noticed Orochimaru's intact appearance. After being struck by Shinra Tenra Tensei, he's still fine. As expected of a ninja who is as famous as Jiraiya Sensei. Looks like he has more strength. Thinking like this, Nagato immediately made a move. Soon, the water under Orochimaru's feet suddenly exploded loudly. Under the water, Nagato's azure path quickly drilled out, and a strange force instantly hit his chest. Rumble. Orochimaru could not help but fly backwards again. Five-fingered missile. Ashura continued his pursuit, quickly cutting off his wrist and pulling out a series of missiles from the wound on his arm to attack Orochimaru. Bang! 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 In an instant, Orochimaru was covered by a thick explosion of smoke and dust. Cough! 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 Orochimaru coughed heavily from within the smoke and dust. Ashura's gaze moved and his feet stomped on the water's surface as he quickly charged towards it. Just as it was about to approach, suddenly, a huge stream of water came from the smoke and dust. Water release, water tooth bullet. Orochimaru's cold voice rang out from the smoke. Ashura was about to be hit by the rapidly spinning stream of water. At this moment, the fat hungry ghost path appeared beside the Ashura path. He opened his hands and used a seal to absorb all of Orochimaru's ninjutsu quickly. At the same time, Fierce fighting sounds rang out from within the smoke and dust. It was a surprise attack from the human path. Facing this person, 
Orochimaru, who was shocked by the fact that there were so many pairs of eyes in the Rinnegan, also felt a strong sense of crisis from this person. It was a feeling that could really kill him, and even with Orochimaru's body substitution, he could not avoid it. Without any hesitation, Orochimaru quickly used his full strength, wanting to take advantage of this opportunity to get rid of this great danger. Sizzle. Soon, Orochimaru put his palms together, and a disgusting and ear-piercing sound wave of ninjutsu erupted. In an instant, along with the invisible sound wave, not only did Azura and Hungry Ghost, who were about to rush over, tremble and stop, blood could not help but flow out of their ears, nose and mouth, and even the head of the human path, which was almost a foot late, was smashed. Kill one. Orochimaru immediately breathed a sigh of relief. Although he did not know why there were so many pairs of Rinnegan, he could not think too much at the moment and could get a pair. Just as he was about to go up and take the Rinnegan of the path of the human world, Nagato's right hand, which came from the path of the human world, was already aimed at him. Shinra Tensei. There was still no resistance. Orochimaru flew away like a rag, and at the same time, he kept spinning in the air. Taking advantage of this time, the path of hell also appeared, summoned Hell King, threw the broken corpse into his mouth, and used reincarnation to restore it. When he used the Orochimaru body substitution technique again, Orochimaru, who had been reborn, stabilized his body again. He could see that the path of hell that had appeared before him, including the path of heaven, Azura path, hungry ghost path, path of the human path and the path of hell that had appeared after that. Animal path had appeared. This was the descent of the six paths. Orochimaru took a deep breath and looked at the scene in front of him in shock. Six people, six pairs of reincarnation eyes. What the hell is going on? Chapter 155, What Can I Do If I Can't Beat It? Nagato's six paths of pains descended. After mastering the Rinnegan, Nagato rarely gathered six clones to fight against his enemies. In the past, when facing all kinds of enemies, he usually only needed to send out Nagato, and he could easily deal with them. Although Orochimaru was worthy of the name of the three ninjas, in terms of real combat power, he actually did not need to use his full strength to deal with them like this. However, the former was just like a cockroach that could not be killed no matter what. There were too many life-saving methods. To avoid being surprised, Nagato attacked with Nagato's six paths of pains. Step. 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 Without allowing Orochimaru to breathe, Nagato stepped on the water's surface, creating a series of ripples, and quickly began to move. Hungry Ghost, who could absorb Chakra and Ninjutsu, took the lead and walked at the front. Behind him, Azura launched a strange wrist rocket, and the animal path summoned Hellhound. The human path, with the ability to extract souls, awaited release, and Hell Path escorted reinforcements. As for Tendo, he took out his black stick and watched all of this coldly, ready to send the final funeral for Orochimaru at any time. Boom. 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 The battle erupted in an instant. Although he was shocked by the fact that the Rinnegan had actually criticized him, when the crisis arrived, Orochimaru was not a person who would wait for death. He summoned a lot of poisonous snakes while using his flexible body and various secret techniques to deal with them. However, very quickly, under the tacit understanding of Nagato's six paths of pains, Orochimaru fell into an absolute disadvantage. Rib. Orochimaru, who had just dodged the attacks of many hellhounds, had no time to catch his breath before the Ashura's power broke his right arm. Just as the latter attacked again, wanting to tear his throat, Orochimaru opened his mouth in time, and a new him quickly jumped out from his stomach. Immediately after, the incomparably sharp Kusanagi sword reached out from Orochimaru's mouth, and he quickly stabbed Ashura's head. Clang! In time, a black stick was placed in front of the Kusanagi sword, blocking the sword, and the black stick itself had no wounds at all. Seeing the sudden appearance of Tendo in front of him, Orochimaru suddenly shrank and was about to turn around and escape, but it was too late. Nature's Beckon Tendo didn't take the black stick out with his left hand, and under the huge attractive force, he pressed Orochimaru into his palm. Puff! He didn't give the latter the miraculous body substitution spell. The black stick that came from the path of hell, which could mess up the chakra of the pierced person, had quickly nailed into Orochimaru's neck. Not only that but several other black sticks were also nailed to the latter's body one by one. Hot fresh blood flowed out from all parts of Orochimaru's body. At this time, 
he was bound by the black stick and could no longer use the Orochimaru body substitution. However, this was not the end. In the next second, Human Path walked before Orochimaru, pressed his palm on his forehead, and then pulled. In an instant, Orochimaru's soul slowly emerged from his body uncontrollably. Extracting Souls This was one of the abilities that the Human Path possessed. It was also the weakness that Orochimaru was most afraid of at the moment. It was very difficult for him to kill Orochimaru on a physical level, so he naturally thought of the ability of the Human Path. He decided to kill him especially when he noticed that Orochimaru was far more afraid of the human path than the other clones. At this moment, because the speed of the human path extracting souls was related to the target's chakra, Orochimaru was not killed yet. This also gave him a chance. Rumble. In an instant, under the surface of the water of the human path, a huge shadow quickly rose. In an instant, a huge giant snake jumped up from the bottom of the water, opened its bloody mouth and swallowed the human path that could not dodge in time. This wasn't all. Several giant snakes rushed out from under the water around Orochimaru one after another, forcing the other pain clones to avoid the attack temporarily. Orochimaru had always kept a few trump cards in his hands. When he summoned many snakes in succession, he didn't forget to hide under the water, ready to use it at any time. At this time, it just so happened to be of great use. Orochimaru, whose soul had returned to his body, was now covered in a cold sweat. Just a little bit more and he would really be gone. Once his soul was truly extracted, although relying on the soul fragments that had already been split out a long time ago would not bring true death, it was still an unknown question of when he could revive. Even if he recovered at that time, his vitality would be greatly damaged, and he wouldn't be able to recover to his peak state after just a few months of recuperation as he did with the Yuki Senju. At this time, Orochimaru, who was anxious, looked at six paths, who had quickly dealt with the giant snake and stood together again. His heart was full of fear. This trip to the rain-hidden village was undoubtedly a big one. But to be honest, he couldn't be blamed for this. In Orochimaru's original thoughts, he would, at most, greet Hanzo, who he hadn't seen for a long time. But who would have thought that he would meet the legendary master of Rinnegan here? In addition, at this time, Orochimaru also recognized the identity of the first to appear. Orange hair, coupled with his facial features, should be the boy who spoke the most with Conan. It was just that this boy's eyes looked very ordinary back then. Could it be that his Rinnegan was awakened after that? Looking at the six pairs of Rinnegan that appeared before him, Orochimaru was very puzzled and shook his head. Only the little demon with long red hair, who had always been very silent, had not appeared. I didn't expect it. In the beginning, the three weak little ghosts had grown into such powerful ninjas. No wonder Jiraiya didn't care about anything and wanted to stay behind to teach these three ninjutsu. Obviously, the other side had discovered the existence of Rinnegan for some unknown reason. Haha. <laughs> Unfortunately, Jiraiya was too soft-hearted. If he had the time to teach the master of the Rinnegan, he might as well dig out the Rinnegan and use it himself. Orochimaru was now quite regretful that he hadn't noticed the strange behavior of these three brats. Otherwise, it wouldn't be as difficult as it is now. Taking a deep look at the eyes of reincarnation in Nagato's eye sockets, just as Nagato's six paths of pains was about to continue his attack, Orochimaru, who buried the passion and longing in his eyes deep in the bottom, suddenly raised his hand and said. I've changed my mind. I'm willing to join the Akatsuki organization. A wise man who knew his place was a wise man. If he continued to fight, he was 100 sure he would fall here. Orochimaru had never been the kind of person who was stubborn and it was his style to be flexible. Since he couldn't beat it, he would join in. This way, not only could he save his life, but he could also observe the Rinnegan closer and obtain all kinds of information. Even Orochimaru, who had been beaten to the ground, still didn't give up on the eyes of immortals. Seeing this, Nagato also stopped attacking, expressing his welcome to Orochimaru's joining. He had nothing to worry about. Of all the Akatsuki organization members, which one did not directly refuse before joining. They would lower their heads and choose to join only after being beaten down. Orochimaru, who could only be subdued by Nagato's six paths of pains, was more valuable, undoubtedly adding a powerful force to the Akatsuki organization. Naturally, Nagato had no intention of refusing. As for the question of the other party spying on the Eye of Reincarnation. However, he did not take it to heart at all. When would gods care about the thoughts of mortals? With this pair of Rinnegan, 
no matter what Orochimaru thought, it would disappear into nothing. From now on, Orochimaru, you are Akatsuki Void. After Pien finished his announcement, he handed a ring with the word Void engraved on it to Orochimaru. As you wish, leader. Orochimaru licked his lips, took the ring and put it on his finger, then asked, What is the purpose of our organization? You will know soon. After he finished speaking, he brought Orochimaru back with him. On the tall tower, Konan and the other two, who had been alerted by the battle between Nagato and Orochimaru, also came to a terrace early to watch the entire battle. Konan was clear about Nagato's strength and had a calm expression. On the other hand, Sasori was shocked when he saw that their leader easily defeated the famous Orochimaru, one of the three Kanaha ninjas. I didn't expect that not only was Orochimaru alive, but the leader also beat him to surrender. This is my first time seeing my old classmate in such a sorry state. Hiroko sneered with a smile. If one were to talk about the person he disliked the most in Kanaha, it would definitely be Orochimaru. Whether it was during the ninja school period or his ninja career, the latter used his unparalleled talent to set off how terrible everything was for him. He was still very unhappy when he thought of how Orochimaru had always ignored him and looked so high and mighty. However, he did not expect that after so many years, he would still have a day when he would be colleagues with Orochimaru. He was really speechless. On the other side, Sasori also looked at the two people below with emotion. He had previously told Konan that he wanted to see a different technique but did not expect to see it so quickly. He had never seen such a powerful technique before. Sasori shook his head when he thought of the most eye-catching scene when Shinra Tenra Tensei exploded, and then he thought of his puppets. What a pity. Whether it was the leader or Orochimaru, they could create puppets that weren't inferior to the fourth cage Kaze. The leader didn't even need to think about it from now on. However, Orochimaru. Sasori looked at him coldly. For some reason, he felt very uncomfortable looking at this person. He was just like those wet snakes, cunning, cold, and annoying. When there was a chance, he would turn this rotten snake into a puppet. At this time, Orochimaru, who was watching from above, also looked up with a horrifying smile and then licked his lips excitedly. Jiraiya's apprentice, former classmates, indirectly led to the outbreak of the three battles. In addition, everyone was a traitor. Such a combination was really interesting. Chapter 156 the future of Hidden Rock Village. Kanaha, the Hokage's office. He did not know that there was a war in the Rain Village, but by chance, Orochimaru, who had faked his death, and joined the Akatsuki organization, was reading two pieces of information. One was from the land of rice fields. According to the report from the Anbu, although the wandering ninjas of this land had been recruited by the name of the land of rice fields, they had not proposed the idea of establishing the village. The so-called sound tolerance was naturally not born. Seeing this, Yuki did not care anymore. Originally, he had only had the mentality of trying it and was considered a chess piece during his free time. It did not matter if there was no harvest. In any case, this country was here. If they established Ninja Village and named it Hidden Cloud Village, he would no longer need to send people to know the truth about Orochimaru's existence. Yuki turned his gaze to another piece of information. It is from Mount Sumeru the old lair of Hiroko. Although Kanaha's ninjas did not catch Hiroko here, in any case, they had captured three of his subordinates, as well as a large number of manuscripts regarding the fusion beast experiments and even the ghost sprout art in the palace where Hiroko lived. He didn't return empty-handed. However, he didn't get a perfect result after two actions, which puzzled Yuki. Fortunately, there was a lot of progress in the rock village, and both targets were in the same place, so there was a chance to catch them all. Presumably, the new generation of excellent spies in the rock village would not disappoint him. Yuki smiled and took out a ninja information card from the pile of documents. On it, a handsome young man wearing round glasses smiled very shyly. In Rock Hidden Village, a ninja village surrounded by rocks and mountains, with a strong defense. However, because of this terrain, this village was much more troublesome to travel with the outside world. In addition, the whole village was gray, rarely seen green and occasionally there would be rock rain in the land of Earth. Of the five great villages, apart from the Mist Village in this special period, the Rock Village was only in the Sand Village and was ranked second in terms of living and income. Although the living standards of the villagers in the Rock Village were far behind that of Kanaha, and the rich areas like the Hot Water Village, over the years, they gave them an unyielding character and an extremely high team discipline. In the many times of the Ninja World War, 
the enemy that most Kanaha ninjas did not want to face was undoubtedly the rock. Although the latter was not as strong as Kanaha, the cooperation between ordinary ninjas was very tricky. On the battlefield, the combined earth release ninjutsu from the tens of thousands of rock ninjas left a deep impression on Kanaha's ninjas. If the cloud ninjas were the most powerful force in the previous three battles, then after experiencing a fierce fight with the leader of Kanaha, the rock ninjas suffered the least loss. However, at this moment, Onaki was not in a good mood in the office. In the battle between Kanaha and the Cloud Ninja, although the Rock did not know the whole process in detail, the information collected from all aspects still made him feel deeply anxious. The fourth Hokage, who had once had the elegant demeanor of Hashirama Senju, was one of the reasons. But honestly, he had already expected it, so he was not too surprised. What really made him think about the other members of Kanaha who were also dazzling on the battlefield? For the ninja village, it was necessary to emphasize their own strength. But at the same time, the inheritance was also very important. This time, Onaki saw Kanaha's current strength and its future decades of growth. Look at the people of Kanaha. Not counting Kanaha Sunan, the current strength is not inferior to the former Minami Minato, Kushina Uzumaki, and Shisui Uchiha. The oldest people are only in their twenties, and there is still a long time to reach their peak. Further down, there were also many talented successors such as Kakashi Uchiha, Itaki Uchiha, etc. In Onaki's opinion, all these things are stronger than the Kanaha that ran away from Madara Uchiha back then, only Hashirama Senju. What about the rock? Speaking of which, Onaki was a handful of tears. Compared to the past, the current rock ninja could be said to be green and yellow. This was also one of the reasons why he had been keen on recruiting people from the underground black market to complete all kinds of dangerous tasks instead of letting the rock village ninja take risks. He did not want to exhaust all the good seedlings in this regard. But it was still far from enough to face such a huge monster like Kanaha. Especially after the fourth Hokage stole the power of the Fire Land, it allowed Kanaha to develop even faster. Onaki, who had lived for 60 years, naturally knew the benefits of the fourth Hokage doing this. But he also knew the serious consequences of his carelessness. The Earthland was not the Fire Land, the Rock Village was not Kanaha, and Onaki himself was not the fourth Hokage. He knew that he did not have the ability to do so. If he really wanted to learn from the fourth Hokage, he would not be able to become a dog, which would definitely cause intense turmoil in the Earthland. On the contrary, he had to be firmer in the system of a country and a village to see what Kanaha had done, and his heart was gradually relieved of the name of the Earthland. Otherwise, if there was a conflict with Kanaha in the future, it would undoubtedly be a disaster. For Onaki, not only did he have to prove his loyalty to his name, but he also had to contact the Mist, the Sand, and even the Cloud Ninja. In the future, any family of Kanaha would never be able to defeat them. This was also why he didn't take advantage of the situation when he saw the defeat of the Cloud Ninja. This was the case on the outside, but he needed to dig for more talents on the inside. For this reason, Onaki deliberately reduced the exchange conditions of ninjutsu above grade B in Rock Village by a lot. Thus, now he also welcomed the application of many rock ninjas who had met the requirements. Not bad. Not only did you become a superior ninja at the age of 17, but you have also contributed a lot to the village's mission. Do you want to exchange for Earth Heavy Rock? You have ambition. This old man will approve. Looking at the application on the table, Onaki was very happy when he finished reading the application of a young superior ninja called Takano Rock. He hoped to see more and more young faces appearing in the Rock Ninjas. Rumble. Just as Onaki was happily reading the application, suddenly. A loud explosion sounded in the village. Onaki turned around and saw black smoke rising from outside the village through the window. Dadaidara. Onaki didn't need to guess to know that his apprentice, Daidara, definitely caused the explosion in front of him. He did not know what kind of education this guy had received since childhood, but he knew art. For this reason, in these years, various kinds of explosions disturbed the villagers of Rock Hidden Village. The complaints sent to Tsuchikich's office were even higher. Sure enough, not long after, Daidara's junior sister, Onaki's granddaughter, Kuratsuki, who was still a little girl, rushed in excitedly and excitedly made a small report, Grandpa. Daidara got into trouble again. I already knew. Onaki said unhappily, tell Daidara to get lost. Onaki suddenly paused. Young people always had a temper. Especially young geniuses like Daidara, who were a few in the village. If he really forced this kid, 
he might do something even worse. Onaki, who was clear about his disciples' character, thought about it for a while, and combined with the current state of the world and the need of the rock people, he finally changed his words. Tell Diderot to be more careful next time. In addition, doesn't he want to experiment with his own art? Kuratsuki, go and tell Diderot that the village will arrange a quiet experimental base for him. At the same time, he will provide funding, materials, and other support aspects. Let him improve his strength in the future. The future of Rock Hidden Village needs his help. Ah! Hearing his grandfather say this, Kuratsuki opened his mouth wide in disbelief. Normally speaking, shouldn't his grandfather capture Didera and then give him a good scolding at this time? Why didn't you even punish him? Why did you support him? Did the sun rise from the west? Or was the grandfather in front of him a fake? Thinking of this, Kuratsuki's eyes lit up. His small body directly rushed to the front of Onaki. A tyrant grabbed his beard and pulled it down, my grandfather will never be like this. Speak. Are you a fake? Ah. Ah. This old man has maintained his beard for a long time. In an instant, Onaki's voice sounded in his office. Then there was a series of cracking sounds and Kuratsuka's pleading. The surrounding dark group of Earth Shadow looked at everything in front of them in a daze. They were speechless and did not show themselves. After a long time, when Tsuchikage's office returned to normal, Onaki stroked his missing beard while staring at his naughty Kuratsuki and said, Kuratsuki, you can remember what I just said and tell Daidara. Also, Kuratsuki, you are also at the age of being in the ninja school. You can't be as naughty as before. When he said this, Onaki's expression suddenly became serious, and he said, as my granddaughter and also a G expert in the lava blood, you have to learn more about ninja knowledge. Now that the world has changed, the future of the Rock Hidden Village needs you young people to support it. I understand, Grandpa. Although he didn't know the true meaning of the words, seeing his grandfather, who was always happy to joke with him, Kuratsuki immediately nodded his head. Soon after, looking at Kuratsuki's back, Onaki nodded happily and looked out of the window. The younger generation of Rock Village still needed a long time to grow. He just didn't know about the village or himself, waiting for the moment to come. Chapter 157, Kanaha Spy Pharmacist Pocket Because they were often disturbed by the rain of rocks, the houses in Rock Village differed from the colorful and beautiful houses in Kanaha. The houses that were mostly made of stone were not only sturdy but also had strong sound insulation. This also allowed some dark things to go on quietly. Although the young superior named Takano Kamizuru was not as famous as the real geniuses in the ninja world, he was quite famous in the village for being 17 years old. After learning that his application for ninjutsu had been approved, the smile on Takano Kamizuru's face never stopped. After greeting the villagers who were familiar with the village all the way, he finally couldn't help but wave his arms excitedly when he returned home. This was not only because he could learn new ninjutsu. It was also because of the ambition in his heart. Just as every little kid in Kanaha dreamed of the Hokage, Takano Kamizuru also had the dream of the Tsuchikage. It was precise that he chose the signature ninjutsu of the third Tsus Haikage, the earth style, the heavy rock technique, in hopes that the day he learned it, the Tsuchikage would be able to see him in a new light. It must be known that the Tsuchikage was already very old, and there had always been the matter of the fourth Tsuchikage in the village. The son of the third Tsuchikage, Lois, who was originally very loud, had not moved for the past few years, it was obvious that the Tsuchikage was not very satisfied with him. Then there were rumors that he wanted to choose the fourth Tsuchikage among the younger generation. Then, if he, who was ranked at the top of the younger generation of Rock Village, learned the Earth Escape technique, the Gravity Rock technique, wouldn't there be more hope? Thinking of this, Takano's eyes were full of longing. Rumble. Rumble. Takano picked up the teapot on the table, poured himself a few cups of cold tea to ease his restless heart, and was about to walk into the room. Suddenly, his footsteps stopped abruptly, and he couldn't help but let out a painful groan because his heart suddenly felt like a knife was cutting it for some reason. It's poisonous. Takano, who had his hands firmly pressed on his heart, and his body couldn't help but curl up like a turtle, immediately said with a ferocious expression. As a genuine superior ninja, he immediately realized that he had been poisoned. But when did the poison go down? Why didn't he notice it at all? These Takano did not even have a clue. There was no time to think about it now. Takano, who was very clear about the current situation, turned around. Just as he was about to use all his strength to rush out of the house, 
a stone suddenly hit him extremely fast and hit his knee. Plop! In the poison state, Takano, whose strength was less than one in a hundred, could not dodge in time and immediately fell to the ground. At the same time, a gentle male voice sounded in Takano's house, if this can make Takano escape, then I really failed. Takano's expression changed. He suddenly turned his head, only to see a youngster wearing a pair of round glasses with a rock ninja on his forehead. From the looks of it, he should be a youngster from the rock village. Who are you? Takano did not really think that this youngster in front of him was a real rock ninja. As he questioned, he retracted his hand behind his back and quietly held a handful of kunao. I am, when the rock ninja youth opened his mouth, he pounced forward like a rabbit. Clang! After the thick wall blocked a few short sounds of fighting, Takano quickly regained its peace. The rock ninja youth's expression did not change as he pulled out the blood from Takano's chest. On the other hand, Takano was filled with unwillingness and wanted to say something. If it was any other time, he would have been able to defeat ten youths like this in front of him. But now that he was poisoned, he could only die under this person. In the end, he could only die with a thick unwillingness and a dream of Tsusakage that had yet to be completed. The rock ninja youth did not relax just like that. Instead, he carefully examined Takano's death several times. Only then did he habitually push his eyes on the bridge of his nose. With a sincere smile, he said to the corpse, I'm sorry, Takano Jonin. Who asked the village to give me a mission, and you happen to be the only person among this batch of ninjutsu applicants to apply for earth heavy rock technique. After sighing slightly, the rock ninja youth, or rather, the spy pharmacist in Hidden Rock Village in Kanaha Village, put his hands on the bleeding wound of Takano's corpse and used medical ninjutsu to seal it. Then, he took out a spray bottle and sprayed it a few times in the room. Soon, the slight smell of blood in the room was completely gone. After all of this was over, Kabuto Yakushi, the medicine master, looked at Takano's body for a long time with an extremely serious expression as if he was looking at his beloved. Fifteen minutes later, Kabuto got up again. His hands quickly formed seals, and then he saw his face and body rapidly changing. After a few breaths, a person whose body and face were completely identical to Takano, who had died on the ground, appeared at home. As one of Kanaha's top spies, naturally, he had learned a lot of disguising techniques. Right now, what he was using was not a disguise technique that could be easily seen through but an extremely profound illusion technique that was unique to Kanaha. Apart from this weakness of a short time, it was almost impossible for outsiders to find out if it was real or fake. After checking himself and feeling satisfied, he once again came to the corpse of Takano and pressed his hands on his body. A blue flame ignited from the latter's body. In an instant, the existence called Takano disappeared without a trace. Just like that, Kabuto took over the nest of a magpie. This operation seemed to be very strict. But honestly, according to the usual style of Kabuto, the pharmacist, he would not choose to kill directly. However, Kanaha's next target was also Rock Village. To kill two birds with one stone, he had no choice but to use this method. Through the underground network established in Rock Village over the years, he immediately took action after getting the name Takano to apply for the Earth release, Heavy Rock. After hiding in Takano's house for several days, he secretly poisoned the patient. According to common sense, with superior ninja ability, it should not have been so easy. However, the poison in the hands of the pharmacist was one of the top poisons in Kanaha's research, and it was also a very secret composite type of poison. The poison in the teapot alone would not poison the superior, but combined with the thick fragrance of the green vines, it was a real poison. The village was rarely green, and it was precisely because of the lack of love that every household in the village had a hobby of raising flowers and plants. Among them, the most common thing that the villagers raised was the green vine flower. Kanaha had discovered this early on, so they had specially researched the silent and odorless poison to cooperate with the green vine flower, handing it over to the spies of the rock village to act accordingly. Unfortunately, even with Kanaha's ability, the output of this poison was very small. Otherwise, Kanaha's operation in the rock village would have been smoother. Kabuto shook his head, walked over and crushed the green vine flower. Next was tomorrow's action. Kabuto, the medicine master who had returned to his original state, rubbed his eyes, then fell into deep thought. There was nothing to say tomorrow. With his years of experience wandering around the various big ninja villages, he couldn't give himself away unless he encountered something irresistible. After completing these tasks, according to Kanaha's words, when they went online, 
he could finally return to the village. Kanaha. Having been out there for so many years, to be honest, he could not remember much about the village. The only thing that left a deep impression on him was the old and warm orphanage, as well as the dean of the orphanage, the pharmacist who treated him like a family. Medicine Master took off his glasses and carefully wiped them over and over again. He wondered if the dean still remembered him when they met again. Medicine Master smiled, his face full of expectation. Finally, he could go home. The next day, Medicine Master, who was once again in the shape of Takano, held the application book in his hand and headed towards the ninjutsu warehouse in Hidden Rock Village according to the specified time. Although some acquaintances knew Takano in the middle of the journey, they had already investigated Takano's network clearly. Medicine Master Kabuto, who had observed his every move, looked exactly the same at this time and did not arouse the suspicion of others at all. After arriving at the ninjutsu warehouse without any danger along the way, he calmly accepted the rock ninja, who was stationed there for a careful examination and did not find anything strange. There was no unexpected dog blood or other things in the middle of the way. As rock ninja waved his hand to let them pass, medicine master Kabuto, like Takano, carried a reserved smile to the group of rock ninjas and then leisurely entered the ninjutsu warehouse. Half an hour later, Medicine Master Kabuto left the ninjutsu room. The ninjutsu scrolls in the Hidden Rock Village's ninjutsu room could not be taken out. The only thing anyone could do was memorize the chosen ninjutsu within the specified time. After going out, they could not write it or teach it to others. Once the latter's actions were discovered, there would be no escape from imprisonment. Medicine Master Kabuto's memory was naturally good. He had already memorized the earth escape and heavy rock technique in his heart. He was already prepared to run away when he returned to Highfield Rock's home. Naturally, he would not care about the rules of the village. After writing this ninjutsu into a scroll and sealing it with a special technique, he left Highfield Rock's house and changed his appearance to another one. He strolled to a shop and left the shop without being noticed by outsiders. After leaving the scroll in a secret place in the shop, he shook his head and left the shop with a seemingly dissatisfied look. After a while, an unfamiliar man came out of the hidden place in the shop. He casually looked around, and after putting away the scroll, he left as if he was used to it. All of this was not over. Medicine Master Kabuto, who had returned to his patient attire, headed towards his last target without stopping. Soon, a tall man with long white hair appeared in his mirror. Medicine Master Kabuto smiled as he pushed up his glasses and strode over. Chapter 158, Capture Mr. Shenong I'm sorry I'm late. He saw that Medicine Master was panting as he ran to the tall white-haired man named Shenong. When the latter looked over, he scratched the back of his head in embarrassment, looking like he was blaming himself. There are still ten minutes before the appointed time. Kabuto, you are not late. There is no need to say sorry. Shenong gently patted Medicine Master Kabuto on the shoulder. It is already very embarrassing for me to have you wait for me here, Mr. Shenong. Kabuto smiled shyly. You. You don't have to be so polite. Shenong shrugged with a helpless smile on his face. However, after noticing the increasing gratitude on the young man's face, a hint of satisfaction flashed through his eyes. On the surface, a famous doctor was protesting in the entire ninja realm, but in fact, he was the leader of the remnants of the Kingdom of Kong. Shenong had been thinking about the dark, forbidden technique that he had envisioned all these years, traveling through all the villages in the ninja realm to find the secret technique. Because of this, he had not revealed his true face at this moment, or it could be said that the erosion of the dark side of the Zero Tail was not too heavy, and he still maintained the benevolent and kind attitude of a doctor. When the rock ninja boy Hiroki in front of him found him before, begging him to help him treat the infectious disease that had recently emerged in his birth village, he agreed without much hesitation. Not only could he continue to maintain his character, but he could also take this opportunity to leave the village. What a pity! Shenong looked around with a trace of regret in his eyes. He had not found a secret technique that could fit him here. It seemed that he had to go to the next target. Well, Hiroki, let's go now. Shenong, who had collected his thoughts, patted Kabuto on the shoulder and said. Okay, Mr. Shenong. I thank you so much on behalf of the people in the village. After medicine master called Hiroki in the rock village heard this, he excitedly bowed again and again to thank him. Shenong could only hurriedly help up this shy and kind young man in front of him. With such a character, coupled with the good reputation of this young man in the village that he had specially asked for before, he did not have to worry about any accidents happening. In the following time, 
Just as Shannon was about to leave with the pharmacist, the medical ninjas in Hidden Rock Village Hospital regretfully asked, Mr. Shannon, did you stay a little longer in Hidden Rock Village? They were very respectful to the doctor who had traveled here. Although the other party did not know medical ninjutsu, they still admired the medical ninja as they were medical ninjas because they knew the structure of the human body and formed their own faction. During this time, their communication with medical skills made their progress even more deeply. Because of this, the people of Hidden Rock Village Hospital were very reluctant to leave their people. In this regard, Shenong said seriously, I'm sorry. A very tricky infectious disease is invading the hometown of this little brother in front of me. I have already promised him to go and help. I am only saying goodbye to everyone here. Shenong is really a doctor with a benevolent heart and a noble character. Hearing this, everyone sighed with emotion, and it was not good to stop the other party. Just as they were reluctant to part, the eyes of a pharmacist who kept a grateful smile flashed with a trace of invisible light. Although he didn't know much about this operation's target apart from his character's characteristics. But during this time, he smelled the same kind of aura from a doctor named Shenong. He was too familiar with the method of hiding his real thoughts deep in his heart and wearing a warm and warm-hearted shell outside. Interesting. Medicine Master Kabuto smiled and thought in his heart. If he had been very surprised at the beginning when Kanaha Village issued a mission to capture such a person, then now he understood. Obviously, this Shenong in front of him must be hiding some secret. Even if Kabuto could dig deeper, he would not do so. Many years of his career as a spy told him that he should not know what he should not know. Curiosity would really kill the cat. Especially when he was about to return. Hiroki, it's time to go. After a farewell, Shenong's voice came to his ears. Kabuto naturally smiled and said, OK, Mr. Shenong. The two of them left. At the village entrance, Kabuto suddenly looked behind him as he handed over the letter of agreement to the garrison and left. The years of hiding here were finally over. Although Kanaha went online halfway through, it was replaced by the dark group. But it had to be said that the latter's style made him feel more at ease compared to the former. Farewell. He hoped that after returning to Kanaha, the fourth Hokage would no longer let him be a spy. 30 to 40 kilometers away from the village. Kabuto was bringing Shenong to the village that was disguised as him. Mr. Shenong, this road is not easy to walk. Do you need me to carry you? Kabuto asked with a straight face. No need. Although I am not as strong as you, Hiroki, who is a ninja, I cannot underestimate the physical strength of people who have been traveling in the world for many years. Shenong smiled and refused. Then, he asked casually, Oh right, I remember that generally speaking, most of the ninjas in Ninja Village came from inside the village or were orphans brought back from outside. Hiroki, since you were born outside of Rock Village, how did you become a rock ninja? Although I was born in the village, there were relatives in Rock Village. Because of my parents' death, my relatives brought me back to Rock Village at a very young age. After that, I was found to have talent in ninja, so I naturally became a member of Rock Ninja. Kabuto lifted his glasses and explained, although this is the case, I still have feelings for the village I was born in. I will go back every once in a while. It was also because of the recent return that I found that someone in the village was infected with an unknown disease and a medical ninja could not cure it that I thought of the famous Mr. Shenong. This time I really have to thank Mr. Shenong for your selfless assistance. There is no need to say thank you. As a doctor, it is a duty to save patients. Shenong smiled and said this. Suddenly. When he accidentally noticed someone secretly approaching him, his face immediately turned cold. Countless thoughts flashed through his mind. He understood that he had found a way. He looked straight at the person beside him, who he had always thought was a pure and kind youth. He asked with unwillingness, it's just that I was kind enough to go and save someone, but Hiroki, your performance has disappointed me. Have you been discovered? Kabuto was slightly surprised, but he still calmly adjusted his glasses and smiled brightly, it seems that Mr. Shenong, you are not as weak as you are now. Unfortunately, it is too late to find out now. Come out. In an instant. Several air-breaking sounds rang out. Three Anbu ninjas in black robes quickly appeared around Shenong. Who are you? Shenong looked around and asked with a frown. At present, he would not recognize the teenager named Hiroki, and Rock was the sneaky person lying in the ambush here. If the latter really wanted to catch him, he could have done it in the village. If so, where did these people come from? Was his real identity exposed? Shenong, who still had a fluke mind, 
raised his hands and said without resistance, I don't know why you set up this trap to catch me. Although I have some strength, I am still a doctor. If someone in your force is seriously ill, I can go and treat them for free. I don't need to put up such a big formation. Mr. Shenong, it is not up to you now. As Medicine Master spoke with a smile, he jumped back to distance himself from Shenong and handed the battlefield to the new people. Then he said to Kanaha's colleagues, Then I will leave this place to you. My mission has been completed. Now it is time to go back and report. In fact, you can wait for a while longer and go back with us. The leader of the Anvil group, who was ordered to catch Shenong, spoke. No need. Compared to so many of you, it is safer for me to move alone. Farewell. Hiroki rejected the good intentions of the little captain of the Anbu. After waving his hand, he did not wait for the result and left directly. The little captain of the Anbu did not care about this. He turned to look at a Shenong who had been captured and immediately gave an order. Attack. Compared to Kabuto, he had more information and knew better than the dangerous captain of the Anbu group in front of him did not believe that the other party did not resist, so it was best to beat him half to death. In an instant. There was a sound coming from the ground where Shenong was. Earth release, heart beheading technique. The fourth ninja from the Anvu group, who had been hiding, took the initiative to attack. Boom. Shenong, who could not react quickly, was instantly dragged to the ground, leaving only his head outside. Dead. Shenong, who no longer tried to hide his anger, scolded with an ugly expression. He knew that he could no longer hide his strength. Flexing his physical body, Another loud sound rang out from the ground. In an instant, Shenong, whose muscles had swelled up, broke free and quickly jumped out from the ground. He had yet to complete the forbidden technique of controlling Dark Chakra. However, even Orochimaru had no choice but to learn this kind of secret technique from his physical body. Although it couldn't cause a qualitative change like when he had Dark Chakra, he still had the strength of a normal superior ninja. However, this time, the team sent to capture him was two superior ninjas, two especially superior ninjas. Wind release, wind cut technique. An Anvu saw Shenong break free and quickly made a hand seal. In an instant, several sharp wind blades slashed towards Shenong. Seeing this, the muscles all over his body expanded again, and his speed was much faster. He quickly dodged the wind blades and then approached his people with a face full of killing intent. At this moment, Kanaha's Anvu, who used the heart beheading technique, stood in the middle. Shenong's face flashed with a trace of cruelty, and he waved his fist as big as a sandbag. Rumble. The two fists collided, and a fierce wave of air surged out. Kanaha's Anbu retreated five or six steps. On the other side, Shenong did not retreat at all. Just as he was looking forward to seeing the arm and bones of the person in front of him break, he saw that the surface of the other person's arm suddenly fell off with broken pieces. It was the earth release, hardening technique. Not only could he take a punch without being injured, but the other side also covered his arm with hardening in an instant. Seeing this scene, Shenong's heart instantly sank. When he knew these people were not easy to provoke, he was about to run away, but he saw a Haiga ninja in the Anvu group quickly approaching him. Day. It's actually Kanaha. How did I offend you? Seeing that another person was using the soft fist, he was very afraid of, Shenong's face changed greatly. However, no one was interested in answering him. Therefore, in the following time, under the joint efforts of the masters of Haiga and the two Anvu ninjas who were good at earth style and wind style, Shenong's situation gradually fell into a disadvantage. This was because the leader of the Anvu group was on the periphery and did not make a move. After a quarter of an hour, when the time limit of the Shenong physical transformation technique arrived, the leader of the Anvu group, who seized this opportunity, finally took out his long sword and immediately attacked. Kanaha Stream Sword Art Dance of the Three Suns and the Moon In the end, under the watch of Shenong, the attack from the same person was extremely fast and completely synchronized with him from the left, upper, and right directions. Rumble Shenong, who had dried up all over, fell to the ground with blood flowing out of his body. After quickly binding his hands and feet and giving him a coma, the leader of the Anvu group lifted Shenong's body and said to the team members, Capture mission completed. Now, clean up the battlefield and then return to Kanaha. Yes. Everyone quickly moved. Chapter 159, Heroes Don't Cry When Shenong woke up again and felt extremely weak, he found that he was now tightly bound by a strange device. 
Not only could he not move his body, but he could not even use his chakra. The only thing he could move now was the head outside. Shenan forced himself to look around, but unfortunately, apart from the bare walls, he did not find any useful information. What are the people of Kanaha trying to catch me? Is my identity as the leader of the Kingdom of Empty exposed? Impossible. I have been disguising myself well all these years and have rarely been active in the Land of Fire. Kanaha should not have found out. Shenan, who didn't know that there was someone who opened his eyes in this world, was puzzled. At this moment, the door to his room opened. A tall man with a long blonde ponytail walked in, wearing a ninja vest and a red cape on the outside. The person was Inoichi. Because the target had a lot to do with other people, he, the leader of Kanaha's analysis class, had to handle this interrogation information. Is there any misunderstanding here? I am just a doctor traveling around the world, why did you, Kanaha ninjas, arrest me? Seeing the head with Kanaha's forehead guard, a trace of resentment flashed in Chenung's eyes, and then he quickly suppressed it, still a little unwilling to give up. However, Inoichi's answer directly broke all his fantasies, Doctor. To be precise, he should be the leader of the remnants of the Land of Sky. When Chenung heard this, his face suddenly changed, You. You. Before he finished speaking, Inoichi immediately pressed his hand on his forehead and used the mind-reading technique. In an instant, Shenong's eyes rolled over as if he had been stripped naked in the middle of the day without any secrets. Under the circumstance that Shenong was unable to resist, Inoichi's mind had already entered Inoichi's brain. Soon, strips of scrolls that recorded Shenong appeared and spread out from his brain one by one, allowing Inoichi to quickly check them all. Medical Forbidden, Zero Tail, Dark Chakra, Land of the Empty, Flying Ninja, Space Carrier, Air Fortress, etc. Inoichi quickly learned a series of information from Shenong's brain. When everything was over, the Shenong in front of him powerlessly lowered his head. Inoichi rubbed his forehead and said to himself, What a big fish! I didn't expect this power, which had been destroyed during World War II, would have so much power in the dark. And that zero. What a troublesome time. I have to gather the information and hand it to the Hokage as soon as possible. Without paying any attention to the worthless Shenong, Inoichi quickly turned and left. In the Hokage's office in the Hokage's building. Just as Inoichi was writing a summary report from Shenong, Yuki was also meeting with Kanaha's spy medicine master, Kabuto, who had just returned from the rock village. Looking at this young man who was famous in the future but was still a little young, Yuki said with deep meaning, Kabuto, who lost his memory when he was young and did not know his parents and name, was taken in by the dean of the orphanage, Kabuto, and gave him the name of Kabuto. Because of his talent on the spy side, he was selected by root and cultivated. After that, he went to various villages for spies and even brought back a lot of useful information. It can be said that compared to the previous walking in, the student is definitely better than the student. Am I right, Kabuto? As a member of Kanaha, no matter if it is others or me, everything they do is just for the sake of the village. The pharmacist standing before the desk pushed his glasses and said humbly. In response, Yuki smiled and said, for the sake of the village? If I remember correctly, Danzo used Yakushi Nono and the people from the orphanage to threaten you, forcing you to take the initiative to join Root to complete all kinds of dangerous tasks. Hearing this, Kabuto was shocked. Just when he thought that the Hokage was doubting his motives and was about to express his loyalty, Yuki interrupted him. Well, you don't have to explain. The way Danzo used to threaten people was indeed wrong and now he is using his death to atone for his sins. Let's forget about the past grudges. Then, Yuki looked at Kabuto and said, Right now, Root no longer exists, and my style of doing things will not be oppressive. Kabuto, what are your plans after coming back this time? Will you continue to be a spy or do other work in Kanaha? As a great contributor to Kanaha over the years, you can make your own choice. The current situation was the same as the original one. After Yuki had imprisoned Danzo and disbanded Root, the original plan of the knave had not happened. The knave was still lurking in the rock village. And the knave had asked him about his thoughts before. He did not force her after knowing that the walking witch was unwilling to resume her old business but was completely focused on the orphanage. After that, he gave enough money to the orphanage every year so that she did not have to worry about money. This was the reward for the people who contributed to Kanaha. As for Kabuto, with Nono still around, Yuki was not worried that the other party would be bewitched by Orochimaru, walking towards the original path of blackening. In addition, as the Hokage, 
he also hoped to see more talents under him. Whether it was in terms of medical treatment or research, Kabuto was undoubtedly a rare talent. Yuki naturally hoped to take him in and become a great help to his great cause. Because of this, he gave the other party a chance to make his own decisions. I, make my own decisions. All along, fate had always been in the hands of others. He was used to treating him as an emotionless weapon. At this moment, when he heard Yuki's words, his heart was instantly confused, delighted, bewildered, and hesitant. All sorts of thoughts were mixed together, so much so that he did not continue to maintain that fake smile on his face. Yes. Make your own decisions. This is my promise to you as the Hokage. Looking at the suddenly at a loss of what to do, Yuki said with certainty. Hearing Yuki say this again, his heart suddenly shook, and his eyes under the lens were full of inquiry. As a spy who had successfully lurked in the enemy village for many years, under countless trials and hardships, his heart, apart from the few warmth, was already full of distrust of anyone. This included the enemy, Kanaha, and even the fourth Hokage in front of him. At first, hearing Yuki say this, Kabuto thought more about whether this was a test or not. If he chose to continue being a spy, it would be fine. If he didn't continue, it was hard to imagine what kind of fate he would face as a disobedient weapon. However, after seeing Yuki's sincere attitude and the fact that it was no longer Danzo and Root who was in charge of him but rather the Hokage, Kabuto felt his heart waver. If it was possible, he was naturally more willing to live with Nono and his companions in the orphanage instead of being in the enemy village with countless fake masks. In the end, even he could not recognize his original appearance as he wandered in the darkness. So. After thinking for a long time, he gritted his teeth. In order to grasp the last trace of warmth in his heart, he finally insisted, Lord Hokage, I want to stay in Kanaha. No problem. Since you chose to return to Kanaha, I will return your ninja file to the village. In addition, your information shows that you are very talented in medical ninjutsu. In this case, you will go to the hospital to work for a while. Not only can you improve your medical level there, but you can also adapt to normal speaking. If you want to make any adjustments later, come back and report. Thank you, Lord Hokage. He did not expect things to be so easy. Even Lord Hokage quickly arranged a new job for him. At the same time, he was relieved. He expressed his sincere gratitude to Yuki from the bottom of his heart and bowed deeply. Yuki shook his head. This is what I should do as the Hokage. In addition, Kabuto, I hope you understand that the present Kanaha is very different from what you know. In my place, heroes will not shed tears and will not sacrifice for nothing. Hero. At this moment, Kabuto's always cold heartstrings were deeply touched for the first time. He had the urge to die for the first time in his life. When Kabuto left the Hokage building and looked at this village that had been loyal to him for so many years but had always been a stranger to him, the desire to understand him grew stronger and stronger. This should be the idea of seeing him as a real family. However, before that, he had to go to the orphanage first. Because of his business, he had not had the time to return after arriving at Kanaha. Now that all the burdens were gone, they could finally meet again. He was looking forward to it. Nono, as well as his companions who were connected to him in the same life. Kabuto touched his beloved glasses, and with a sincere smile, he quickly walked towards the orphanage. Chapter 160, Amaru Let's not talk about the touching picture of Kabuto and Nono after they met. Oh, right. There should be a small misunderstanding halfway. It's just because the photos Danzo gave Nono about the pocket in the past are not his own. But this time, there was enough time. The two could not eliminate misunderstandings several times with the glasses in their pockets. Everything would eventually develop in a good direction. Yuki, who no longer cared about these things, met Inoichi the following time. After receiving all the information about Chenung in the other party's hands, Yuki, who already knew everything about the Kingdom of Kong, only looked at the so-called Zero Tail, Flying Ninja, and so on. The real focus was on the specific location of the remnant of the Land of Sky and the Air Fortress. Although he remembered that the Air Fortress was in the north of the Land of Fire, he did not know the specific location. Fortunately, the memory of Shenong's brain sea had information on this site. In addition, it was no wonder that they had not found any trace of the remnants of the Land of Sky for so many years. It turned out that the other party was hiding on a hidden island in the Great Sea. Yuki looked at the detailed map drawn by Inoichi and pointed at the position of the remnants of the Land of Sky thoughtfully. Since he already knew the specific location, 
it was time to retrieve it. Flying Ninja, Air Fortress, Zero Tail, and so on. If Kanaha got these, it would be like adding wings to a tiger. Someone come. Yuki immediately gave the order. In the north of the Fire Land, a village that sat on the upper reaches of the River of Trust, deep in the tropical forest, with almost no fame, should have lived a life of sunrise and sunset. However, today, the visit of a rarely seen Kanaha Ninja Squadron broke the long silence of the village. After thanking and paying for the food provided by the villagers, it was specially assigned by Yuki. Now that he had taken off his Anvio group and returned to the normal position of Jonan in Kanaha, he was eating and seriously looking at the map in his hand. According to the information, the only sky fortress in the land of sky is the relic mentioned by the villagers. Now that we have found the village, the next relic is not far away. On the side, Yamashiro Aoba raised his sunglasses and said, Later, we will hire a villager to take us to the ruins. It will be easy to find them. After that, according to the information, this aerial fortress named Anchor Dean is always guarded by the land of Sky Ninjas. Although we have no problem dealing with the other side with our strength, it is the home ground of the other side. There is no guarantee that there will be any accidents. We need to be more careful. Mind reading was not omnipotent. Although Inochi could understand all aspects of Shenong, the specific details, such as the structure of the ruins, the internal mechanisms, etc., could not be completely obtained. In particular, the other side did not care about this, and the memory was very ambiguous. That's right. Kakashi, who was the captain again, was especially cautious this time. He did not dare to be careless, especially when he knew that there was a strange creature called Zero in the fortress. Although he and the others also had many backup plans, if he had to do everything, then there was no meaning for them to exist. Kakashi touched the flying divine thunder in his arms and then looked at everyone with a firm gaze. We will set out for the ruins in fifteen minutes. Yes. Burn. My youth. A total of twelve Kanaha ninjas said in unison. Among them, the only one who spoke out was Mitt. The ones participating in this mission were all young ninjas of the same generation as Kakashi. For example, Might Guy, Yamashiro Aoba, Shiranui Genma, Ebisu, Namayashi Rado, Kurane Ui, and others who had been following Asuma Saratobi. After several years of training, these people had grown a lot. This time, the operation of the Land of Sky was also a trial prepared by Yuki for them. Kakashi was not surprised by Might Guy's words, nor did he care. Later, he was ready to find the village chief and hire a guide. A very young kid, who seemed to be wearing something that he could not recognize, whether he was a man or a woman, suddenly rushed out and stopped him. He asked, Are you going to the ruins? Kakashi did not care how the kid before him knew their destination. After all, they did not want to hide it before. He nodded casually and said, That's true. And kid, don't run around outside. Go back and find your parents. I can take you there. I am very familiar with that relic. Imp, who only cared about the first half of the sentence, immediately recommended himself. There was still a certain danger in the relic. Kakashi naturally would not let a kid go with him. Hearing this, he just shook his head. Just as he was about to pass by the other side, he saw Imp anxious and shouted, Really? I didn't lie to you. In the past, I often went to the relic with teacher Shenong. In terms of familiarity with the relic, no one in the whole village knows it better than me. Shenong. Teacher. As the captain of this operation, Kakashi had a certain understanding of Shenong. Hearing that there was such a disciple in the village, Kakashi, who was slightly shocked, suddenly stopped and asked Imp. Do you know about teacher Shenong? Imp said with surprise. In the following time, through the other party's self-introduction, Kakashi finally understood that the so-called disciple of Shenong was self-recognized. Because of her serious illness when she was a child, when the villagers despised her, only Shenong, who pretended to be too good, saved her and successfully treated her. Therefore, she was deeply grateful to Shenong and wanted to follow him. Facing a little ghost, Kakashi could judge whether he was lying or not. At this moment, seeing that the other party was telling the truth, he felt relieved and asked, then why do you want to take us to the ruins? If possible, I don't want your reward. I just hope that you can take me to Kanaha. Originally, I wanted to go with teacher Shenong to practice medicine, but the teacher did not agree, and he did not come back for a long time. In addition, I have no relatives here, and the villagers do not like me. I heard that the medical ninjutsu in Kanaha is very advanced 
and I want to go there to learn medicine. Quite, ambitious. Looking at the little radish head in front of him, who had not even reached his waist, Kakashi could not help but admire her courage. As for the hiring matter. If this little ghost was familiar with the ruins, bringing it back to Kanaha would be fine. Nowadays, Kanaha is different from the past, when they only recruited people from the village. After Yuki became the general of the Fire Land, Kanaha's ninja reserve force recruitment spread directly from one village to one land. During this time, many ninjas from the Land of Fire had brought the good seedlings from other places back to Kanaha. For this reason, whether it was the scale of the school or the division, Kanaha's ninja school has expanded several times. It doesn't matter if there is a rain or a rain. After all, every superior ninja in Kanaha had the task of finding good seedlings when they left the village. Kakashi was the same. As for the matter of Shenong, he had nothing to worry about. Not to mention that the other party deserved it, as long as Amaru grew up in Kanaha, the latter would naturally turn her into one of their own. Even if she knew the true face of Shenong in the future, she would be able to deal with it with the right attitude. However, the premise of all this was that Amaru really understood the ruins as well as he said. So in the following time, after a test, learning that Amaru knew more about the ruins than he did, Kakashi finally nodded in agreement in the surprised eyes of the former. Whoosh! 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 Under the guidance of Amaru, more than a dozen black shadows shuttled through the dense rainforest. At this time, Amaru, who was lying on her red back, looked at her sister with surprise and envy as she easily shuttled through the forest, but she was not tired at all. If she had only wanted to go to Kanaha to learn medicine before, then this was the first time she desired ninjas. I heard from Kakashi that children who grew up in other villages like her would find it difficult to join Kanaha and learn ninjutsu. Fortunately, these rules have been changed now. If he really wanted to become a ninja, he only needed to go to Kanaha, have the birth certificate of the Fire Land, and have chakra cultivation talent to learn. And the one who changed all of this was the fourth Hokage of Kanaha, who was also the general of the Fire Land. Thank you, my lord. Amaru was full of expectations for the future and was sincerely grateful to the big man who did not cover his face. He pointed to the shortcut path that only he knew about the Kanaha ninjas. Finally, after the time was shortened by half, Amaru, who came to the destination, happily pointed to an empty space not far away and said, do you see those stone pillars extending from the ground? That is the ruins. There are many ruins buried deep below the ground. I often came here when I had nothing to do, and I just happened to know a crack deep into the ground. From there, I can walk fewer roads than other passages and reach the inner hall of the ruins faster. This is a secret passage that even Teacher Shenong doesn't know, only I know. It seems that bringing a little ghost like you here is the right thing to do. Kakashi nodded, in addition. Don't go into the ruins. Now I need you to draw out all the internal structures you know. Although Kakashi had a supercilious ninja, he had just discovered that a layer of unknown black chakra covered the surface of the ruins and could not be explored deeply. In this way, he would have to use someone familiar with the ruins, like Amaru. The other party often went to the ruins for a stroll. The ninjas here knew this person was very important to the leader, so they did not stop him. This also made Amaru very clear about the structure of the ruins. At this time, hearing Kakashi's command, she nodded. Although she did not know why Kanaha's ninjas were so concerned about the ruins, when she thought she could study in Kanaha, she did not refute and began to paint seriously. After a quarter of an hour, he memorized the entire structure of the ruins in his heart and quickly formulated a detailed plan. Kakashi waved to the people who were ready and said. Let's go. In an instant. A total of thirteen Kanaha's troops silently headed towards a crack not far away. Only Amaru was left waiting in place with a little puzzlement and blessings. Chapter 161, Don't Blow Yourself Up As the former headquarters of the Land of Sky, Anchor had made a name for himself in World War II. However, because of this, in the battle with Kanaha, this huge air fortress became the focus of the attack. Although it was not shot down in the end, it was heavily damaged and could only be forced to land in the territory of the Land of Fire. After being covered by the remnants of the air ninjas, it became a relic in the mouth of the nearby villagers. Decades had passed, and the original Kanaha had long forgotten the enemy that appeared in World War II. However, the Sky Ninjas did not forget the enemy who destroyed their land. Over the years, the remaining Sky Ninjas hid in the dark under the leadership of Shenong, increasing their strength bit by bit. Flying Ninja, Kunao, Aircraft Carrier, and other weapons were all made one by one. 
only anchor Bandine Air Fortress, because they were afraid of being noticed by Kanaha, the Sky Ninjas did not repair it. When Kakashi led a group of Kanaha Ninjas into the underground fortress, they could see that many of the walls around them were covered with moss and vines. Deep cracks could be seen in them. After stepping over a boulder that fell from the ceiling, Kakashi opened the internal structure diagram written by Amaru and led everyone straight into the core, heading towards the control hall. Step. 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 Suddenly, there was a sound of footsteps coming from the shadows ahead. Kakashi waved his hand, and everyone scattered and quickly hid. When a four-man team of air guards arrived, they saw several shadows rushing out, and the former did not have time to react before he fell limply to the ground. To prevent the air guards from jumping down the wall and destroying the control panel of the air fortress, Kakashi and the others did not choose to attack head-on at the beginning. The next time, Kanaha's ninjas managed to assassinate several of their patrols and finally came outside the control hall. There were many of them inside, and it was unrealistic not to make any noise. At this time, Kakashi pulled up Kanaha's forehead, revealing his three Sharingan, and coldly said, Attack with all your strength. In an instant. A large number of kunao swords in his hands were thrown into the control hall. Many of the air ninjas who had no time to react fell to the ground in pain. Who is it? An air ninja leader dodged the attack in time. Just as he was angrily questioning, he suddenly saw a green figure rushing in front of him extremely fast. He shouted passionately. Kanaha's strength whirlwind. The air ninja leader only felt his eyes blur, and then his whole body suddenly slammed into the wall. Rumble. The sounds of intense fighting broke out. After the air ninjas were caught off guard, they finally reacted and took out their kunao-like air blowers, spraying out a large amount of kunao towards the incoming Kanaha ninjas. Wind style wind style technique. With a raise of his speed, Asuma Saratobi, who had arrived in front of everyone, quickly formed seals with his hands, and a violent whirlwind from his mouth blew away a large amount of kunao. On the side, Yamashiro Aoba, who had displayed the thousand crow art, pointed his finger. Suddenly, hundreds of crows flew towards the Sky Ninja, disrupting his vision. Taking advantage of this opportunity, he did not want to use too many area of effect ninjutsu to prevent the injured Kanaha ninjas from getting close to him and fighting against the Sky Ninja. Sakura Nair Seeing Technique The several air ninjas who were fighting against Kurane Ui suddenly saw the falling cherry blossoms. Instantly, everyone fell into a deep sleep. After easily dealing with these people, Kurane Ui was just about to find her next target when she suddenly heard a sharp sound behind her. Her eyes focused, and her hand turned around. Just as she was about to turn around, she saw a familiar figure quickly come in. Drum. Drum. After a few moments, when Kurane looked over, she saw Asuma holding the unconscious Sky Ninja in one hand and holding a swallow in the other. He posed handsomely and said to her in a cool tone, Kurane, be careful. Kurane couldn't help but roll her eyes and said, I'm fine from the start. After that, she was too lazy to pay attention to Asuma, who was still the same as when she was a child, and she killed herself towards the other air ninjas. Asuma rubbed her nose when she saw this and continued to follow him as usual. Most of the air ninjas' strength was now in the air combat with absolute advantage, but in terms of individual quality, they were far inferior to Kanaha's ninjas. Because of this, when the two sides engaged in close combat, the entire battle turned upside down not long after. Soon, when all the Sky Ninjas in the control hall were dealt with, and Kakashi, who had more than half of his plan succeeded, was about to say something, he suddenly heard rapid footsteps not far away. Apparently, the Sky Ninjas, who were scattered in other places, heard the fight and came to support. Kakashi's face remained unchanged as he ordered, Team 1, stay in the control hall and protect everything here. The others go to various parts of the fortress to clean up the remaining Sky Ninjas in the fortress. Yes. After receiving the order, Kanaha's ninjas scattered in all directions. Kakashi also ran toward the passage that had just made a noise. Soon, the sharp cries of thousands of birds sounded in the dark passage. A series of screams came from the air ninjas before they died. An hour later, Kanaha's ninjas cleaned up the remaining air ninjas in the air fortress. When Kakashi returned to the control hall, through the information he got from Shenum, he reached out and pressed a wall. In an instant, he saw a floor beside him move away, revealing a secret passage down. Through this passage, he could go to the Air Fortress's core power room, where Zero was sealed. After telling the others to wait in place, 
Kakashi jumped and entered the secret passage. A minute later, he walked to the edge of the passage. He saw the huge cylindrical space with seal runes engraved on the wall and in the middle of it. Shenan had not put it into the rain, but it was wrapped in a yellow seal. It was like a snake with a zero mask on its head. It was a huge monster named Zero. Even if Kakashi was prepared, he still could not help but be shocked. Knowing that the monster below was not something he could solve, Kakashi took out the flying thunder god in his arms and looked at his pocket watch. When he found that there were still twenty minutes before the scheduled time, he waited in peace. Flying Thunder God had no coordinates, although its owner could use Chakra to teleport here. But this did not mean that the latter could sense everything around the coordinates before teleporting. This was also why Minato did not appear in time when Obito and Rin were in danger. Although Zero was not a real Baiju and had the shame of a Baiju, it was not something a normal ninja could handle. Thus, before setting out, after estimating the time needed for the operation, the busy Yuki would arrive at the appointed time. Originally, Kakashi was worried that he would not be able to complete the mission within the specified time limit. Fortunately, the unexpected appearance of Amaru made the operation extremely smooth, and the planned time limit was 20 minutes early. The first mission to leave the Anvio group was finally completed. This made Kakashi heave a sigh of relief. At the same time, he still remembered the last time he was the captain, but the shadow of the death of all the members, including Rin, gradually dissipated. Obito Rin. I will carry your blessings and continue walking with a smile. Kakashi touched his left eye and sighed. Twenty minutes later, Flying Thunder God appeared on time. It seems that, Kakashi, you have completed your task very well. Looking around, Yuki, who was clearly in the place where the tail was sealed, patted Kakashi on the shoulder and praised him. Although many people are in the air, their combat strength is much weaker than expected. In addition, we also have to rely on the help of a child for this operation. Kakashi, who had not taken any credit, reported seriously. Oh? Child? It seems that you guys have an unexpected and exciting journey. Yuki smiled and said, let's talk about it later. As for now, let's deal with this Zero in front of us. After saying that, Yuki lowered his head and looked down at Zero, who was wrapped in a yellow seal membrane. Zero Tail was first discovered because it was a creature made up of dark chakra, just like the Baiju. It was also the wish to possess a powerful Baiju weapon like the five great countries. Unfortunately, compared to the real Baiju, although the power of Zero Tail originated from the dark side of the human heart, as long as the human could not completely break away from the darkness, it would not die. However, in terms of actual combat effectiveness, it was just average. Originally, it was weakened because it absorbed Naruto and left an excessive amount of chakra, so it was defeated because it was speechless. It was no wonder that the Sky Ninjas used it as the power source of the Sky Fortress. The current Yuki Senju, naturally, would not care about the so-called Dark Chakra. Similar to the Sky Ninja of the past, he was also prepared to use Zero as a perpetual motion machine. After all, this guy would never die, so naturally, he could squeeze as much as he wanted. Looking at Zero, who was restless because of the arrival of an unfamiliar aura, Yuki said to Kakashi, you stay here. After that, he took a step forward and immediately learned the earth release, heavy rock. His body was incomparably light as he slowly descended. Although he was using ninjutsu halfway through, the chakra was constantly seeping out of his body and being absorbed by Zero's current power source in the air fortress, but relying on the enormous amount of chakra and extremely fast recovery speed, Yuki didn't care about this at all. Don't burst yourself. Zero tail. Yuki lightly landed on the ground and looked at Zero's tail before him. He had a smile on his face as he teased. Chapter 162, Return with a Rewarding Experience As the power core of Anchor Dean's aerial fortress, the Hollow Ninja had controlled Zero tail well for many years. Even if the Hollow was declining now, Zero tail could not break out of the seal. Therefore, in the face of Zero tail, whose huge body constantly stretched and pulled in the yellow seal membrane, Yuki was not worried. The middle Naruto and the left assistant fought with Zero Tail because Shenan controlled the latter. Now that all the space ninjas in the fortress had been dealt with, and no matter how much the tail struggled, it could not get rid of the seal barrier that the Land of Sky had used up a lot of energy to set up. This tailless beast was destined to be Yuki Senjo's meal. At this moment, under the angry gaze of the tail, Yuki, who is in front of it, quickly makes a series of hand seals according to the information obtained from Shenan. The real core of the Sky Fortress was undoubtedly the tail. 
the Skyland had a set of special control techniques for the latter. This technique differed from the kind of technique that the future Shenan would obtain from Kanaha, which could control the Zero Tail and absorb Dark Chakra from its body to strengthen its forbidden technique. Instead, the technique controlled its power to turn it into kinetic energy and truly control the Air Fortress. This also meant that when Yuki completed the technique, the Air Fortress named Anchor Bendine would become his possession. As for the forbidden technique that Shenan would obtain in the future, Yuki also had it here. However, he didn't like to corrupt people, so he naturally wouldn't use it. For Yuki, the biggest use of the tail was to use it as a perpetual motion machine. It could be used in the Air Fortress. As for the future, if needed, it could be used as a weapon. Using the zero tail that would not die and could transform great kinetic energy as a weapon would be a waste. As Yuki thought about this, he quickly formed seals. Soon, the moment he finished, the seal runes on the walls around him lit up one by one. Finally, a flickering empty character appeared above the zero tail. This was the key to the highest control of the air fortress. With a wave of his hand, the word empty quickly flew into his palm and disappeared. At this point, the air fortress was completely under his control. Then, let's test the quality of the air fortress now. He brought Kakashi back to the control hall outside. After making the other Kanaha ninjas mentally prepare themselves, they went to the golden disc in the center of the hall. Yuki stretched out his hand and drew a strange symbol on it. In the next moment, the golden disc emitted a bright light. Then, along with the roar of the machine in the entire fortress and the roar of Zero, who had just absorbed a lot of Yuki's chakra from the sealed space. The air fortress moved at this moment. Soon, the earth around the fortress cracked like an earthquake, and the huge air fortress rose up from the ground with unstoppable momentum. At this moment, Kakashi and the others did not come out for a long time. Amaru was worried and suddenly saw a huge monster rising from the ground before him. He was stunned and said, What is this? Kakashi and the others were also surprised. Although the data showed that the fortress could fly, seeing it with their own eyes was still shocking. That's not all. Yuki chose a mountain with no one on it with great interest. Then, he activated the energy of the Zero Tail and activated the energy of super heavy artillery in the air fortress. In an instant, a large amount of energy from the Zero Tail gathered on the disc on the surface of the fortress. After a loud explosion, a thick and destructive pillar of light shot out from the fortress, pointing at the top of the mountain at an extremely fast speed. Rumble. It was as if the sky had collapsed. Under everyone's gaze, in less than a second, the mountain that the pillar of light had hit immediately disappeared. The pillar of light continued to shoot backwards. Along with a series of explosions, it drew a deep gully of a hundred meters on the ground before finally stopping. At this moment, Asuma, who had deliberately distanced himself from Kurane, didn't even care about smoking. Might Guy didn't continue his push UPS? Yamashiro Aoba even took off his sunglasses to see what was happening. If the previous flying shock of the fortress was one, then after witnessing the full power attack of the fortress, everyone was ten times more shocked. This power is no weaker than the Baiju. Kakashi said in his heart. Fortunately, Kanaha launched an attack on the Sky Ninjas. If the latter were ready to attack Kanaha, the consequences would be unimaginable if the village was hit. On the other side, compared to the shock of the others, Yuki's face was still calm. After testing out the air fortress, overall, he was quite satisfied. Whether it was the flying and carrying ability of the air carrier, or the power of the giant cannon, they all had an overwhelming advantage against most ninjas. It could be called a battle against the army, a city artifact. However, because of its huge size, it could only be a target in the face of true experts. For example, the person who could release the Baiju. There was also the third Tsuchikage, who could destroy the air fortress with a single dust release. In any case, the air fortress and the Baiju were like a tiger that had grown wings for Kanaha. In this way, it was not a waste for Yuki Senja to make this trip. Next, the only thing that needed to be dealt with was the last group of survivors who were hiding in the sea. The latter had Minato leading the team, so naturally, he was extremely relieved. At this moment, he waved his hand and said, Our target is Kanaha. Let's go. The air fortress turned around and then quickly flew towards the Kanaha village. However, not long after, Kakashi's anxious shout rang out in the fortress. Wait. Lord Hokage. I have to go pick up someone. Just as Yuki returned to Kanaha with a group of Kanaha ninjas. On the other side, Minato led a group of his men to an island that did not exist on the map. 
the latter was the last remaining ninja member in the ninja world. After two days of sailing, Minato, who was close to his destination, checked the main team's location and sent out three huge aircraft carriers. Knowing the characteristics of the sky, he did not choose to attack immediately but put the time into the middle of the night. Only in this way could the sky ninjas, who had no defense, not be able to use the air advantage. In addition, the three aircraft carriers, Minato also had the idea of seizing the. So, the next time, while Minato and the other Kanaha ninjas were resting in their own ships, they also let the ninjas who specially brought them open a hidden barrier to cover the hull. Being able to be free and unfettered under the eyes of the five great countries for such a long time, the ninjas naturally did not lack vigilance. Not long after Kanaha's ship arrived and opened the barrier, a black dot suddenly whistled through the sky. Those who didn't know what was happening would only think it was some kind of bird. However, Minato and the others knew that the Sky Ninjas were controlling the Flying Ninja to investigate. At this moment, Minato was looking at the sky with a burning gaze. After experiencing the Scorpion and the Humble, he used his flying ability to escape. For the first time, he deeply understood the threat in the air. For this reason, he also specially wrote a proposal letter for Kanaha to develop its power in the air. Only then did he have a plan for the Land of Sky. It could be said that Kanaha's current operation's real purpose was to obtain the Land of Sky technology in the field of flight. Soon. Looking at Sky Ninjas, who had finished his patrol in the sky and was about to return, Minato murmured in his heart. Late at night. The three huge aircraft carriers were like giant beasts lurking in the dark. Not far away, the island where Sky Ninjas was living was completely silent, without a trace of light. In this ring, under the bright moonlight, Kanaha ninjas, led by Minato, stepped on the water's surface one after another, quietly making their way to the island like ghosts. When they came to the aircraft carrier, Minato stretched out his hand, and the three planned teams separated and quickly climbed into the aircraft carrier, ready to deal with the space ninjas inside. Minato led the large team to the island. A few minutes later, a strong smell of blood filled the air. Who is it? Not long after, an air ninja who finally found something wrong shouted, and a golden flash of light came in a flash. He did not have time to react, and he instantly stopped breathing. Attack. Shaking off the blood, Minato looked around at the noisy camp of the Sky Ninjas, and his face was full of coldness as he gave the order. The next second, the real attack started. Fire style majestic fireball technique. Wind style damage. Flesh bullet chariot. Secret technique parasitic worm. Fang passing fang. Soon, under the continuous explosions caused by Kanaha's ninjas, the numerous ninjas in the camp were instantly thrown into a mess, screaming endlessly. The strength of Kanaha's ninjas was already far stronger than the air ninjas, and now, under the latter's unprepared sneak attack, they naturally won repeatedly. At this moment, the most eye-catching thing was not the gorgeous ninjutsu released by the Kanaha ninjas. Instead, under the night sky, in the midst of the crowd of sky ninjas, the incomparably bright golden light shuttled back and forth like lightning. Every time the golden light passed by the crowd, it instantly caused a large group of sky ninjas to fall to the ground. WH what is it? The other ninjas who saw this scene not far away were terrified. However, when they still wanted to say something, they saw that the golden flash had already arrived before them, and their vision quickly turned dark. Until death, these ninjas did not see clearly whether the person who killed them was a person, an object, or a ninjutsu. At this moment, the famous three battles, the Gold Flash Minato, who made the Rock Ninjas and Cloud Ninjas tremble with fear, in front of the other victim, the other Sky Ninja released a dazzling light that even the gorgeous ninjutsu could not hide. In just a short time, under Minato's high-speed killing, the number of Sky Ninjas that died in his hands was even more than the sum of other Kanaha Ninjas. After noticing such a terrifying speed of death, the remaining Sky Ninjas were terrified and no longer had the courage to raise their hands and surrender. Finally. They stopped, letting everyone see their true colors. Minato smiled at the scene in front of him. At this point, all the power of the Sky Land had been wiped out by Kanaha, and Kanaha inherited all the techniques and equipment they possessed. Chapter 163, Ninja School Starts This was the end of the matter of the Land of Sky. Just as Minato was about to return, he was ordered to start building the air force belonging to Kanaha. Under the entanglement of Tsunade, who was the Hokage, he had no choice but to pick up a part of Kanaha's work and start the conversation at 2 colon 1. A few months later. Because during this time, the fourth Hokage was simultaneously the general of the Fire Land, 
so after the Fireland had injected more funds into Kanaha village than before, it is almost visible to the naked eye that the village was undergoing tremendous changes every day. In the past, there was no one on the outskirts of the village, but now that a new house had been built, the forest at the edge of the village was constantly being cut down to expand the village. In the center of the village, many high-rise buildings filled with modern sense were built. All kinds of new technology products filled the streets and alleys, and the flow of people was several times more than before. After removing the shackles of land and village in Kanaha village, it benefited from its unique geographical position and excellent cultural environment. At the same time, under the guidance of Yuki, it finally burst out with amazing growth. According to its development speed, it might not take long for it to replace the capital of the land of fire, the first city in the world of climbing. Although the future number one city was still called a village on the official face. At the same time, it was because of the village development that they saw with their own eyes that some of the villagers and ninjas who were worried about the change in the land and the village system were now truly relieved. They might not understand those principles, but for good or bad, they could still recognize them clearly. Now, they were extremely supportive of the fourth Hokage, Yuki Senju. The only thing that was slightly dissatisfying was that too many foreigners stayed in the village during this time. Although the increase in population brought about the rapid development of the village economy, it also increased the value of the houses that the locals lived in, and their assets increased. However, based on the superiority of the locals, especially in the years that the Kanaha village had been drifting away from the fire land system, it had already formed a closed circle of habits. Many villagers were still very unaccustomed to the newcomers. But they could only adapt even if they were not used to it. Under the reform launched by Yuki Senju, not only did the fire land undergo a great change, but the Kanaha village would also affect it. The latter was truly integrated into the fire land, which was one of the changes. The Kanaha village today was very lively. Especially the little ghosts who were jumping around with their parents early in the morning, the number of people was much higher than usual. As for the reason, today was the day of the new year of the ninja school enrollment. And unlike the previous village children who only needed a few each year. Now under the instructions of Yuki, because the recruitment range of the ninja school had expanded to the entire land of fire, although the first year was not have enough experience, and the organization was relatively low, even so, the number of new students this year was ten times more than the previous years. Many children of the land of fire yearned for ninjas. They didn't have this opportunity in the past, but now they are lucky to be selected. Naturally, they were so excited that they didn't sleep much all night. At dawn, they called their parents, who came with them early, and they were excited to go to the ninja school. Among the new villagers of Kanaha, the number of new students in the ninja school and the relatives who moved in was very large. For this reason, there were also Kanaha ninjas who proposed to Yuki that the loyalty of these children in the outer village was inevitably low, and even the situation of the enemy village spies appeared. Yuki did not care about this. However, five or six years old children were like a piece of white paper, using Kanaha's powerful brainwashing methods to turn them into their own people. Even because they were not born in Kanaha, these children would use greater strength to prove their loyalty after growing up. As for the so-called spies, it didn't matter if there were some. The so-called spy influence was nothing compared to Kanaha's huge ninja reserve power. In addition, not every spy could be as good as the pharmacist Kabuto. Moreover, in the face of the brilliant general trend, all obstacles in the gutter were nothing more than ants trying to shake a tree. In the future, Kanaha might not have to find out by themselves. After the sand mixed in the wood leaves recognized the reality, they would take the initiative to change. The general trend was ultimately standing in the hands of Kanaha and the fire land. At this moment, when many of the new students had already set out early in Kakashi's home, Amaru, who was also this year's new student, came to Kakashi's bed with black lines on her face. She shook the still asleep person and shouted, Kakashi Sr. Kakashi Sr. Wake up! Kakashi brought Amaru to Kanaha as promised as a big reward for helping the Air Fortress mission. With the latter's age, he had to enter the ninja school first if he wanted to learn Kanaha's medical ninjutsu. However, since the training time was not up yet, in the past few months, Amaru could only temporarily live in Kakashi's house to clean up and offset the food and accommodation expenses. Before this, she had passed the ninja qualification test of the ninja school and became a glorious reserve student. Today was the official day of the report. Originally, she was in a very good mood, especially when her respected Kakashi senior had promised to take her to report like the other children. This made Amaru, who had lost her parents when she was a child and spent most of her time alone, 
very touched. However, she ignored the nature of Kakashi's late king. Young. It's raining. Girls shouldn't be so impatient. It's still early. Let me sleep for a while longer. Kakashi, who was still wearing a mask when sleeping, lazily said a few words without opening his eyes. Then he turned over and continued to sleep. Amaru, who was now dressed like a normal girl, immediately blew up and said, There are only twenty minutes left before the registration time. Wash up in the middle, get dressed, eat breakfast, hurry up, and so on, it's already very fast. Kakashi Sr., hurry up and get up. I don't want to be late on the first day of school. Call call Kakashi responded with a shout. Wiping his card. Amaru clenched her fists tightly, looking as if she had been played. Then, she laughed, since you are so heartless, don't blame me for being heartless. After saying that, Amaru picked up Kakashi's ninja bag and took out a yellow cover book called Intimacy Heaven. Don't think I don't know that you are reading this indecent book every night. Because of this book, you have also been frustrated during the day, and now you are so tired that you can't even get up. In this case. As he spoke, he raised the book with both hands, and his face was determined, as the culprit who harmed you, Kakashi, I will destroy this book. The resonant and powerful voice of righteousness sounded in the room. Just as he was about to destroy the source of sin in his hands, suddenly. A shrill male voice rang out, Father. In an instant. Kakashi, who was still sleepy, jumped up as fast as he could in his life. In a blink of an eye, her hands were empty. Amaru was taken aback for a moment, her eyes moved from her empty hands to the empty bed in front of her, and then she turned her head abruptly, just in time to see Kakashi carefully inspecting the books for damage. At this moment, seeing Amaru look at him, Kakashi reflexively hid behind him. Then he smiled and said to the former. Amaru, it's getting late. Let's hurry to the ninja school. This is your first day of school. You must not be late. Amaru. Not far away, Parker and his little brothers, who were just woken up, saw this scene. In front of the newly expanded Kanaha Ninja School gate, many young and talented new children, who were of the appropriate age and had the talent of ninjas, were bidding farewell to their family members who had come with them. Like a tornado, a long smoke and dust quickly drove over from behind them. You. It's Kakashi. Some sharp-eyed parents saw the person who made this noise. When the latter stopped, they greeted him smiling, Kakashi. Why is the great king in such a hurry? And who is this little girl next to you? My sister. Send her to ninja school. Seeing his acquaintance, Kakashi smiled and patted her head. Although she was very dissatisfied with Kakashi's procrastination when she heard him say she was his sister, her heart still trembled, and she instantly felt warmth. This was the reason why she kept urging Kakashi and did not come alone. The more she did not have something, the more she looked forward to it. Especially when this family came with her, she did not want her lonely self to become the most special of all the people. How is it? I said there's still time. Along the way to the gate of the ninja school with Amaru, Kakashi, who was still doing his duty as a parent, pointed to the school clock with some time left and said with great satisfaction. Speaking of which, this was the first time he was not late for business. Well, it was very encouraging. Hearing this, Amaru rolled her eyes. How could it be so smooth if she hadn't seized his life before? Seemingly aware of what Amaru was thinking, Kakashi laughed and scratched his head, changing the topic. Amaru, you have to study well in the ninja school. I heard the school would open a new medical course outside the normal course. At that time, very powerful medical ninjas will be coming to teach. The best of the students will have a chance to get guidance from Master Tsunade, who has the highest medical level in the current world. Master Tsunade After being in the ninja world for several months, Amaru, who already had a preliminary understanding of ninjas, was recognized as the best in medical skills. Moreover, Master Tsunade, who was a woman, naturally admired her. At this time, when he heard that his idol might come to the school to give pointers, his eyes lit up and he was so excited that he didn't even notice the person beside him. However, just because he didn't pay attention didn't mean that Kakashi didn't notice. He was slightly shocked when he saw the person, Shisui, why are you here? Who is this child? Good morning, Kakashi. Shisui greeted him with a smile. On the side, the child, who was about the same age as Amaru, who Shisui brought, did not have an Uchiha emblem on his clothes. He bowed politely and said, 
Hello, Senior. My name is Haku, and I hope you can advise me. Chapter 164, The Times Are In Your Own Hands Haku? Isn't he an Uchiha? Although Kakashi was puzzled, he still greeted the child named Haku. On the side, Shisui, who was clear about Kakashi's doubts, explained, Haku is an orphan I met when I was out on a mission. I brought him back to the village because he has good ninja talent. He will become a member of Kanaha's ninjas in the future. He didn't elaborate on the details. In fact, after secretly carrying out an S-level mission in the Land of Water, he unexpectedly saw the wandering by inadvertently condense an ice flower in his hand. He knew the Land of Water very well. This was the special blood limit of the Snow Clan, Ice Escape. Misty Village had long destroyed the Snow Clan, and the child in front of him was undoubtedly the result of an accident after a great purge. After some communication, he found that Haku was alone with a pure heart, so he had a love for talent and brought him back. Of course, this matter also informed the Hokage, Yuki. Although Kanaha's superior ninja had the power to bring back a talented ninja, the scope was only within the land of fire. To be honest, stopping the water was a bit excessive. However, when Yuki and the young man named Haku obtained the ice escape technique, he immediately waved his hand and pushed the green light away. He did not expect that he would bring back someone he was familiar with when he went out. At such a young age, Haku, who could still form seals with one hand, was undoubtedly a good seedling. In addition, his character was extremely loyal, and it would be a waste of talent if he didn't chop it off. Kanaha was undoubtedly his best destination. At this moment, after hearing the simple explanation, Kakashi nodded. Speaking of which, this was the same nature as Amaru. Amaru, come and greet your future classmates. Kakashi patted her head and woke her up from her beautiful fantasy. Oh, okay. In just a short time, her imagination had already broken through to the point where she had become the direct disciple of Tsunade. After that, she surpassed her master and became a medical grandmaster worldwide admired. Although she was a little disappointed, she was not willing to be rude in front of outsiders. She quickly shook her head and looked at her future classmate, who was much higher than her. She smiled and greeted her. Hello, sister. I am Amaru. Please guide me in the future. Amaru, hello. I am Haku. Please forgive me. I am not a sister. I am a man. In the end, Haku stressed. Obviously, this problem had been bothering him for a long time. Kakashi. Are you a man? Amaru rubbed her eyes in disbelief, looking at Haku's face, which was much more beautiful and fair than hers. She never thought that the other party was not a girl. Kakashi, who had also looked away, also fell into deep self-doubt. He didn't expect that he couldn't even distinguish between a man and a woman after so many years. Now it seemed that his cultivation was still very shallow. When I go back, I will read it ten times. This kind of principal mistake must not be made again. Kakashi made a goal for himself in his heart. At this time, in the face of Amaru's doubts, Haku was still polite and said, Perhaps I have let you down, Amaru. I am indeed a man. No, no, no. I didn't mean that. Hearing this, Amaru hurriedly waved her hand and said, I just haven't seen a boy as good looking as you. I am just a little surprised. By the way, how did you maintain your skin? It's really fair and clear. The children in the Naruto world matured very early. Even a little brat like Amaru was starting to care about her appearance. If there was anything that she was dissatisfied with, it was because she had always been in the wilderness, her skin was a bit darker. Bai expressed his confusion, maintenance. I didn't do it. You didn't do any maintenance, and your skin is so white? Then what do you usually eat and drink? Amaru asked in surprise. Honest Haku replied, I. Thus, in the following time, the two little ghosts began to ask and answer questions beyond their age, making Kakashi and Shisui feel very awkward. The two of them had never had a girlfriend. As single dogs, they never thought that the first time they heard the topic of women's maintenance was from the little devil who was only five or six years old. What a pity! Especially when he noticed that the people around him were a couple, and only the two bachelors were here to send the children off, the urge to leave grew stronger. Fortunately, at this moment, a teacher wearing the uniform of Kanaha walked out of the school and shouted, The new students who haven't been reported are to enter the school now. If they don't come, they will be punished according to truancy. Seeing this, Kakashi breathed a sigh of relief and said, 
it's getting late. Amaru and Haku, hurry up and report. Yes, yes. Shisui nodded repeatedly. Seeing this, Amaru and Haku could only stop the topic and bid farewell to the two. Kakashi Sr., I will come to see you often in the future. Amaru waved to Kakashi and said goodbye. After entering the ninja school, orphans like her or new parents who were not in the village would stay in the newly built dormitory of the ninja school, and the Kakashi family naturally would not live in it anymore. Welcome, welcome. If you come, remember to inform me in advance. In the end, Kakashi, who put down his bag, waved his hand lazily and specifically reminded him. With the early morning lesson, he had to hide his beloved book every time he visited in the future. On the other side, it was normal for Shisui and Haku to say goodbye. Haku, you have to study hard in the ninja school. If there is anything you don't understand in life or study, you can come to me anytime. Shisui patted Haku on the shoulder. For Mr. Shisui, Haku will definitely study hard. Looking at the benefactor who had pulled him out from the dark, White's face was grateful. Shisui said, not only for me, but also for the special approval of the Hokage, for the future of your new home, and for yourself. Understood. I will study hard for Mr. Shisui, Lord Hokage, and Kanaha. Haku said with a firm tone. You still haven't thought about yourself. Shisui sighed in his heart. Finally, he patted Haku on the shoulder and said, If you have nothing to do on the weekend, come to my house. My house is quite remote and empty. If you come with Haku, the house will be more lively. Okay, Mr. Shisui. Hearing this, Haku's eyes lit up, and he nodded happily. Soon, after all the new students had entered the school, the gate of Kanaha's ninja school was slowly closed under the gaze of many parents who were still outside. Inside, under the arrangement of the school teachers, the young Kanaha seedlings obediently stood in formation in the sports field, waiting for the respected, beloved, and worshipful Lord Fourth Hokage to personally come to the scene, giving their annual speech to the new students. It is worth mentioning that because of Haku's appearance, he made even more noise in the sports field than when he entered the school. As usual, Yuki, who was observing through the crystal ball, naturally watched with great interest. On the other side, after getting rid of his burden and finally returning to the life of a single man, Kakashi stretched and suggested to Shisui, it's still early, and there's nothing to do today. Why don't we go have a drink? No problem. Although love was far, far away in life and career, Shisui nodded with great satisfaction. Right now, what he was most willing to do was to look at the things around him. Under the leadership of Lord Hokage, these people, under the construction of these people, were developing step by step toward the beautiful scene in his dreams. If, at this time, some friends and relatives could witness it together, it would undoubtedly be a wonderful thing. The two of them set off for the wine shop. Halfway through, he was walking out of the pill shop, holding a large bunch of meatballs in one hand and eating them. He was very happy when he saw Kakashi and Shisui. After asking curiously, he also chose to join in. The three of them didn't walk for long when they met Might Guy, who was walking upside down. As Kakashi's lifelong enemy, when he heard that he would drink, he naturally did not say anything and wanted to compete with Kakashi in the 34th match of alcohol. After that, he saw Ebisu quietly looking through Pretty Sister's books in the bookstore. Since there were more people than the original plan, there was no harm in adding one more person. So, Kakashi pulled out the reluctant Ebisu. In the end, when they arrived at the wine shop, either by chance or by special notice, the first gathering was just a temporary meeting between Kakashi and Shisui. Now, it had developed into a rare gathering between Kakashi and his classmates, apart from the younger Shisui. In addition to the previous five people who arrived at the scene, there were also Yamashiro Aoba, Namayashi Rado, Ibiki Marino, Kamizuki Izumo, Hagana Katetsu, Shirenui Genma, Tatami Iwashi, Kurane Ui and without accident followed the latter. Asuma, there are 14 people in total. There should have been more people in the same batch. However, after experiencing the cruel three battles, only these people from the same batch could be alive and kicking. Although Shisui was considered a junior in terms of age, his strength, position, and fame could be said to be the most famous among the crowd. He was not surprised when everyone talked about him. Instead, he was very open. In particular, as the representative of the younger generation of Kanaha, they had never thought that the older generation had formed, nor had they experienced the influence of the will of the new fire since childhood. Between the two, they could deeply understand the changes in Kanaha, 
so they undoubtedly had more thoughts, and the conversation was undoubtedly more vigorous. In the Hokage's office, when Yuki, who had just returned from the cheers of the seedlings, looked at the crystal ball, he inadvertently noticed this scene. He smiled and closed it. There was no need to check. It was because he was very clear. The air was already in his control. Chapter 165, Finally Proposed Although Yuki boldly declared that the air was already in his grasp, he still had an insignificant person compared to the times that he had yet to grasp. That's right. I am talking about you. Tsunade. Me? What's the matter? Tsunade, who had just drunk a cup of wine, seemed to have heard something in the wine tavern. She raised her hazy eyes and asked Yuki. Nothing, let's continue drinking. Yuki sighed deeply and waved his hand helplessly. How baffling. Tsunade underestimated him, then shook the empty bottle and shouted, Boss. Give me another bottle of wine. Okay. Outside the private room, the happy laughter of the boss immediately sounded. The customer was the six paths, immortal. The arrival of this customer could increase the performance of the wine shop by half a month, and it could even make the boss feel two hundred of his enthusiasm. At this moment, seeing that there was another bottle of wine in front of Tsunade, even Yuki, who was a big dog, couldn't help but feel a little distressed. It didn't matter if it was a consumption like this, but what he was afraid of was that this kind of consumption could continue. Especially now, the situation was that this woman hadn't married yet, and she still had a little restraint. If the other party gets started, then all of his money will be the other party's money. With Tsunade's personality, she would probably be even more unscrupulous when it came to spending money. Yuki could imagine how hard it would be in the future. But if he wanted to let it go, he was not willing. There was no other way. Tsunade's arrogant 106 was too difficult to refuse. In addition, it was not easy to pull Tsunade back to the village. The relationship between the two people has been rapidly improving in the past few months. Now, he was only missing a little bit of effort. How could he be willing to let go? If he was extravagant, then he was a prodigal. In the worst case, when the family can't get rid of the pot in the future, I will hold Tsunade tightly in Kanaha Medical and come to see an expert, and the lion will open his mouth to collect money from those sick rich businessmen and nobles. In addition, he had also opened the source during this time. Recently, isn't Kanaha expanding? As the first real estate developer with a long history in Kanaha, Yuki naturally wouldn't let go of this opportunity to make a good profit for the Senju clan. This also gave him more confidence. Calculating the time, they had dragged out their relationship long enough. It was time to quickly cut it off. Yuki drank the wine in the cup in front of the table and looked at Tsunade with a burning gaze, hoping that tomorrow, which had been planned for a long time, would come. When the time came, he would be in place. What is it now? At this time, Tsunade, who was stared at by Yuki, suddenly had a bad feeling. She glanced over and said with vigilance. Yuki chuckled. You will know soon enough. Tsunade. Late at night, outside Tsunade's home. A black shadow quietly jumped out of Tsunade's house and whispered to a black shadow outside, Lord Yuki. He's here, Shizuan. Yuki, who had been waiting for a long time, quickly called out to Shizuan. Seeing this, Shizuan ran over excitedly. As the person beside Tsunade, she also participated and assisted Yuki in the entire proposal plan. Now that it was the last moment, it was hard for them to communicate under Tsunade's eyes during the day. They discussed it in private only after Tsunade was drunk and fell asleep. Shizuan, do you remember the specific location of tomorrow? Don't let Tsunade be suspicious. Even with his personality, he was still restless. Don't worry. I'll remember everything. Also, I mentioned to Tsunade that I found an unknown herb in the training ground of the Twelfth Forest. She promised to go with me tomorrow. Hearing this, Yuki breathed a sigh of relief. That's good. Yuki's proposal plan was selected at the training ground in the twelfth forest of the Kanaha village. Although he had also thought of inviting Tsunade. However, he still maintained his ostrich's state. In this regard, Tsunade, who was very sensitive, would most likely not agree. In order to give Tsunade a surprise, Yuki found Shizuan to help. Don't worry about Shizuan. When this is done, I won't let you go. When the time comes, just like Tsunade, move to my house. I will also be like Tsunade and treat you like my own. Yuki touched her little head and promised. Hmm. 
Hearing this, Shai Zun's face was full of surprise. Since he knew that Tsunade might have a man in her heart, Shai Zun fell into a state of uneasiness. In the end, she and Tsunade were only master and disciple, not blood-related. Therefore, she was very worried that if Tsunade got married in the future, an extra person like her would not be able to join the new family. Her family was no longer there, and she had been used to living with Tsunade for the past few years. She did not know what to do if the new home could not accommodate her. If that were the case, she might as well take the initiative to make friends with the future master to fight for her future. This was the reason why she readily agreed to Yuki's plan and was ready to sell Tsunade once. No, it shouldn't be called selling. Even with silent and emotionless eyes, he could clearly feel that Tsunade's feelings for Yuki were different from others. According to common sense, if both of them were interesting, they should be able to quickly achieve the goal. However, Tsunade, who had always been heroic, was slow in this aspect. Even as a bystander, Shai Zun felt anxious for her. For the sake of Tsunade's happiness, Shai Zun decided to help push her. Master Tsunade will definitely thank me later. Now that she had gotten the confirmation from Yuki, she no longer had to worry about her being abandoned. Shai Zun was filled with happiness. In the following time, her associations even broke through to the future when Tsunade and Yuki had a baby. Because the Tsunade that she was familiar with was not adjusted, and Yuki was busy with work, then the task of taking care of the baby would definitely be entrusted to her. At that time, she must perform well. How about, later, go and buy more baby breeding books as soon as possible, and prepare yourself first. As he thought this, his face was like a dye workshop, and all kinds of strange smiles were unpredictable. So when Yuki, who also had many thoughts, looked over, he was very surprised in his heart will he confess tomorrow, or will he confess on Shai Zun? Shai Zun. Shai Zun. Seeing this, Yuki hurriedly shouted a few times. Only then did Shai Zun come back to her senses and quickly replied, Yes. Yes. Don't forget tomorrow's arrangements. Yuki reminded him again and again. Shai Zun's gaze froze as if he was on the battlefield, and he said firmly. I promise to complete the mission. The next day, Kanaha Village's 12th Forest Training Ground. As a confession venue specially selected by Yuki, this training ground that was mainly based on primitive landforms was undoubtedly very beautiful. If not for the fact that the village had long been designated as a specialized training ground for ninjas, it would be hard to say if it would become a place for the people of Kanaha Village to play and play cards during their free time. To avoid unnecessary accidents from happening, today, Yuki specially ordered the 12th training ground not to be outside. This meant that only the silent Tsunade that he had specially approved could enter. At this moment, Tsunade, who refused the silent requests, had been brought into the 12th training ground. At this time, she said, I said, did you see wrong before? I have already investigated all the herbs in Kanaha. I have only been away for a few years. How could there be new herbs in the village? It's true, Master Tsunade. Come with me, you will know when you see it. Today's smile was much more silent than before. This is really troublesome. Tsunade moved her lower body and said. Now that Yuki had returned, at this time, she should go to the wine shop to drink a little wine to wake up. However, I promised Shai Zun before, but I can't go back on my word. In addition, she liked pharmacology. If Shai Zun was true, then there was no harm in making this trip. But if there was nothing to be happy about, then... Shai Zun. Yes. If you don't find any new herbs, go back and copy all the herbs for me fifty times. Tsunade smiled. No problem. Shai Zun nodded without hesitation, but he thought that at that time, Tsunade would probably not have the time to care about whether he copied or not. Soon, under the lead of Shai Zun, the two arrived at the place that Yuki had told them before. Shai Zun stopped. His heart suddenly moved after hearing a very ordinary bird cry not far away. Then he covered his stomach with both hands and suddenly said with pain, Master Tsunade, my stomach is a bit uncomfortable. I will leave for a while. All right. Tsunade didn't care. She waved her hand and waited. At this time, she was in a lush green area. It was very vast. A cold wind blew over, bringing with it a unique, refreshing fragrance. Coupled with the crisp and pleasant cries of the birds around them and the warm sunlight, it was a good place for leisure. Perhaps, in the future, when he had nothing to do, he would take some wine and drink freely here, which had a different taste. 
Tsunade thought while waiting for Shizuan. She waited for a long time, but before she could reach Shizuan, she was surprised to see a big surprise. In an instant, under Tsunade's shocked gaze, she saw that the green ground around her rapidly grew bright flowers. The flowers bloomed in a prosperous way. In the blink of an eye, Tsunade, who smelled the intoxicating fragrance, felt like she had entered a sea of flowers. Under the contrast of the colorful flowers, her face instantly turned red and was even more beautiful than the flowers. With an irrepressible sense of shame, Tsunade instantly realized something and gritted her teeth. Yuki Senju Chapter 166, Achievement Wood Art of Descent of the Tree World As one of the top secret arts of wood art, after Yuki had carefully changed it to the art of picking up girls, it was undoubtedly a new trick to steal people's attention. If Hashirama Senju was still alive, he would definitely be proud when he saw this technique that had been changed beyond recognition. Shoi. Then she gave him a thumbs up and laughed, praising Yuki, young man, you changed quite well. Although Tsunade did not know how to use wood release, she knew the latter very well. Although the current technique was very different from what she remembered, it was indeed the descent of the flower tree world. Only Yuki could display such a large range of wood releases in the entire ninja world. Therefore, such careful preparation and coincidence, it was obviously premeditated. Shai Zuan. Suddenly, Tsunade, who felt that she had been fed for more than ten years, didn't have time to grind her teeth. Soon, large clouds of red quickly invaded her face. Her reaction was very fast, and she immediately guessed the scene's purpose that Yuki had specially arranged. She couldn't tell what she was feeling and thinking right now. For Tsunade, this was the first time she had experienced such a thing in her life, especially when she didn't dislike it. But it didn't matter if she didn't dislike it or not. She was used to being an ostrich, but she subconsciously chose to avoid such an explosive scene when she suddenly saw it. It was just that Yuki had already expected her reaction. As Tsunade quickly walked through the transformed flower tree world, a thick wooden stake suddenly rose before her. Under her puzzled gaze, in the next moment, she saw that the wooden stake seemed to be pinched by an invisible hand. A lifelike wooden sculpture was quickly displayed. Tsunade, who was about to take a detour, was very surprised. It was because the wooden withering in front of her was her. When she was a child, she had two short ponytails, wore a white dress, and was excitedly counting money. Tsunade's heart could not help but tremble slightly. After that, although she continued moving forward, her speed was much slower. The next time, Tsunade passed by, and the wooden withering that belonged to her quickly took shape one by one. In the ninja school, she wore a short blue dress and had a high ponytail. She was the first in the world of her mother. When she was young, she was wearing white clothes and red pants. She was wearing fishnet underwear. She had already revealed her charm. When she was young, she was wearing a Kanaha ninja uniform. She was a bold and heroic self. Now, she was wearing a green outer garment with the word bet on it. She was holding a pair of proud weapons. Each one of them was lifelike. It was difficult to imagine that they were completed within a few breaths of time. Moreover, they were completely in the hands of Yuki, who had never learned the withering. Tsunade was very clear about the amount of effort she needed to put in. She forced herself to take a deep breath and continued to move forward. The rising withering did not end just like that. However, this time, there was no longer only Tsunade. There was now Yuki Senju. Soon, the various scenes that came from their interactions in the past appeared one by one in front of Tsunade. Memories of the past made Tsunade remember everything more clearly and clearly understand the feelings between her and Yuki. Gradually, the warmth in Tsunade's eyes became more and more intense. Especially when she saw the nine-tailed knight, the two of them cuddled together after getting drunk. Yuki's salty pig hand went deep into her clothes. The corner of her mouth curved slightly. After laughing and scolding, there was nothing else. Finally, when she crossed the last part of the withered statue, a sea of flowers appeared in front of her. Inside, Yuki, who had brought her many surprises along the way, finally appeared and slowly walked over from the sea of flowers. Seeing this scene, although Tsunade had already expected it, her body was trembling uncontrollably at this time. Now, it could be said that she was the most nervous in her life. This kind of nervousness was far more intense than the various life and death crises she had experienced before, even the separation of life and death. It was to the extent that before Yuki could say anything, her heart was already as tense as a string that had reached its limit. 
she couldn't stop herself from breaking at any time. To be honest, she didn't know what she would do. Crack crack crack. As the two of them got closer, Yuki could clearly hear the slight crack under the ground under Tsunade's high heels. The other party, who had extraordinary control over his chakra and body, couldn't control his strength now. Yuki felt the same. It was because he looked calm on the surface, but he was as nervous as Tsunade. In all seriousness, this was also the first time he had confessed to someone. There was no other way. In his previous life, he had relied on his looks, which were far beyond his level. All along, it had always been a girl who had shown her face to him. He had never had the experience of this side. Fortunately, compared to Tsunade, who had always been heroic and generous, now seemed to be more nervous than him for a long time. Yuki's mood also relaxed a lot. The distance between the two was not far. It felt like a long journey. He came to Tsunade. Yuki took a deep breath and looked at the woman before him. After completing the carefully prepared proposal prelude, he finally stepped into the main topic. He slowly said. Tsunade, I. Bang. As soon as Yuki spoke, he heard a thunderous explosion. The next second, Yuki was stunned and stopped talking. He opened his mouth and looked at everything in front of him. It was only because his proposal partner had actually run away. Yes. Tsunade had run away. If Tsunade didn't know what would happen to her when she had broken the string in her heart. Then, just now, when Yuki officially announced his proposal. In an instant, she felt blood all over her body surging like never before, and soon, her face and whole body were blushing rapidly, and she finally knew how she would react like a boiled red shrimp. It was completely a subconscious reaction of her body. Tsunade, whose mind was blank, immediately buried her head like an ostrich, turning around and running away as fast as she could. It was as if there was a flood or a beast behind her. She even used the shadow clone technique to spread out in all directions, trying her best not to be caught. At the same time, Yuki, who was standing in the same place and watching this scene in a daze, felt as if thousands of horses had trampled over his heart. The shadow clone avoided marriage. How scared was Tsunade? Before this, Yuki had thought of many endings. After his confession, there was no need to talk about Tsunade accepting it. He had also thought about rejecting it. Even when the other party was angry and angry, he directly attacked and ruined the proposal plan. Perhaps after the fight, he would reluctantly nod his head in agreement and other possible situations that might happen. However, he never expected that Tsunade, who had always been heroic and bold, would choose to run away before she could even finish her confession. At this moment, Yuki was undoubtedly very depressed. He had been preparing for today's proposal for a long time. The visual feast of the flower tree world, the vivid and lifelike Tsunade, and so on were all to create the romantic and beautiful atmosphere of the proposal. This wasn't over yet. Combined with his many experiences on the internet in his previous life and all kinds of magical ninjutsu, in the following confession process and the time after that, Yuki had prepared many more interesting programs. The result was good, everything was useless in the martial land. But it shouldn't be. If Tsunade had really wanted to reject him initially, she could have run away for such a long time. Why was it that at the last moment, whether it was himself or Tsunade's performance, both of them were full of preparation but suddenly changed their minds, and this happened? Was his proposal not passed? No. She was obviously very touched by Tsunade's performance along the way. Was she too moved? Or was she too shy? Yuki shook his head. No matter what, this carefully prepared marriage proposal was ruined. Wait for the next match? With Tsunade's personality, it would be difficult for her to find a good opportunity after being provoked today. Forget it. Everything in the world had to be done in one go. Since he had spent so much effort arranging everything today, no matter what, he had to achieve his goal. Moreover, it had already dragged on for so long, he really did not want to wait any longer. Yuki's gaze focused, and he quickly made up his mind. Escape, right? Shadow clone? If he wanted to dodge, there was no way. Anyway, the Kanaha village was only this big. He would be wasting his time on this matter today. He didn't believe he wouldn't be unable to find the other party. Would release, multi-shadow clone technique. Very quickly, Yuki, who had summoned more clones than Tsunade, waved his hand and began to search in all directions. Two hours later, in a remote wine tavern in the Kanaha village. When Yuki's main body entered and pushed open the door of a private room, 
he could see Tsunade, who was also the main body, drinking wildly. It was unknown whether it was due to the previous blush that had yet to fade or because of the wine he was drinking right now, but at this time, Tsunade's face was still very red. Seeing this, Yuki, who had closed the private room door, snorted coldly. After his affectionate confession was rejected, while he was wantonly looking for people in the village, the more he thought about it, the angrier he became. At this time, he deliberately changed his form. He did not care about the result and said frankly. Before, Tsunade, you lost a bet, and you must unconditionally do something for me. Now, fulfill it. I want you to marry me. After Yuki finished venting his anger, he had already prepared for the follow-up plan that Tsunade would reject. However, it was completely out of his expectations. Tsunade actually nodded and said. Sure. Can't I? Then I. Yuki immediately answered without thinking. Then, he suddenly realized that something was wrong. His voice stopped, his face full of disbelief as he pointed to the outline and said, Tsunade, you, you, you agree. I agree. Tsunade, whose eyes were hazy, finished drinking the wine in her hand. She slammed the table and said heroically, Since I lost the bet, I naturally won't go back on my word. Isn't it just marrying you? I, Tsunade, will do what I say. Yuki was immediately stunned. While expressing his attitude categorically, Tsunade, who looks heroic on the surface but is incomparably shy inside, tries his best to maintain the current posture, and at this moment, the big stone in his heart finally falls down. To tell the truth, she was also very regretful about her previous escape. It was not that she was unwilling to accept Yuki. Otherwise, she would not have maintained such a close relationship with the other party. However, what she had experienced at training ground number 12 was too much for someone like her who had been single for a long time and had no experience at all. And the moment when she was about to say those words that she already knew, her brain was too hot, and she lost all her usual calmness. Suddenly, she thought of the man in front of her who was much younger than her. She felt even more ashamed than before. All along, all of Tsunade's feelings were like ostriches, unwilling to take the initiative. It was precisely because of this sibling love that there was a gap in age. Even though many people in the outside world hoped that they would be able to marry the only descendant of the Senjo clan, she still couldn't overcome this hurdle in her heart. It was precisely because of all these influences that her mind exploded, and she couldn't help but make those escape actions. Now that she thought about it, she was naturally incomparably vexed. But things had already come to this point. She also thought that if she refused now, the relationship between the two of them would be difficult to heal. Tsunade, who did not want to regret it again, decided not to make mistakes again. Just as Yuki said the promise. When she heard this, her eyes lit up, and she immediately agreed. Not only did this result come to a perfect end, but he could also build up this set of siblings as an excuse to keep his promise. Although this was a little self-deception, in the end, it could still force him to overcome the hurdle in his heart. This was already the best choice for Tsunade, who had a very thin face on this side. On the other side, he finally woke up from his shock. At the same time, he also realized that today's matter, as per his wish, was still a little unreal. Did the proposal succeed just like that? It was too sudden or too simple. He had just casually said the words of the bet that he did not even have confidence in. Tsunade, who had responded by running away several hours ago, actually agreed so easily. This change of attitude was too fast. But no matter what, after repeatedly confirming that the Tsunade in front of him was the real Empress, Yuki still felt endless joy in his heart. Although the plan had some unexpected twists, it still became a mistake. His bachelor's life could finally end. If he had known that it would be so easy to achieve the goal, he would not have dragged it on until now and had even spent so much effort to prepare so much. It really is. Yuki sighed with emotion. Just as he was about to start, he suddenly saw a slender white hand grab his collar and pull him forward. And then. Fiery red lips pressed against him without being able to react in time and tightly blocked his mouth. It had already come to this. Yuki naturally did not have any thoughts of continuing. Looking at the red face of Tsunade that was now completely released, as well as the movements of her lips that were extremely shaky, she still took the initiative to attack. Not to be outdone, he quickly counterattacked. At this moment, time became incomparably long. Chapter 167, Breaking News Yuki and Tsunade were both swift and decisive people. 
After their relationship was officially established, even the former bashful Tsunade quickly changed her appearance. When Yuki proposed to arrange the marriage, she nodded in agreement. Thus, the fourth Hokage of Kanaha, one of the three ninjas of the Land of Fire's general, the Hokage left hand, and at the same time, the explosive news that the only man and woman of the Senjo clan were about to get married quickly lit up in Kanaha. Then, at an extremely fast speed, the village extended from the village to the Land of Fire and even the entire ninja realm. Suddenly, almost everyone in the ninja realm was discussing the future topic. It was the most important wedding in the ninja realm. It should be known that not only the ninjas in Kanaha but also the officials of the Fire Land were willing to volunteer to serve the marriage of the Hokage. Even the other four countries, who had fallen to the ice enemy before, were sent to Kanaha to congratulate the wedding after hearing the news. No matter what the real thoughts of these forces were. In the face of the current Yuki, whose strength and power could be said to be the number one in the ninja realm, no matter how dissatisfied they were, they had to pay the necessary respect. Because of this, the members of the diplomatic missions sent by the various countries this time were all distinguished people. Even the ambassadors of some small countries came personally. As for the big ninja village, they all sent people with great weight. Hidden Rock Village Recently, because the young ninja he thought highly of was poisoned to death at home, Onaki, who was already in a bad mood, heard that the fourth Hokage and Tsunade would get married, and his face became increasingly ugly. If the people of Kanaha were looking forward to combining the two hands, then as a person from the outside village who had personally experienced the era of Hashirama Senju, he did not want to see the scene. Hashirama was already very afraid of all the forces. If the next generation came again, how could they live? This was not an alarmist talk. One had to know that the two Senju clansmen with the same origin bloodline were married, and one of them had already awakened the wood release. The probability of their descendants awakening the wood release was very high. Otherwise, the numerous blood limit families would not have continued. However, the problem now was that even if he was unwilling, Onaki could only watch this happen. Not only that, he also had to send someone to express his congratulations. After the great victory Cloud Ninja, the current Yuki Senju was like the sun in the sky in the ninja realm. Although it could not compare to the previous ninja god, it was not as peaceful and easy to deal with as Hashirama Senju. On the contrary, it was a domineering lord. Because of this, all the forces were more afraid of each other and did not want to offend each other in small matters. Kitsuki. Onaki called his son. This time, as the representative of Rock Village, you will go to Kanaha to congratulate him. In addition, according to the highest standard of marriage for the last time. When he finished speaking, Onaki felt slightly pained, but he gritted his teeth and said. Yes. Kitsuka didn't think much of it and calmly nodded. Hidden Cloud Village. Compared to the high-spirited atmosphere in the past, the atmosphere in the village was very low, and it was no longer as prosperous as it used to be. Similarly, E.I. the fourth Rakage, who was carrying two billion war compensation, three thousand cloud ninja prisoners, the second tail, and the eight-tailed man's life, was also very tired. In the office of Rakage, E.I., who was not holding a barbell like before, sat in his seat. After reading the message from Kanaha, he rubbed his eyebrows and said to the Dode in front of him, Dode, this time, you will be the representative. Go to Kanaha to congratulate the Hokage's marriage. Although Kanaha defeated him, he still had to smile and go all the way to the culprit who caused all this, which sounded a bit shameful. But for the cloud ninjas who had lost their foundation, they did not care about losing more. Compared to face, reality was more important. Remember to find a good time to talk to the Hokage about the compensation period, E.I. added. This was the real reason why he had sent Dode. Under the influence of the defeat, the reputation of Hidden Cloud Village had fallen, and the strength of Hidden Cloud Village was extremely weak. Not only did the mission's income fall sharply, but the death of the ninja pension, the treatment of the wounded, and even the reorganization of the strength needed also consumed a lot of money. With the current financial resources of the Cloud Ninjas, these alone were not enough, not to mention the huge compensation of 400 million per year. One must know that the three Senju Ninjas were currently working in the Fire Land in full swing. If the Cloud Ninjas dared to return on their word, Kanaha would really dare to return on their word. He could only take advantage of the joyous occasion of the Hokage and let the Dode take the opportunity to propose the idea of delaying for a few days. Perhaps the former was happy and agreed. I understand, Mr. Rakage. Another heavy-handed Dode nodded. Right. Also. 
At this time, A suddenly thought of something, and his face was full of anger. After going to Kanaha, give me a good beating. Is he having fun there? I have received dozens of urging orders from Kanaha's hospital these days. The reason written on it is due to the noise pollution of Killer B, causing many people to be unconscious and enter the hospital. Now the village is no longer open. Tell him to be quiet. Well, okay. Hearing this news, Dode was speechless. He knew that Kanaha had placed a lot of seals on the bodies of Killer B and the wood people so that they could not exert their strength and then let them move freely in the village. But he didn't expect Killer B to start a concert in the enemy village so quickly and happily. In the past, Hidden Cloud Village had suffered a terrible lesson in this area, so no one dared to go to the next concert. The people of Kanaha village had no experience, so they naturally found a way. It seemed that he had to hurry up and go. Although the one who was injured was a member of Kanaha, the one who suffered, in the end, was still Hidden Cloud Village. As one of the five great ninja villages, when the news of the wedding spread out, Hidden Rock Village and Hidden Cloud Village reacted the same way, and the remaining two sides were naturally not weaker than the others. Hidden Mist Village, after the illusion of the fourth generation Water Shadow Wolf and Orange Missing Cabin was removed, the situation was slightly better. However, what happened in Blood Mist Village could not be eliminated with just one sentence. Because of this, the person who knew that he would not be able to keep his position for long was now looking at the candidate for the next Water Shadow, Mizu Cage. Mei Terumi was undoubtedly the best choice for the marshal. If that was the case, then he would give her more prestige. Therefore, the name Mei was written on the list of leaders who went to Misty Village to congratulate the Hokage's wedding. On the other side, compared to the Rock Ninja, the Sand Ninja chose a general among the shorter ones and finally chose the Baki Jonin as the representative to go to Kanaha to congratulate him. In fact, if it was before, the fourth generation Wind Shadow, Raza, would have personally congratulated Kanaha. However, the series of changes that happened in the Fireland made him withdraw his thoughts. As the most powerful force in the whole world who had dealt with Kanaha, Raza, who had a deep understanding of it, now saw Kanaha that was different from the past, with a huge change in style. Under the leadership of the fourth Hokage, Kanaha was now full of ambition. If they still held the idea of being intimate at this time, then Kanaha would undoubtedly swallow the sand even more easily. Looking at the ordinary sight of the sand village outside the window, Raza crushed the letter that the third Psuchikage had secretly handed over and then fell into deep thought. In the Kanaha village, many villagers had already hung up their festive red decorations because of the upcoming wedding of Yuki and Tsunade. In their eyes, as the only descendant of Kanaha's founder and the only descendant of the Senju clan, who had made a great contribution to the village over the years, and had a high reputation, the marriage of Yuki and Tsunade was not only a personal happy event but also a great event for everyone in their village. Because of this, even if Yuki had already told them that they did not need to spread their marriage. However, they still could not resist the villagers' enthusiasm to celebrate the marriage of the two. Not only that, but every ninja fought to bear all the wedding expenses. The more expenses they had, the happier they were. When the ninja clan chiefs heard the wedding news, they rushed to the front of Yuki and Tsunade and promised. Among them, the attitude of the chief of the Saratobi clan was the strongest. Especially when he saw many people competing with him, he opened his mouth and expanded it regardless of everything. Not only did he bear the cost of the wedding, but he also included all the celebration expenses of the entire village. Such a heroic act. Watching the small and medium-sized ninjas around him, gasped. And as a thousand-year-old clan leader, Fugaku, who never knew what it was like to lack money, after hearing this, his face did not change at all, and he sneered again and again. Based on your Saratobi clan, do you want to steal the title of number one lackey under the Hokage? Have you asked the Uchiha, who has been sitting on this chair for many years? Just as Fugaku was about to open his mouth and amaze the world. Seeing this, Yuki quickly stopped him and said, Everyone. Everyone. I appreciate your kindness. But as the first marriage in my life, I still hope that the whole wedding can be handled by myself. If you want to help, why don't you think about what show you will perform on the wedding day to make the atmosphere lively? As for the expenses, don't mention it again. After all, Yuki finally dispelled the enthusiasm of the ninja clan and turned his attention to the show competition at the wedding. Chapter 168, Rivalry After sending these people away, Yuki, who had returned to Tsunade, sighed, I didn't expect marriage to be so complicated. Then why don't we settle it first? After putting down the burden in her heart, Tsunade, 
who had returned to her normal nature, smiled. That won't do. Hearing this, Yuki hurriedly shook his head and then solemnly said. For the inheritance of the Senjo clan, you can't delay for even a moment. Virtues. How could she not know what the people around her were thinking? Tsunade rolled her eyes. However, in her heart, she was also looking forward to that day. After waiting for so many years, she finally reached the end. Although the marriage partner was someone, she had strongly opposed at the beginning. But the world was different. But who would have known that the elder who had forced them back then had now taken the initiative to accept them? If those old fellows of Mayano Mamura knew about this in the underworld, they would definitely laugh happily. Thinking of this, Tsunade could not help but snort in her heart. If you want to laugh, then laugh. But you have to be clear that you do not have any credit for this. For me to have all of this in front of me, it has always been my own will. It has nothing to do with you. What's wrong? Yuki, who noticed that Tsunade had suddenly stopped moving, asked. It's nothing. Tsunade shook her head as she looked at Yuki with a gentle light in her eyes. Then, she reached out and pulled on Yuki's collar. Yuki, who knew what this meant, naturally would not refuse. Soon, the office was filled with the smell of love. Just as Yuki and Tsunade were about to change their relationship, something new happened. A wall away. Although the matter of paying for the Hokage-sama was ruined, the leaders of the ninja clan, who had fought for a real fire, could not help but compete with each other on the program that Yuki had proposed. I don't know what kind of program the Saratobi clan can take out at Lord Hokage's wedding. If it is not good, then please forget about it. After all, there were so many guests on that day. We can't affect the overall image of Kanaha. Fugaku glanced at the chief of the Saratobi clan, then looked at the bearded face of the other party for a long time, and then compared the face of the Uchiha, he nodded with satisfaction. Not long after becoming the new chief of the Saratobi clan, Suzuki Saratobi noticed the look in Fugaku's eyes and could not help but let out a cold snort. Many sissies did not know that the bearded man was a romantic. One must know that in the Saratobi clan, the more men with beards, the more popular the girls in the clan were. Suzuki Saratobi looked at Fugaku with disdain and said, Don't worry, Fugaku clan head. My Saratobi clan is best at the fire escape. When the day of Lord Hokage's wedding comes, I can casually spray fire on the stage. The lively atmosphere can still be good. Because of the influence of Hiraz and Saratobi, although the Saratobi clan had changed to a new clan head who did not belong to the former, in the face of the fourth Hokage, the heart was still very uncertain, afraid of being attacked by the other side. Because of this, Hiruzen was willing to release his own blood to let Yuki see their attitude. Although this plan didn't succeed, they had to do everything they could during the wedding ceremony, and it wouldn't be as simple as casually fire on the stage as they had just said. After going back, I had to look through the ninjutsu warehouse more to see if I could find that kind of ornamental fire-style ninjutsu. Fortunately, Lord Hokage performed well at the wedding. Hiruzen thought like this. Thanks to Shizun's big mouth, the romantic and modified version of wood release ninjutsu displayed by Yuki on the day of his confession to Tsunade had already spread like the news of marriage, quickly spreading through the streets and alleys. At the same time, it caused many women to cry out in surprise and longing, and in their hearts, they also imagined that they would one day be able to get such a romantic proposal ceremony. They just didn't know how they imagined the beautiful scene of Lord Hokage and Tsunade confessing in the Sea of Flowers but in reality, they were running away alone, how would they react? Fortunately, Shizun still had a sense of decency and didn't tell the truth completely, making outsiders think that the whole proposal process was smooth. Otherwise, even if Tsunade didn't do nothing, Yuki would still care for her. The big accident at the previous proposal scene was definitely a black spot in life for the current Yuki and Tsunade, who aimed at the husband and wife. Whoever spread it would be killed. However, Thanks to this propaganda on silence, it also caused a new custom in Kanaha in the future. That is when proposing if the man is a ninja, he must first play an ornamental ninjutsu that can be used to express his feelings. Now there is also this sign. In this way, with the help of this wedding, people in Kanaha who have a keen sense of smell in the village have begun to sell some of the past that were too weak in actual combat. They will not learn it when sent to the ninjas, but the visual effect is quite good. For those ninjas who yearn for the method of picking up girls in Yuki but cannot change the ninjutsu, it is undoubtedly the best choice. Hiruzen naturally wouldn't choose these common goods. For the Saratobi clan, who was good at fire-style ninjutsu, in the past hundred years, 
their clan treasury had been piled up with all kinds of useless or semi-finished ninjutsu scrolls developed by their clansmen. In the past, the definition of this useless ninjutsu was based on actual combat. But now, since they were pursuing the first ornamental value, they could still find many of them. If there was no suitable one, he would ruthlessly gather all the people of the Saratobi clan, wanting to study the most eye-catching ninjutsu at the wedding ceremony. Only in this way could the Hokage see the true sincerity of the Saratobi clan. Saratobi had already made a decision. After he became the chief of the Saratobi clan, his only purpose in his life was to remove the Uchiha clan and become the most loyal dog of the Hokage. However, he wanted to squeeze them out but had to see if the Uchiha clan would agree. At this moment, when he heard that Saratobi was the best at fire release, Fugaku smiled in disdain, You must be joking, patriarch. Who doesn't know that I, Uchiha, am the best at fire release? I, Uchiha, will be the one to perform it. Isn't the most skilled in Sharingan? Maybe you can act as a hypnotist and let those from small countries who don't know the name of Uchiha open their eyes. Or you can perform your fancy swordsmanship, and I think it will be a great applause. It turns out that my clan has so many talents. Thank you for your reminder. Fugaku expressed his gratitude with his mouth, but his face was cold, in that case, according to what you said, my clan has the Sharingan, the sword in my hand, and the fire style. Hiruzen, you must be careful. When the time comes, don't be inferior to the Uchiha in terms of fire style performance. Regarding the stock of fire style ninjutsu, Uchiha was much stronger than Saratobi. Fugaku was naturally full of confidence. Humph. Then let's wait and see. Said Hiruzen without the slightest hint of weakness. At the same time, after watching the fight between the two top ninja clan members of Kanaha, the other big and small ninja clan chiefs were also thinking about what they should do at the Hokage's wedding ceremony. For ninjas, the only thing they could do was naturally use the illusion technique. If they were to perform, they naturally wouldn't do things like those ordinary people. Otherwise, why would Yuki invite these amateurs? Professionals did professional work. For the ninja clan, whose family secret arts were suitable for viewing, they naturally did not have to worry about performing. But for those that were not suitable, they were a little worried. At this moment, Koji Akimichi was rubbing his big belly while thinking about what kind of show he should perform. Performing a big stomach king eating, showing the guests how big the limit of human food was? No, it was too unsuitable for the scene. If they really wanted to perform this, then their Akimichi clan's future days would be very miserable. Or was it a flesh bullet chariot speed competition? But if this was the case, the wedding scene would probably be completely different. As chief, Koji was thinking left and right with a face full of worry, he suddenly saw that from the side, the expression of the sun's strider from beginning to end was full of confidence. His eyes could not help but light up. Speaking of which, the Haiga clan does not have a good performance. Do you want to go up and play a set of soft punches? Although it is possible, if it is true, it can only be said that the performance of one of the rich clans in Kanaha is a bit disappointing. However, looking at the confident look on his face, it was obvious that he had a good idea. So, Koji asked with a smile. He did not hide anything, but what he said surprised Koji. I do not have a plan to perform. However, I have already said to the Hokage. Because there are many outsiders during the wedding, there will inevitably be a mix of good and bad people. The Haiga clan has decided to send out all their members to protect all corners of the village during the wedding. I guarantee that all activities will be completed that day. After listening to this, Koji was stunned. Then, he clapped his hands and gave a thumbs up to Haiga. As expected of the Haiga clan that had been passed down for a thousand years. The means were high. What was the purpose of the performance of the great ninja clan? Wasn't it just to gain the favor of the current powerful Hokage? Today, not only could he cover up his embarrassment on the performance, but he could also gain the favor of the Hokage. His methods were really superb. Koji could not help but admire this. However, this also reminded him. It was not like the Akimichi clan could use another form to present gifts to Lord Hokage. For example, their best cooking skills. The eyes of the Akimichi chief lit up and he immediately clapped his hands and decided to quickly call back the most skilled chefs of the Akimichi clan. All the food production of Lord Hokage's wedding, he, the Akimichi clan, would take it all. Chapter 169, Mission Representative Uchiha, Saratobi, Haiga and Akimichi have already made their own preparations, 
and other ninjas are also unwilling to be left behind, preparing special programs. As a trusted subordinate of Yuki, as the head of the Nara clan, Nara Shikaku naturally would not be perfunctory when he married his loyal partner. He was smart enough to quickly use his clan's shadow secret technique to carefully plan a shadow dance suitable for the wedding celebration. Similarly, he went to Yuki with a group of ninja clan leaders to express his attitude. However, as expected, the oil-headed girl, who was still ignored throughout the process, could calmly face all of this. Although I don't know if Master Hokage has preset the showtime for a bear mei shibi, he still has to prepare first. What program should he prepare? A bug dance? A bear mei extended his hand, and many insects crawled out from his clothes. Although he felt that these insects were very cute, the eyes of outsiders were too vulgar. He was afraid that he could not appreciate the beauty of insects other than humans. However, the strange thing about humans was that, compared to the species' appearance, the color could sometimes determine their aesthetics. If the black shell of these insects turned pink, many people would change their minds. They would like it very much. Do it as you, please. Next, the symbol of the oil woman gathered the people to cultivate the new pink insects that were specially prepared for the wedding. Although his oil woman clan was usually very low-key. But this time, they also had to grow a long face in front of everyone so that everyone could remember Kanaha and their clan. Those who want to have a long face also have the Inuzuka clan, who strongly desire to show off. Under the leadership of the clan leader, the old and young masters of the Inuzuka clan excitedly rubbed their hands, wanting to amaze the world at the scene of the Hokage's wedding. However, they would not be performing at that time, but the famous many ninja hounds of the Inuzuka clan. In the following time, when many Kanaha villagers passed by the Inuzuka clan, they heard more frequent and loud barks from the Inuzuka people. Black Ball it's not lifting that leg. The steps are wrong. Remember to take a break and look at your brothers. On the training ground of the Inuzuka clan, the angry Hana Inuzuka shouted loudly. The large ninja named Kuromaru lowered its head helplessly. If it could, it was more willing to fight against the enemy for 300 rounds instead of dancing in a dog life that had never been seen before. Was this what a ninja dog should do? And it was even more tiring than the previous training. He really wanted to tear up the person who proposed the action of enduring dogs. At this moment, Kuromaru opened his mouth wide and stuck out his tongue with all his might. He looked weak, but at the same time, he said fiercely in his heart. At this time, I watched from the sidelines for a long time. Although there was no canola painted on his face, Kaiba Inuzuka, who already had the demeanor of a future leader at a young age, came to Hana with his afro head on his short legs. The old-fashioned persuasion said, I said, old lady, I think it's about the same. Kuromaru and the others have already done a good job, so there's no need to be too serious. As soon as these words were said, they instantly attracted the favor of Kuromaru and the other endured dogs. However, what Kaiba paid for this was a punch from his sister. I already said to call me sister. The former is not allowed to add the word old. Hannah said in a bad mood. You have to know that this dog enduring performance is related to the big things that my Inuzuka clan has always wanted to do. We have to be serious. What the Inuzuka clan wants to do the most. Big things? What is it? When Kaiba, who was eating and screaming in pain, heard his sister suddenly say this, he ignored the red envelope above his head and asked curiously. In an instant, Hannah said with a longing expression, Dog, since ancient times, you have been a human's right-hand man. Humans have had all kinds of programs to celebrate themselves, but there are fewer festivals to celebrate dogs. The biggest wish of my Inuzuka clan is to let Kanaha establish a fixed holiday for dogs for one year. Its name is Dog Festival. Speaking up to this point, Hannah, whose eyes were full of dazzling light, patted his younger brother and said. If the performance of our Inuzuka clan's ninja dog in the wedding of the big shots in the world of ninjas is very outstanding, then under the joy of the Hokage and the hard work of the ninja dog we will have a greater chance of establishing the dog festival. So, Kaiba. Don't look at how tired they are now, but all of this is undoubtedly worth it. I understand. He didn't expect the clan to have such a big goal. He nodded excitedly. Dog festival. He didn't think of this before, but after hearing it now, it became his lifelong dream. If we sacrifice Kuromaru and the others now, the dogs that will be successful in the future will be the dogs. Sister continue to be serious. The more serious, the better. At this moment, Kaiba's eyes were passionate as he waved his fist. 
Kuromaru and the rest of the endured dogs, dot. As the wedding date approached, all the big ninja clans in Kanaha prepared to celebrate the Hokage's wedding. At the same time, the ambassadors from various countries and villages also came. The villagers of Kanaha opened their eyes a lot during this time, and this was the first time they had seen so many different countries in the world. On the second floor of a high-end restaurant in the village, Mei Terumi, the leader of the Kirigakur village mission who arrived not long ago with long reddish-brown hair and a proud figure, sat on the window seat, looking out the window and said with emotion. Although I have long heard that the current Kanaha village is very prosperous, seeing is the truth, and the feeling is even more profound. In comparison, our mist village can be said to be a poor and remote place. I really didn't expect that. In the past few years, even Kanaha wasn't like this. The development of the past few years was too fast. On the other side, Kojuro, who had short, grayish-blue hair and black-rimmed glasses, who was May's trusted aide, gathered his courage and raised his head slightly. The future mist village will also develop rapidly in your hands. Kojuro, you really think highly of me. May, who already knew that he would be the future fifth generation of Water Shadow, smiled and shook his head. She did not think that she was at the level of the next fourth Hokage. The latter was not only powerful but also had outstanding political ability. Looking at the other side's reputation in Kanaha, it could be seen. The current Kanaha village had become a fiery ocean. It was as if their family was getting married. As far as May is now in sight, almost every household has pasted happy characters, hung red lanterns, pulled up red clothes with blessings, and so on. She was very shocked. In addition, when she saw such a large scale and could be said to be the most important wedding in the world, she, as a woman, was also very envious. It would be great if she had such a grand wedding. She was still young and did not miss the wedding like she would in the future. When others mentioned the word marriage in front of her, it was taboo Mei was still full of longing for love. She wondered when her other half would arrive. He should be very tall. He should not be too fat or too thin. As for his appearance, he must be handsome. His hair was also red. If he could not, he could accept black and gold. He did not need to be stronger than her, but he could not be too weak. The key was that his character must be gentle, and he must be homesick. Also. At this moment, he saw that May's face quickly turned red, and her eyes were lost as she fantasized about her other half. When he inadvertently noticed that Mei Ming was suddenly more beautiful, Kojuro instantly blushed and quickly turned his gaze to her. Fortunately, at this time, he suddenly found a group of people wearing Rock Ninja's forehead guard walking over on the street. Is the Rock Ninja envoy finally here today? The one in the lead should be the son of the third generation Earth Shadow, Kitsuki. With this thought in mind, he turned around and looked at Mei. Seeing that she was still in the middle of her self-fantasies and knowing that if she woke up halfway, the consequences would be very bad, he immediately gave up and decided not to wake her up. In any case, the arrival of Rock Ninjas was not a big deal so let May continue to indulge in her beautiful dream. On the big street. When Kojuro looked over, Lois also noticed it. After discovering that the other party was just a nameless mist ninja brat, he did not care and retracted his gaze. He did not want to say hello and continued to move forward. Because of the matter of the second generation earth shadow and the second generation water shadow dying together, the relationship between the rock hidden village and the mist hidden village, which was far away, had always been very bad. Kitsuka naturally did not have a good impression of the Mist Ninjas. Along the way, he brought the members of the diplomatic mission, who had just arrived, to the front of the Hokage building. He asked the accompanying people to wait outside. As the group leader, Lois was led by a staff member of Kanaha to greet the fourth Hokage of Kanaha. In the corridor, he suddenly saw an acquaintance. Yo, Dode. As someone who had dealt with the Cloud Ninjas many times, he naturally knew the commander of the Cloud Ninjas, Tushi. After recognizing him, he opened his mouth and shouted. Kitsuki. I didn't see you here before and thought you wouldn't come this time. We are both from the five great villages and since Kanaha is the Hokage's wedding, Rock Village naturally has to offer a gift. We just encountered a rock rain midway, so we wasted some time. What happened to you just now? Did you encounter any trouble? He naturally noticed Dode's expression just now. It's nothing. Dode who was unwilling to self-destruct in front of the rock ninja, shook his head and left after a few words. Hee <laughs> hee, it seems that the cloud ninja is in a very bad situation. Kitsuka smiled and shook his head, then continued to move forward. 
Although because of the new situation in the ninja world, the relationship between Rock Ninja and Cloud Ninja was much better than before. But after all, they had fought for so many years, and he was very happy to see the Cloud Ninja barbarians being defeated. As a result, his next pace was much lighter than before. Chapter 170, The Crying Might Guy Outside the Hokage's building, when Dode walked out, Samui, who had been waiting outside for a long time, welcomed him. After seeing that the former did not have a good face, this woman with a hot figure, blonde hair, blue eyes and extremely fair skin clearly understood. She said in her usual calm tone, Sure enough, you still haven't succeeded? It seems that the Hokage is more unyielding than expected. Indeed. In front of his own people, there was no need to hide his bitterness. The idea of Hidden Cloud Village fell through. In the eyes of Dode, Reikage and other high-level officials, Hokage is about to get married, and it is a time of great joy. The Cloud Ninjas came to express his congratulations and, at the same time, complained about his own suffering and then took advantage of the situation to propose a slight delay in the compensation time. The other party may be happy. He nodded in agreement. After all, this was not a loss for Kanaha. The compensation from Hidden Cloud Village would still be given in the end, but it was only slightly delayed because of the lack of funds. Moreover, Hidden Cloud Village did not dare to drag things out for a year or so. Just now, Dode proposed to Yuki that it was only two months. But even so, although he happily accepted the Cloud Ninja's wedding blessing, Yuki, who was still very calm, firmly refused the request of Dode. This was not because he cared about the compensation for the war. The latter was bleeding a lot for the Cloud Ninja, but for Kanaha, it was just adding flowers to the brocade. What Yuki really cared about was using the war compensation to bind the reins on the Cloud Ninja, not giving him any room to ease. Therefore, not to mention two months, even two days later, Yuki would not agree. It was also because he understood that Yuki's attitude could not be changed that he frowned after coming out. In front of Kanaha's powerful military strength and the many captives, the already unreasonable cloud ninjas did not dare to take the initiative to owe. The only thing they could do now was to tear down the east wall to fill up the west wall and move the funds that the hidden cloud village needed to compensate for this huge hole. If this continued, cloud ninjas' finances would become a vicious cycle and even his own strength would fall instead of rising. Dode, Reikage, and the others knew this, but they could only watch helplessly. There was no other way, the week had to be like this. It was just like how they had bullied and bullied the small countries in the past. There were already some signs, but the alliance that targeted the growing Kanaha had yet to truly form because of the situation, interests, conflicts, and other factors. Now, they could only face Kanaha alone and could not say no. Sigh. Now that things have come to this, we can only take it one step at a time. Time is tight, and now I must write back a letter asking Lord Rakage to prepare early. As for the matter of Killer B, let's leave it to you, Samui. The plan had completely fallen through, and Dode had no time and energy to care about the small matter of Killer B singing. For the next time, he had to keep in touch with the village. After all, tearing down the east wall and repairing the west wall was also a technical task. As the only apprentice of the current Killer B, Samui could only do the former. I understand. Samui nodded expressionlessly. After bidding farewell to Dode, she went straight to where her teacher was. Let's not discuss how the Cloud Ninjas would deal with their troubles. Because the wedding of their Hokage-sama was about to arrive, most of the ninjas gave themselves a holiday during this festive time. At this moment, on a bench on the embankment of Kanaha, Kakashi, who was wearing the superior ninja uniform of Kanaha, was sitting on it leisurely, looking at the intimacy heaven in his hand. After sending Amaru to the ninja academy, apart from the time of the mission, he finally returned to his normal life. Of course, if there was one less person in this normal life, it would be wonderful. Kakashi. My eternal opponent. Let's have the 35th showdown between men, for youth's sake. He was still wearing the eye-catching green skin tight suit. Might Guy, who appeared out of nowhere, gave Kakashi a thumbs up his white teeth shining in the sunlight as he shouted excitedly. Kakashi covered his face with the book in his hand and sighed helplessly, Might Guy, don't have any ambiguity in your words, okay. Oh? Really? Might Guy scratch the head of the watermelon? Very puzzled. There is indeed. Kakashi nodded solemnly. Thank you for reminding me, Kakashi. I will definitely correct myself next time. But now, Kakashi, let's have the 35th duel. Kakashi, 
who was too lazy to move, advised, This is such good weather. It is the time to sit here and enjoy the cool breeze. There is no need for a duel. Hearing this, might Guy look serious, Kakashi, you admit your mistake. Because of such good weather, we should shed our sweat and not let down the good times that youth gave us. All right, all right. Kakashi took a deep breath, put away his ninja bag, stood up, and said, Then let's play boxing. Two out of three rounds. The 31st battle, the 32nd battle, and the 33rd battle are all strokes of the fist. I will always be facing Kakashi. Youth is not to be brushed off. At this moment, Kai looked at Kakashi, who seemed to be somewhat resigned to his own degeneration, with tears gathering in his eyes. Kakashi suddenly felt a headache, what do you think, might guy? I haven't really fought with you for a long time. I just learned a new punch. Let's fight. Forget it. Kakashi quickly made a move in his heart. He finally had a rest day and didn't want to fight with the strong might guy. He had to think of a way to divert might guy's attention. Soon, Kakashi's eyes lit up, might guy, do you know that the Hokage is going to get married soon? Of course, I know. I even deliberately hung some red cloth outside the house. Might guy, who didn't know why Hawker suddenly said this, replied. Just a few mouthfuls of red cloth can express your feelings. Kakashi solemnly said, I know very well that Lord Hokage always values you. At the beginning of his appointment, he squeezed out precious time every day to urge you to exercise. This is a treatment that other Kanaha ninjas can't enjoy. You only need to pull a few pieces of red cloth to express your feelings. This is too much for the Lord Hokage to nurture you. Might Guy suddenly become silent? Not long after, his eyes suddenly turned red, and his tone was full of self-blame as he choked, Kakashi, you are right. I almost forgot about the training that Lord Hokage had given me. I just want to pull two pieces of red cloth. I am really sorry for the kindness of Lord Hokage. After saying that, tears flowed down like a waterfall, and he began to cry in self-blame. Although he was encouraged by the Hokage to stay in the hospital, it was only because he did not know how to exercise properly. Now that he thought about it, in the past, only his father was constantly encouraging him. The Hokage was the second. Indeed, as Kakashi said, he was too perfunctory about the marriage of the Hokage. Chapter 171, Dead Song Ghost Talent At this time, seeing that Might Guy was finally distracted by him, Kakashi breathed a sigh of relief and quickly comforted him. It's not too late to wake up now. Take advantage of the time. You need to prepare a real gift. You should know that many people close to him are prepared. As the first person to be urged by the Hokage, you have to act. Kakashi did not lie. As far as he knew, many people close to Lord Hokage had their gifts, except for the money of their followers. For example, when he heard that Lord Hokage liked antiques very much, he prepared to give him a famous landscape painting that was passed down from his ancestors. There was also the teacher's family. Kushina had already personally made a lot of baby clothes and supplies so that the future Lord Hokage and Master Tsunade's children could use them. She was very thoughtful. As for herself, she trusted Lord Hokage so much over the years that she naturally prepared gifts. At this time, Might Guy, who did not know what gift he prepared, asked, Kakashi, do you have any gifts? Yes, there is an ancient armor at home. I heard that Lord Hokage likes to collect these things, and I am going to use it as a gift. Although there was only one son left in the clan, the ancestors of the warrior family were also rich. Kakashi did not care about the ancient armor passed down by the clan. If he could be liked by the Hokage, he would be very happy. The gift that Kakashi wanted to choose was not this. Instead, it was the collection version of Intimacy Heaven. The reason for this was that he had a feeling that the Hokage might be the same as him. This was the sixth sense between the LSP. But later on, he thought that if Master Tsunade found out that he was giving this gift, he was afraid that he would not have a good end in the future. To be conservative, Kakashi still changed his gift. Hearing Kakashi say this, Might Guy sighed with some disappointment. He lived with his father in a simple wooden house at the edge of the village, and he did not have any ancient things. So, what should he give? Kakashi, you said that the ninja I gave to Lord Hokage is unique to me, and it is also my favorite green skin tight clothes. Breathe, moisturize, comfort and combat can reduce the air friction to the greatest extent. It is the best choice for ninjas. Suddenly thinking of a good idea. 
my guy's eyes lit up and he said with great joy. Kakashi was shocked, and then he said seriously, how about it? If you don't want to be in trouble in the future, it's better not to choose this as a gift. No. My guy was a little disappointed. How about the barbell? If Lord Hokage and Master Tsunade want to train their bodies, they can use the barbell I gave them. Same. All right. So, in the following time, my guy, who had completely forgotten about the duel, began to think. Kakashi was finally able to calm down and read again. However, not long after, a cold female voice sounded in his ear, and there was also a leaflet. This evening, the concert in the north square of the village is at seven o'clock. Hearing this, Kakashi subconsciously took the leaflet and looked up, and then said. It's so big, so big. He was shouting in his heart. Unfortunately, before he could enjoy the scenery, his master had already left and said the same words after coming to his side. There were not many people in the whole world who could make Kakashi sigh with amazement. Once it had something to do with the concert, it could only be the cloud ninja Samui. Previously, when Samui found Killer B, she naturally mentioned singing. However, she underestimated how much Killer B, who was like a runaway horse, was in the absence of the fourth rakage. The other party was her teacher, so it was difficult to persuade him. Fortunately, her ability was not bad. In the end, after some painstaking efforts, although Killer B still insisted on singing, he finally agreed to a compromise plan between the two parties that the identity of the listener is limited to ninjas. At least, the resistance of the ninja was stronger. After thinking like this, Samui was treated as a coolie by her teacher, and she began the concert leaflet that she was familiar with in Hidden Cloud Village. Only then did the scene happen. Oh? It's a master from the Thunderland who came to Kanaha to have a singing meeting. I've never heard of it before, and it's free. Kakashi, why don't we go and listen together tonight? Might Guy, who was very interested in the contents of the leaflet, said excitedly. He still hadn't thought of a good gift. However, in his opinion, he only needed sudden inspiration. Perhaps, he would come after listening to a concert. Looking away from the back of Samui, Kakashi looked at the leaflet and immediately thought of the death song that Kanaha had spread a few days ago. As a friend, I sincerely advise you not to go. Kakashi persuaded. Youth needs to constantly try new things. In addition, I have a hunch that there is a gift inspiration I need in the concert. So, Kakashi, I have to go. Might Guy look excited? As long as you are happy. Kakashi sighed helplessly. He had already made up his mind to visit his friend in the hospital tomorrow. To Kakashi's surprise. On the next day, not only was Might Guy not in a coma like he thought, he was in high spirits after meeting him on the big street. His eyes were red, and he said happily, Kakashi, yesterday's concert was great. I have found inspiration. After that, he saw the other side rushing away with excitement. Eh? Is the news I got wrong? Kakashi was puzzled. It was not until later that he learned that among the unlucky people who were curious to go to Killer B's concert that night, other than Might Guy alone, everyone else had been marked to the hospital. Logically speaking, with the constitution of a ninja, they should not be so fragile. But at that time, not only was their Killer B releasing the big move of the death song, there was also a Hachi who has green eyes. When he heard the former singing, it was like opening a door to a new world. In an instant, he only felt that he had met a true soulmate, Might Guy, who was in the middle of the fun, joined in. All of a sudden, Killer B's hypnotic rap was played in conjunction with Might Guy who pulled out a pair of broken sticks from nowhere and sang loudly along with the tune. Under such double noise pollution, even a ninja could not stand it. Later, even though Might Guy and Killer B were the only ones left at the concert, the two, who had rarely found a like-minded person, not only did not stop but continued to get excited with more and more interest. It lasted for an entire night. This was also the reason why Kakashi met Might Guy the next day, and the latter's eyes were red. However, the two of them were also at the scene, and when Samui, who had prepared earplugs to isolate the noise, saw the mess, her face could not help but turn ugly. Originally, she had expected that the Kanaha ninja's presence should be able to hold on. But what she did not expect was that there was a ghost in Kanaha that was not inferior to her teacher. Now, they were in big trouble. One had to know that the nature of a ninja entering the academy was completely different from an ordinary person entering the academy. In addition, Hidden Cloud Village was about to obtain a new receipt. Samui sighed deeply. 
looking at Killer B who was still immersed in her music, she had the heart to kill her teacher. After that, just as Samui thought, the news of a group of Kanaha ninjas entering the school soon shocked the management of Kanaha. But in the end, it even shocked the Hokage, Yuki Senju. Killer B, is this guy really that good at singing? Yuki was very surprised when he received the news. Although he also knew that Killer B's concert could not be sold in Hidden Cloud Village, even though it sounded weird when the other party talked, it was not to the point of making people faint. Could it be that once the other party opened the microphone, they would be able to use their full power? No matter what, this matter needed to be settled as soon as possible. Although Killer B was a pauper, the cloud ninja behind him had to bear the new treatment fee. Not only that, the former had to be punished. Yuki did not want to play a death song trick at his wedding. When he thought of the possible picture, he could not help but shudder. Someone come! Yuki immediately shouted. Lord Hokage! Ritsuko, the female secretary, immediately pushed open the door and entered. Yuki immediately ordered, inform Kanaha's guards to disturb the people with noise and deliberately hurt people. Lock the eight-tailed beast in prison for me. Before my wedding is completed, don't let him out. Yes. After receiving the order, Ritsuko of Yamanaka quickly moved. So soon, after returning to the temporary residence, Killer B was not tired at all. Instead, he excitedly told his apprentice that there would be a second concert. Just as Samui was feeling helpless and thinking about the knife became more serious, the sound of a heavy kick on the door suddenly sounded. The next second, a team of Kanaha ninjas wearing police armbands rushed in with a serious expressions and said to Killer B who was at a loss, Killer B, because you disturbed the people and deliberately hurt people, you are now arrested by Kanaha's police force. Follow us to the prison of the police force. Ah? Did you make a mistake? Killer B said subconsciously. However, the members of the garrison did not listen at all. Seeing that Killer B did not make a move, they immediately went forward to hold him down. After pulling him up, they wanted to forcefully take him away. Wait. Wait. You caught the wrong person. I am a good citizen. Now that his strength was completely sealed, no matter how much he resisted, he could not resist the group of people in front of him. He could only repeatedly explain that he had not committed those crimes but it was completely ineffective. In the end, he could only say the phrase idiot, bastard, unhappily, not forgetting to shout before he was dragged away, telling Samui to pull him out as soon as possible. The second concert was imminent. In this regard, Samui, who had been watching from the side, chuckled. A second concert? If this goes on, the village will not be able to open up. It's good for Kanaha to take the teacher away. At the very least, they had solved a big problem for her and the Cloud Ninjas. As for whether or not Killer B would suffer next, Kanaha could freely allow the outside villagers to move freely, so naturally, she would not worry about the former being punished for these things. However, it was fine if he suffered a little. At least this teacher of his could change his temper a little. Since he was a prisoner of war, wouldn't it be better to live a good and stable time? With a belligerent personality like Yujito Nii, Apart from the fact that her strength had been sealed, his time had not stabilized. Every day, he would go to the cat's house to feed the cat. He did not provoke anything else. Wasn't it good? So, Teacher Killer B, you should reflect on yourself in the prison of Kanaha's garrison. Looking at Killer B's unwilling face disappearing from his eyes, Samui, who felt as if she had lost a big burden, breathed a sigh of relief and rubbed her sore shoulders. This was also her old problem. Previously, because of Teacher Killer B's worries, he had drawn too much attention. Now that he came back to his senses, the pain that he had accumulated for a long time finally erupted. I wonder how Tsunade, one of the three ninjas of Woodleaf, solved this problem. Maybe I can ask her. Samui's blue-green eyes were full of thoughts. Chapter 172, Marriage of the Emperor On the commercial street of Kanaha, as the date of the Hokage's wedding approached, more and more outsiders came to the village. Although it brought great pressure to the garrison and the Anbu, the economic rise of the village was also visible to the naked eye. In this kind of prosperity, the bustling commercial street of the CBD of Kanaha could be imagined. Could it be that Minato also came here with his wife and children, preparing to buy a formal dress for Lord Hokage's wedding? Originally, he and Kushina were prepared, but when they saw the beautiful clothes in the store, Kushina couldn't help it. Seeing his wife's longing gaze, and then glancing at the countless zeros on the price tag of the clothes, 
Minato forced a laugh and took out his wallet. Minato, you are so good. Suddenly Kushina excitedly kissed Minato, making the latter blush. On the other side, Naruto, who was watching his parents show off their love, smirked and suggested, Mom, that dress is also very good. Why don't you buy it too? Good son. Kushina, who was still hesitating, heard her son's help and rubbed his golden hair, then looked at Minato, smiling like a flower. Minato, look, Naruto said so. Minato smiled a little bitterly, but he still opened his wallet. There was no other way. He was a really good husband. Kushina was happy to have another kiss. At this moment, a familiar voice sounded beside the family, young Minato and Kushina, you two love each other. Hearing this, Minato shyly tried to move away. But Kushina didn't care about anything and hugged Minato. After a domineering kiss, he looked at the person and said, Fugaku, if you are envious, you can come with me Kato. It was Fugaku and his family. Fugaku subconsciously looked at his wife, only to see her glare at him before quickly moving away. She wasn't as bold as his best friend Kushina. Fugaku smiled and didn't say anything else. Although the shadow that had been suppressing the Uchiha for decades was no longer there, and compared to the past, he had more time to be with his family and cultivate the feelings between them, just like today's family tour. But if he wanted to be with his wife on the street, he also could not let it go. Therefore, Fugaku changed the topic and talked about other things. The adults had topics to talk about. Naruto naturally moved to the side of the younger generation. He first happily called out Big Brother Itaki, then looked at Suzuki. He chuckled and said, OK. In the end, his true attention was on the baby that Suzuki was holding. His eyes were filled with surprise and joy. Is this what it means to wear clothes? It's so cute. Can you let me hug the baby? No. Before Itaka could say anything, Suzuki took a big step back with a wary expression and refused without thinking. At the side, Itaka felt a chill in his heart when he saw this scene. Ever since his family had a new sister, Suzuki, who had always been by his side, called brother, seemed to have changed his heart and had often placed it on his sister. This made him feel a sense of loss. However, his eldest brother did not laugh at his second brother. For the birth of his sister, Itaka himself was also very surprised. Usually, when he was resting, he had experience with babies and carried his sister to dress more often. Right now, it was only because Suzuki acted like a spoiled child that Kiyomi came from his arms to the other side. On the side, seeing that no matter how Suzuki objected, he could not stop Naruto from licking his face and going forward to look at Kiyomi, his face was full of smiles. Kushina, Naruto likes kids, why don't you have another one? Mikato suggested with a smile. Kushina looked forward to it, but she shook her head in regret. It's not the right time yet. Every time the human pillar gave birth, it was accompanied by danger. Naruto was born because of Senju, so the impact was reduced to a minimum. But who knew what would happen if it happened again? He didn't want Kanaha to waste a lot of manpower and resources every time he gave birth, so he could only temporarily suppress his thoughts. Minato patted his wife on the shoulder and said with a smile, there will be such a day. It won't be too late to regenerate when the world is truly stable. He believed that day would not be too far away. Seeing that her words seemed to cause the atmosphere to become awkward, the slightly embarrassed Mikato quickly interrupted and said to Suzuki. Suzuki, since Naruto wants to hug the knot, then let him hug the baby. Since his mother had spoken like this, no matter how unwilling Suzuki was, he could only carefully pass the knot in his arms to the excited Naruto. In the following time, he followed the latter closely, as if he was afraid that the other party would not be able to hug him well. His hands were empty, and his mouth kept nagging be careful. However, Suzuki had underestimated Naruto in the end. The latter not only held Kiyomi very steadily but also gently swayed without a teacher, making Kiyomi giggle, very happy. Suzuki was very sad and jealous. He had just started, but Kiyomi liked it so much. It had to be known that when he first held Kiyomi, he had made the other cry for a long time. As a newly promoted brother, he had not yet enjoyed the love from his sister. Now, his position was heavily threatened. At this moment, the relationship between him and Naruto, which had already been slightly better, once again cracked. No. In the future, he must guard against Naruto. Staring at the well-played Naruto and Kiyomi, Suzuki made up his mind to make himself the favorite of his sister. Beside them, 
Mikato who was enjoying the fun of Naruto and Kiyomi also laughed. It looks like Naruto will be a good father in the future. This is his first time carrying a baby, I didn't expect him to like me so much. Of course. Naruto can own the family at such a young age. Any girl who can marry him will be very happy. As a mother, Kushina didn't beat around the bush to praise his son. He even started to play matchmaker early on. I say, Mikato, I think Naruto and Kiyomi are very compatible. Why don't we get a baby marriage early? My son is a good resource. If we don't snatch it early, it will be too late later. Cough. 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 Before she could speak, Fugaku, who was eager for his daughter, coughed again and again. His face was full of black lines as he forced a smile. It's too early. Let's not talk about this first. Kushina, who was full of confidence in his son, wanted to say something, but he was stopped by Minato, who was laughing with a guilty conscience. The former did not notice, but he noticed that when his wife said those words, not only Fugaku but also Suzuki were instantly angry. Especially Suzuki, looking at the other party's excited appearance, Minato even suspected that if they wanted to continue this topic, the other party would immediately open his Sharingan. Haha. <laughs> Speaking of which, Suzuki and Naruto are the same year. Counting the time, we can enter the ninja school together next year. Minato quickly shifted his gaze and said, Naruto. When the time comes, we must help each other. Dad, don't worry. I will take good care of Suzuki. Naruto, who didn't notice anything unusual, said. Humph. Who needs your care? Just don't become the last of the crane. As an Uchiha. Suzuki proudly raised his head, the new hatred and old hatred added together, full of disdain. Suzuki. Fugaku heard this and his voice became a bit heavier. Helpless, Suzuki could only reluctantly say, Don't worry, with me here, I will take good care of Naruto. As a result, this storm was suppressed as soon as it started. The elders continued to talk about heaven and earth. And because of what happened just now, Suzuki became more and more dissatisfied with Naruto. However, this dissatisfaction seemed to be a new term from Lord Hokage. Resentment. For some reason, his sister was born and took away a part of his beloved brother's love. At this moment, looking at Naruto, Itaka suddenly felt that another love was about to disappear. After a while, the two families, who had a deep bond with each other, said goodbye to each other. For the wedding of Lord Hokage, each of them had some unfinished preparations and had to be prepared immediately. It was because the third day was the wedding day of the Hokage. The third day, the third day, the wedding of the Hokage. At dawn, almost all the villagers woke up early and excitedly walked to the street, ready to witness the wedding of the century that they were most looking forward to and wished for. Even if they could not see the new people who admired them at close range, even if they only shouted from afar, they could still feel heartfelt joy. At this moment, in the streets and alleys of Kanaha, in addition to the sky full of fire and red, there were many colorful six-colored flowers and plants gifted by the Yamanaka clan, making the village on this day particularly beautiful. The land of the Senju clan. He didn't sleep much the night. He had already been dressed up early. He was dressed in a five-striped garment with feathers. Yuki, who was embroidered with the word fire and a Senju clan emblem, looked at the beautiful cherry blossoms outside the French window and didn't move for a long time. This was the first time he had been married in his two lives. No matter how strong he was, he would still be as nervous as a normal newcomer. Although he said that he wanted to continue the Senju clan, when he was about to do it, the words family, wife and future children entered his heart for the first time, making him feel a little confused. Was he going to be a husband and a father? What a surprise! When he first came to the ninja realm, he still had a game mentality. But at this moment, after he got married, the last bit of longing he had for his previous life finally disappeared. It was because this place had truly become his home. Minato, you are the only one married here, and you are also a model husband. In terms of living at home, I, as a newcomer, will have to ask you for advice in the future. Yuki who had recovered, turned back and smiled at Minato, who was married to the groomsmen team. There were only two single seedlings left in the clan. Since the newlywed couple had no elders, Yuki invited some people close to him to help. In his place, beside Minato, there were also Shisui, Itaki, Hayama Shirakumo, Takumi, and Takumai among the people who had followed him for the longest time and were also the most trusted. As for his other trusted aide, Shikaku, 
he was in charge of the abbot for the wedding. To be able to become the best man of the Hokage-sama, everyone was naturally very happy. Just like at this time, Hayama was constantly fiddling with his most precious grey ponytail, his hands were constantly pulling his belly, trying to make himself look slim. The youngest of the group was also nervously pulling on his bow tie. Compared to fighting with the enemy, this was the first time he found himself more nervous about the current situation. At this moment, Minato smiled and said, I believe that Master Tsunade and Lord Hokage will be in love with each other, and there is no need for them to learn from each other. Of course, if there is any problem, I will tell you with my own experience. Thank you, Minato. After saying that, he turned to the single dogs on the side and said, And you guys, how much do you want to learn from Minato? You know, this is someone who has been with Kushina since he was young. Experience is worth learning from your bachelors. In this regard, Shisui felt nothing. He was quite young, so he could wait a little longer. On the other hand, there was a girl beside him, named Izumi. Maybe his brother would get married before he got married. On the other side, Hayama and Takumai, whose age was not small either, opened their eyes and asked for advice. Minato was speechless. How could he be so skillful? Everything was just going with the flow. Fortunately, at this time, a voice full of energy and enthusiasm suddenly sounded, the wedding is about to begin. Lord Hokage, and Dad. It's about to start. Naruto, who was dressed like a small adult, pushed open the door slightly and shouted at Yuki and the others. Then he left without stopping and shouted to Tsunade and the others on the other side. Then let's begin. Yuki took a deep breath and nodded to everyone. Soon, accompanied by beautiful music, the door of the royal palace slowly opened, and Yuki and his companions walked out. On the other side, at the same time, the door opened. Along with Kushina, Silent, and some of the subordinates of the medical female subordinates that he had been in contact with in the past, Tsunade also walked out. They looked at each other. He was wearing a set of white, purple, green, green, and red clothes that looked extremely luxurious. His golden hair was tied up in a new bun. There was a flower on his forehead, and his face was dressed in a delicate and beautiful Tsunade. Yuki was momentarily stunned. This was the first time he had seen Tsunade, who always had her face facing the sky and did not like to dress up, appear so beautiful under the makeup. The truth shocked him. So, was this his wife? Yuki raised his eyes and looked at Tsunade who had the same burning gaze. Feeling the strong emotions in each other's eyes, he took the lead and reached out, holding Tsunade's palm tightly. In the happy shouts of his relatives and friends, Tsunade smiled calmly, and her slender and white palm clenched back. The wedding officially began. Along with the festive music, Yuki and Tsunade, the two newcomers, stepped on the red carpet and walked towards the wedding stage hand in hand under the fragrant five-colored petals falling from the sky. The moment they appeared in everyone's eyes, cheers, applause, blessings, and so on immediately soared into the sky. At this moment, the entire Kanaha village was boiling with excitement. Stop! 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 The beautiful fireworks that came from the rock village, which had been specially prepared by the master of explosion and smoke, rose in response, causing the atmosphere of the wedding to rise even higher. The wedding ceremony in the Naruto world had different styles. There were traditional Japanese and Western styles. As a ruler, although Yuki preferred the latter, he couldn't ignore tradition. Because of this, this wedding was a new and old combination. The first half of the ceremony would be a simple traditional style of the process. In the second half, it would be even more open and lively. The wonderful programs prepared by the great ninja clan and individuals would also be presented one by one, and the entire village would enter the most boiling moment. Under the leadership of Nara Shikaku, the wedding of Yuki and Tsunade smoothly proceeded smoothly and orderly. Halfway there, Yuki looked at the guest. There, there are the familiar Minato, Kushina, Shisui, Itaki, Choza, Kakashi, Maitgai, Asuma, Yui Kurane. Plus the young Naruto, Suzuki, Hinata, Shikamaru, Koji, Kaiba, etc. are the three generations of Kanaha ninjas. There were powerful and famous people from the five great lands and many small lands. There were also Terumi Mei, Kojuro, Dode, Yujito Nii, Samui, Kitsuki, Beiki, and many other former opponents. He was the only one in the whole world who had such charisma. Although he was very proud, the one who made him the most proud was his wife in front of him. He looked at the beautiful woman in front of him and her face was full of happiness. 
In the process, Yuki, who suddenly wanted to do it, wrapped his arms around her slender waist and kissed her. Tsunade was slightly shocked. Although she was a little red, she still held her hands back and boldly greeted him. Cheers and whistles rang out from the guests below. Narashikaku also smiled when he saw this and stopped talking. Happiness bloomed brilliantly at this moment. Chapter 173, Maki Senju Year 58 of Kanaha In front of the largest field gambling house in the village, under the gaze of the previously awe-inspiring boss of the gambling house and his subordinates. Not far away, a little girl wearing a green coat with a soaring braid, who looked no more than four or five years old, was walking over with her head held high. Beside her, there was a slightly bigger girl with an Uchiha fan on her clothes, holding a cup of milk that was almost as long as her forearm, and following closely behind. The milk tea is so delicious. Maki, would you like a sip? The little girl named Uchiha took a sip of the milk tea with a straw and smiled with satisfaction. She wanted to share this joy with her best friend. Maki, or the little girl whose full name was Maki Senju, raised her chin and refused, milk tea? That is for children. I never drink this kind of thing. But aren't we just children? Kiyomi Uchiha, who had been rejected, was not angry. After saying this with a puzzled face, she curiously asked Maki, who had always been a little adult, Maki, what do you like to drink? Hearing this, Maki was shocked. Her small lips proudly curved, and her little head raised even higher, of course, it is, wine. Wine? Maki, you drank wine before. Kiyomi was shocked. She was no stranger to wine. Her father at home often drank wine. Although her eldest brother did not like to drink, her second brother knew that she was not drinking at her age, but to prove that she was also an adult, she had secretly drank several times. She also wanted to try the taste of wine and see if it was different from milk tea. She could let her father and second brother drink it. Unfortunately, with her small body, she had never had this opportunity. Now that she heard that her little friend had tasted the wine, she was very envious and immediately asked, Maki, how does the wine taste? Is it as good as milk tea? Wine, of course, it's very good. It's much better than milk tea. Maki said, her eyes twinkling. She could say that her only drinking experience was secretly drinking the rest of her mother's wine. In the end, before she could reflect on it, she was beaten up by her father who found out. In the end, she only felt a burning pain in her butt, but she completely ignored the taste of wine. This was too damaging to her image as young master Maki. Therefore, when faced with her little friend's question, she could only hold on to her guilty conscience. Then, she immediately changed the topic and said, let's put the wine aside for now. Kiyomi, don't forget what we are here for now. When Kiyomi, who had a gentle personality, heard this, although her little face was a little regretful, she still obediently let go of the wine matter. But soon, when she saw that the store was getting closer and closer, she could not help but ask worriedly, Maki, do you want to go to the casino? Isn't that okay? Dad, Mom, Uncle Yuki and Aunt Tsunade will get angry if they know about it. Don't mention it. If I don't say it, how can my family know? As for those guys in front? Humph. They don't even dare to ignore them. Maki patted her shoulder and comforted her. If he didn't know, he would have thought that she was older than the latter. But in fact, she was older than her by a year. However, because of her personality, she had always been the eldest sister. In addition, didn't we say before that we didn't come here for gambling, but for my unlucky mother who lost everything here yesterday? I am helping my mother, with great filial piety. Don't worry about me. At this moment, Maki, who had the air of a mother, opened her eyes and continued to explain. The simple-minded inner disciple listened. Is that the case? Of course. Maki nodded without hesitation, we are doing business here. In addition, aren't you also interested in seeing what a gambling house looks like? It's a good time to take a look at it now. Maki's eyes lit up when she heard this. She, who had always been a good girl, also yearned to be slightly out of line. In addition, she was also doing business now. Then, let's go take a look. Kiyomi blushed with excitement and finally nodded. Then let's go. Maki, who took Kiyomi to the gambling house for the first time, rushed to the gambling house in a hurry. At the same time, seeing that the young lady who had been famous in the gambling industry in recent years had come, although the boss of the casino had a bitter expression on his face, 
he still sighed deeply and forced a smile. He said respectfully to Maki. Miss Maki, why are you free to come to our gambling hall today? It's a great honor. On the side, seeing their boss speak, the group of subordinates also smiled like flowers on their previously ferocious faces, not daring to be the least bit presumptuous. Nonsense, the entire Kanaha village, did not know that the young lady in front of them, named Maki, with the surname of Senju, was the current fourth Hokage, the general and the beloved daughter of Master Tsunade. In Kanaha and the Fire Land, she could be considered a princess. If they hurt the other party in the slightest, they would not be able to bear the consequences. Towards this scene, Maki was already accustomed to it and waved her hand. You should also be clear about the reason why I came here today. As usual, how much my mother lost to you yesterday, then today, I will win back this book. Sure enough. The owner of the gambling house sighed in his heart. He was not afraid of the identity of Maki. After all, whether it was this little princess or her parents, they had never used their status to oppress others. For this family, whether it was the people of Kanaha village or the people of Fire Land, they were very respectful. What caused him to turn pale with fright was this princess Maki's gambling skills. It was hard to imagine that a four-year-old little girl's gambling skills could beat up all of them. This was the famous daughter of a fat sheep in the gambling world. It was said that dragons were dragons, and phoenixes were phoenixes. Why was the descendant of the big fat sheep, not the small fat sheep? Now, not only was the name of the big fat sheep still spread in the entire gambling world but also the name of the new great demon king. Now that the great demon king had come to him, the owner of the gambling house could only admit defeat. After all, this situation was not just once or twice. Even though they had specially hired many gambling experts, they still could not defeat the other party. It could be said that now that the legendary big fat sheep had arrived, the gambling owners of the Kanaha village were not as excited as before. There was no other way because the money they earned was always short. At this moment, under the helpless situation of the gambling house boss, Maki Senju, who had a pair of hands, and a pair of well-proportioned hands on her face, led her little face into the gambling house with excitement and nervousness, and strode into the gambling house. Soon, the sounds of shaking, shouting, the sound of machines rolling, and other extremely lively atmosphere hit their faces. This, is this gambling. The clothed man who saw this scene for the first time looked around without blinking. On the side, the accustomed Maki waved his hand like a fish in water and said, Kiyomi, I will let you see what it means to kill in all four directions. If the so-called killing in the four directions of Tsunade was the opposite, then what Maki said was correct. An hour later, when the owner of the gambling house sent the girls out of the gambling house with a bitter smile, one could see that Maki and Kiyomi were carrying a big sack full of money behind them. So heavy. Although she was a little tired, she still said excitedly, so much money. I have never seen so much. Maki, you're so awesome. Of course. Maki, who looked much more relaxed than Kiyomi, lifted the sack with her hands and said proudly without any modesty. Then, another wave of girls came. Under the street, two girls were carrying a big sack full of money, and the mouth of the sack was not sealed, revealing a little paper money, which naturally attracted the attention of many people. What was worth noting was that the many people here basically referred to outsiders. Now that Kanaha had replaced the capital of the Fire Land and became the real center of the Fire Land, naturally, there was a large number of people. Among them, there was no lack of good and bad people. However, when their greedy eyes saw the Uchiha emblem and the Thousand Hand emblem on the two women, they immediately lowered their heads in fear, and no one dared to look any more. Good boy. The former was already troublesome enough to be born as an Uchiha, after all, no one dared to provoke those red-eyed diseases that could not tolerate any sand in their eyes. As for the latter, it was even more troublesome. To be able to embroider a thousand-hand clan emblem on his clothes, and a person at such a young age, anyone who was slightly familiar with the ninja realm would know who it was. Offending this person would truly be like going to heaven and earth, and there was no way for them to escape. As a result, the actions of Maki and the three-year-old Kiyomi were not unexpected at all. Maki. How are we going to deal with the money we won? Didn't notice anything, at this time, she only felt that her arm was a little tired and asked. Maki helped to lift the sack on the back of the jacket with one hand and replied, same old rules. Let's save a small amount of money to buy food and donate the rest to the orphanage. Kanaha's orphanage? Maki, you're so caring. Of course. Our father has educated me so that it can benefit the world. 
benefit to the world? What does that mean? That's... Ha! Huh. It just needs to have love. Seeing that she still wanted to ask something, Maki, who had no ink in her stomach, quickly said, Kiyomi, let's go to the orphanage now. Oh, okay. Kiyomi still nodded. Then, she skillfully took out a stack of money from the sack and put it in her arms. She picked it up and said, this is our next snack fee. As for the rest, they are all from Kanaha's orphanage. Okay. She was very happy to help others with the knot and nodded. Just as the two women were heading towards the orphanage with a smile, two figures suddenly jumped from the house not far away, shouting their names. Seeing this, the face of the clothed man panicked. And Maki was dissatisfied and said, How did these two guys find us? Chapter 174 The Idiot, The Two Pillar, and The Young Lady Sister Kiyomi Senior Sister Maki A loud shout came from behind him. The two of them looked to be about ten years old. One of them was blonde, and the other was a black-haired youth. He skillfully circulated the chakra within his body, and after running against Newton's will, he quickly caught up. The newcomers were Naruto and Suzuki. Five years had passed, and the once little brat had suddenly grown up a lot. Especially Naruto. Without the influence of malnutrition from a young age, he, who had a strong physique, not only had his body become a lot stronger after four years in the ninja school, but even his head was a bit higher than that of Suzuki. The one who had just shouted was him. Today, the ninja school was on holiday and Naruto and Suzuki were originally entrusted by the big people to look after Maki and Kiyomi when they went out to play. It was fine at first. However, as they played, they suddenly disappeared without a trace. This worried Naruto and Suzuki, who were becoming more and more toward sister control. Then, naturally, they began to search anxiously. After that, just as they were about to summon up their courage and ask for the help of the big people, they found nothing. Fortunately, the peak turned, and they saw the two women. In the end, I found you. Naruto who ran in front of Maki and Kiyomi let out a sigh of relief, then could not help but complain, speaking of which, where did the two of you just run off to? It made Suzuki and I look for you for a long time. On the side, Suzuki, who did not speak, only put his hands in his pockets coolly, only the remaining sweat on his face showed his state just now. Hearing this, Maki looked indifferent. And Kiyomi stole a glance at Maki, then stuck out her tongue cutely at Naruto and Suzuki, bowed and apologized, I'm sorry, brother Naruto, brother Suzuki. I was too engrossed in shopping and forgot to call you guys. This is my fault. When he heard that the soft girl was blaming herself, especially when she called him brother Naruto, Naruto, who had wanted to criticize him, immediately swallowed his words. He felt that he was floating in the air and hurriedly scratched his head in embarrassment. He laughed and said. Haha. It's normal for people to forget other things when they are immersed. I have happened many times myself. So Sister Kiyomi, you don't have to blame yourself. Speaking of which, it is my and Sasuke's fault that we didn't think well. As expected. The nemesis of Naruto is to wear a coat. Maki, who stood to the side and watched coldly, noticed that Naruto's attitude had taken a 180-degree turn after his apology, and laughed disdainfully in his heart. Hat. Man. No, it should be said that I'm a little man. On the other side, seeing his sister apologize, Suzuki, who had a slightly better expression on his face, couldn't help but glance at Naruto. What he hated the most was Naruto trying to curry favor with his sister. After all, Kiyomi was five years younger than him. Thinking of this, Sasuke's face darkened. He kept wandering in front of Kiyomi. Naruto, who didn't know what he said that made her laugh, pulled away. He patted his sister's little head as punishment. After that, he looked at the sack on the back of the two girls and said calmly. Tell me, what did you go to do? Why do you suddenly have so much money? He was not an idiot, he was confused and disoriented by a girl's two sentences, so much so that he completely ignored the abnormality in front of him. Upon hearing this, Kiyomi's little face was slightly shocked, somewhat at a loss. She, who had always been a good girl, was now very nervous. If her family knew that she had gone to the gambling house, what would happen? Before Naruto, who had been pulled away, could get angry with Suzuki, he heard this and came to the front of the sack. He pulled the sack and instantly exclaimed in surprise, So much money! How many bowls of ramen do we have to eat? Is this time to sigh about this? 
Suzuki glanced at Naruto, who was very nervous at first, then looked at Maki, who had always maintained an indifferent attitude. With her personality, she would not do anything illegal, but it was possible that her best friend would take the lead to demonstrate the effect. It just so happened that with Sasuke's understanding of Maki, the other party had the guts. Afraid that she would lead his sister astray, he hurriedly asked, Young Mistress Maki, can you explain what you did before? Hearing this, Maki finally made her move. She shrugged indifferently, then patted the first time she was caught. She nervously tied her clothes on her shoulder and comforted, Don't worry, I'm here. Then, Maki looked at Suzuki and Naruto and smiled playfully, Two pillars, big fool, don't worry. There's nothing wrong with this money. Two pillars. Big fool. Although he had been called this by this young lady in front of him before, when he heard it again, Suzuki and Naruto were still very unhappy. However, they could only hold it in. It was not that the two of them were afraid of Maki's identity, but even if they joined hands, they could not beat the other party at all. Although Suzuki and Naruto, who were still studying in the ninja academy, had the strength of a genin, they could only be beaten to the ground whenever facing Maki who was six years younger than them but had already awakened the wood style and had trained at home early. That's right. As the daughter of Yuki and Tsunade, in the expectation of thousands of people, Maki awakened the wood style unexpectedly. This was also the reason why Suzuki and Naruto called her sister Kiyomi but instead called her big sister Maki. It was not because of her identity, but because of her strength. According to Maki, if she wanted to call her a little sister, she had to beat her first. At this time, seeing Suzuki and Naruto's constipated expressions, Maki revealed a nasty smile that was the same as Tsunade. She did not think of these two nicknames at first, but occasionally when she heard her father say that Suzuki and Naruto were used as nicknames, she remembered them in her heart and used them later. It had to be said that these two nicknames were quite appropriate. Looking at Naruto who was still angry just now, after being persuaded by Kiyomi, he laughed foolishly again. Then he looked at Suzuki who had been sulking but had always maintained a cool posture. Maki smiled and then explained. This money was earned by this big miss with both hands. I won't steal it or rob it. It must be fake. How long has it been? How can you earn so much money, Miss Maki? Looking at the two large sacks, the sum of his ten years of pocket money was far from enough. Naruto shouted in disbelief. Hee hee, nothing is impossible. Do you know what kind of legitimate way to earn money is the fastest? Maki raised her eyebrows and raised her head. What method? Naruto, who had a curious look on his face, stood in front of him perfectly. Suzuki, on the other hand, seemed to have thought of something. Maki did not continue to play riddles and directly said, That's a gamble. You should know that just an hour ago, this big miss has been killing everywhere in the gambling hall. This money is the spoils of war. One hour. Can you win so much? Naruto subconsciously opened his mouth wide, and his tone revealed a trace of yearning. But soon, he reacted and trembled all over. He pointed to Maki and said in horror, You, you, you went to gamble. One had to know that Maki in front of him was only four years old. Hearing this, Suzuki also frowned. He looked at the clothed man and said, So you also went to the gambling house. Kiyomi's fingers were intertwined, and her little face nodded in a panic. She explained in a low voice, yes. Yes. Hearing this, Naruto felt as if his heart was broken, and his face was full of an expression of my Kiyomi can't be like this. Sasuke's expression was also very bad. Although he had long heard that Maki was very unorthodox, he did not expect her to be so wild. If this continued, his always obedient and cute little sister might be led astray. Just as Suzuki was about to say something, Maki waved her hand and said, don't worry. Gambling is not a big deal. Is it worth making such a fuss? In addition, the real purpose of our gambling is not to win money. My mother, Tsunade, do you know? Hearing Maki mention Tsunade, both of them could only nod their heads. Especially Naruto, he knew that his father was able to smoothly become Lord Hokage in the past few years, and it was also the result of the former Lord Hokage and Master Tsunade, taking care of the fetus in peace and not working hard anymore. Then you should know my mother's gambling level, right? Naruto and Suzuki nodded again. The legendary fat sheep. Even though they had never gambled before, Tsunade's valiant achievements in the village gambling house after returning to the village still spread. With the news from outside the village, 
the people of the Kanaha village naturally had a deep impression of this famous title in the gambling world. Even Naruto, people at Sasuke's age, had heard of it. Seeing this, Maki clapped her hands and said, I am not gambling for money, but for my mother and filial piety. The money I win is neither too much nor too little, and it happens that my mother loses the same amount. In addition, I am going to donate all the money to the Kanaha orphanage. Do you think I am gambling? I am doing good deeds. It seems that what you said is quite reasonable. Hearing this, Naruto nodded thoughtfully. Of course. If not for your arrival, I and we I would have donated the money to the orphanage. Since you know that we are doing good deeds, then don't tell your parents about going to the gambling hall today. Okay. Ah. Naruto was about to blurt out, but his expression immediately changed. He was in a difficult position. Originally, the elders of the family had told them to take good care of Maki and Kiyomi, and it was already very irresponsible of them to lose them halfway. If they hid the fact that the two girls went to gamble and let them continue, wouldn't it be even more irresponsible? Ah, uh, what? Do you have the heart to be scolded and beaten up by your parents when you go back with such a cute Kiyomi? We are doing good deeds. Maki immediately hugged the pitiful Kiyomi and said. This, Naruto scratched his head. His heart softened a lot as he looked at Suzuki and asked for his opinion. Suzuki was also in a difficult position. If he told him about his sister, it would be hard to guarantee that his always old-fashioned father would be punished. Seeing this, Maki quietly used her finger to point at the knot. After receiving the news, the knot was immediately coordinated with Naruto and Suzuki to use the method of acting spoiled. In addition, Maki said, if you dare to tell your parents, I will beat you up every time I see you in the future. After the two tubes were connected, Naruto and Suzuki still gave in. From now on, you can't gamble anymore. Especially you, Kiyomi. Finally, Suzuki, who knew that he could not persuade Maki, glared at his sister. Kiyomi nodded obediently and then secretly looked at Maki. Maki chuckled and gave her a look that said, You understand. Chapter 175, Go Home Kanaha's Orphanage When Maki and her party arrived, the director of the orphanage, Yakushi Nono, was warmly receiving them. Maki, why are you here to donate money again? The orphanage's funds are already sufficient with your help from time to time. You should take this money and use it yourself. Yakushi, who was wearing the same glasses as the pharmacist, immediately understood when she saw the two big sacks that Naruto and Suzuki were carrying. She looked at Maki with anger in her eyes. Maki, who was already used to Yakushi's reaction, waved her hand and said, It's okay. It's all money from the strong wind. Rather than letting rich people enjoy it, it's better to use it here. In addition, I have already taken out my commission. No matter how much money I have, I can't use it. It's better to leave it to Auntie Yakushi to help more orphans. Yakushi still wanted to say something, but he was interrupted by a series of excited children's cries behind him. Big Sis! Big Sister Maki is here! Quickly come and greet Big Sister Maki! Big Sister, come and play with us! In an instant, the orphanage was in an uproar. Soon, many children dressed in simple clothes, but their clothes were clean and tidy, and their faces were full. They excitedly rushed towards Maki. Maki proudly tied her clothes, while Naruto and Suzuki raised their eyebrows, then put their hands on their hips and greeted their little brothers and sisters with a smug look. So powerful! Seeing that Maki was so popular for the first time in the orphanage and was called Big Sister Head by so many people, Kiyomi said with admiration. Yes, yes. Naruto also sighed and nodded. In his heart, he imagined the scene of him waving his arms and everyone following him. Suzuki did not speak. He only noticed that so many children loved Maki. He was surprised and surprised by Maki he knew before. As the focus of the crowd, Maki also noticed the kind young man who came with the children while she was trying to establish a relationship with her little brother and sister. The latter smiled and greeted her as he approached, Miss Maki is here again. Kabuto, we meet again. Maki was very familiar with the young man named Kabuto Yakushi. Not only because he was a regular customer of the orphanage, but also because he was a direct disciple of the medical field that his mother had accepted after muted his sister all these years. The two of them naturally had known each other for a long time. Today's matter is the same as before. You are not allowed to spread it out. Although he had experienced it before, Maki still patiently told Kabuto about it this time. Hearing this, 
Kabuto looked at the two large sacks beside Yakushi and nodded to Maki. But in his heart, he still sighed slightly. Miss Maki, no matter how much you hide it, your father already knows about this matter. Everything in Kanaha could not be hidden from the owner of this place. However, since the Hokage did not express anything, he did not want to join in the fun. The pharmacist raised her glasses and looked at the three new arrivals, greeting, the one who can follow Miss Maki, I think this should be Miss Kiyomi. And you two, as expected, are the left and Naruto. Wow. This. Big brother Kabuto knows me. Naruto was surprised. Medicine master Kabuto smiled and said, it can't be helped. It's because you look very similar to your father. It's very simple to recognize you. Is that so? Ha 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 ha. Naruto laughed happily when he heard that he was very similar to his father. Looking at Naruto's silly smile, and thinking back to Naruto's father, brother always had a bright and handsome appearance, Maki was very speechless. How is it like that? Why can't I see it? And Naruto, you idiot. Can't you hear what I'm saying? Kabuto is my father's assistant. It's easy for him to know who you are. Lord Hokage's assistant. Suzuki, who was not in the mood before, looked at Medicine Kabuto with a much more serious gaze. Being able to become the assistant of the Hokage at such a young age, it was obvious that this person was extraordinary. On the other side, Naruto's laughter stopped abruptly when he heard Maki's words. He looked at Medicine Master Kabuto in disbelief and said, Big Brother Kabuto, is that so? That's why it's so troublesome to talk about big sis and whatnot. Medicine Master Kabuto sighed in his heart and then looked at Naruto with a brilliant smile. Of course not. I have met Brother Minato a lot. Naruto, you don't look like you, but your hairstyle is the same as Brother Minato's. It is naturally easy to guess your identity. I see. Naruto immediately returned to a bright smile. For him, the greatest praise he had now was that he was very similar to his father, whom he had always admired. Tisk seeing this scene, Maki was not interested in saying anything more. Of course, the bigger reason was that the children in the orphanage were pulling her to play. Auntie Yakushi, you can use the money at your heart. I'm going to play with everyone first. After pretending to be a little adult for a long time, in the end, Maki waved to Yakushi, who was unable to restrain her playful heart, and was pulled to play by a group of little companions. In the middle of the journey, she did not forget to call for the three of them to come together. Good. Good. Kiyomi, who originally wanted to join them, immediately followed happily. Naruto clapped his hands confidently and said excitedly, Master Naruto is the best. As he spoke, he also rushed into the crowd. Suzuki did not join. Thinking that this was just a childish game, he just stood near his sister's dressing, ensuring her safety while looking at everything in front of him coolly. Soon, the orphanage was filled with lively laughter. Among them, Naruto, Maki, you lost again laughed triumphantly, and the Naruto of Maki, you just wait and see. The frustration of jumping up and down continuously resounded. Suzuki, who was watching from the side, tried his best to maintain his handsome and cold face, but his eyes were full of smiles. But soon, a group of children ran over excitedly, hoping that he would join them. In the end, he broke his guard and was dragged into the crowd with difficulty. Then, another voice rang out, Eh? Suzuki, aren't you not playing? The question in Sasuke's Naruto, shut up, shameful reply. Not far away, Kabuto and Yakushi, who were watching this cheerful scene, also had a bright smile on their faces. I hope that time will always stop at this moment. Medicine Master Kabuto said with a sincere smile on his face. Yes. Yakushi nodded in satisfaction. She had spent most of her time walking in the darkness, and her desire for warmth was unimaginable to outsiders. For her, the orphanage in front of her and all the orphans here were the biggest warmth of her life. The pharmacist who knew the dean very well looked at the sack full of money at her feet and asked, Is the dean going to go far again? With new funds, according to Yakushi's character, he must go out and bring the orphans back. Although the scale of Kanaha's orphanage was several times larger than before, and there were no orphans in Kanaha, there were also orphanages in the Land of Fire. However, no matter how warm the sun was, there were still places that could not be illuminated. The always kind-hearted Yakushi could not avoid going out for a while and patrolling. If there were pitiful and helpless orphans, he would bring them back. This time, with new funds, there would not be any exceptions. That's true. 
I'll leave the orphanage to you in the future, Yakushi said gently. Kabuto shook his head and said, Let Urushi and the others come. I'll go with you. One more person and one more helper. But what about the Hokage? Yakushi was a little surprised. Don't worry, I will ask for a leave. You should know that our Lord Hokage is very reasonable. Kabuto raised his glasses and said. When Yakushi heard this, he also raised his glasses and nodded with a smile, indeed. Our Lord Hokage is very reasonable. In the eyes of outsiders, the very reasonable Lord Hokage was the same in Maki's eyes. Of course, the premise was not to be caught by the other party. After playing outside for a day, Maki said goodbye to her friends and finally returned home when the sun was about to set. At the gate, Maki skillfully turned the green gamble coat with the same style as her mother. After putting it back on, she saw that the original gamble character on her back turned into a cloud. She could wear both sides of the coat. How wild it was outside was not mentioned. At home, she naturally became an obedient and lovely father, clever and considerate little cotton padded jacket. For this reason, she specially embroidered the word cloud on her clothes to show her love for her father. Entering home. Maki did not immediately go to the main hall, but after wandering around for a while, she found her sister, silent. After the latter who had grown up gave her a familiar gesture of nothing, Maki finally breathed a sigh of relief, then raised her head and walked to her parents. In the main hall, the fourth Hokage of Kanaha, the general of the Fire Land, now the most powerful person in the entire ninja world, Yuki Senju, was leisurely reading a book. Five years had passed, and his appearance did not change at all. It was just that his gestures made him look superior. Beside him, his hair was tied up, and he was dressed in a home dress. His appearance was the same, but he looked more like a young woman than before. He was dozing off. She had just lost a large sum of money, and she could not even take out the money to eat with her empty pockets. Now, she could only stay at home and accompany her husband. Soon, light footsteps sounded from outside. He saw that every move carried the demeanor of a thousand-year-old family clan. At this time, Maki, who was really like a big sister, arrived briskly and greeted Yuki with a smile. Dear father. You're back. Yuki raised his head and looked at his daughter, smiling slightly.